since you've been gone. By the way, bro, since we've been gone, Steve. What's been going on, mate? Well, so much has happened, hasn't it, in the world, um, you know, politics and stuff. There's been an election and the like. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say producer, <laughs> funny, yeah. uh, Carl Pilkington. Alright. Yeah, very good. We've been away for a while. I think uh, the last show we did was January 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed whatsoever. Nothing's been mended. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure I threw that away in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. I went. Before I left. Yeah, there are some of your, uh, your old bacon rinds from that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, Still yeah. The spare ribs on the floor. Yeah. yeah, nothing's changed at all. Oh, I, oh, no, that's not true. Um, uh, the listenership's changed. It went down slightly, didn't it, on the last Rage Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that, is that what happened? Did it go down slightly, Carl? <laughs> Uh, a little bit, I think. I don't think everyone gets new listeners because I think what happens is the reason it goes down just very slightly each time is that their old listeners die. Yeah. Uh, you know, Definitely. old Cure fans dying of yeah, you know, smack addictions. <laughs> yeah, gout. Yeah. <laughs> gout. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, I've never I haven't listened to this um, station for a year and a half, so it's, uh, that's increased by one, <laughs> yeah. which is qu <laughs> probably quite a high percentage. Exactly. Um, so, uh, I, well, I, I mean. I suppose that, that my question, I suppose, to you, Rick, would be, you know, why now? Why, why have you come back now? You know, you're- It was a bit bored of sitting at home, <laughs> right. you know. Okay. Yeah. Cause we're just here for six weeks. Six weeks. Um, well, we're standing in front of Adam and Joe, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Hey, the tables have turned, I remember when they were standing in for us, but, uh, Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I mean, the only reason I'm here is cause, um, my, um, my housekeeper cleans, um, between one and three. Oh, right, that's um, a good idea. So I just want to get out of the house. And, uh, are they, are they listening to XFM? Well, no, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I'm not made of money, Rick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I can help out, you know, a, a young immigrant lady, then, um, then I will do. And, and, and there are so many things I can do for her. In yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, but her, you know, picking up my old tea towels and stuff is, uh, is ideal. So that's why I'm here. But I just, I'm, all I'm worried about is I think people kind of associate with the name Ricky Gervais, they associate a certain level of quality. You mm. know, your live stand-up DVDs, there's a level of quality, you've put a lot of work into them, you've honed mm. it. The TV work you've done, likewise. Mm. Should people expect the same from the radio show? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Th those things that, you know, you, you, you sit down with, you know, you sit down, we write them for a long time, write them for a year maybe, then film them, and we worry about everything. This is, uh, I really, I'm not even sure I'm talking into the mic at the moment. <laughs> I, I was actually doodling as you saw there. Yeah. I'm eating a sandwich as we speak. Yeah. You know, that, you know, if you, although we do like music, that is true. That's we absolutely should, right. Should we play some great I'm records? Play a great record now. You two, City of Blinding Light. Uh, I, I'll tell you what, I love you two now. Yeah. I honestly hated them, sort of everything from boy up to about, I think, um, Beautiful Day when that came out. I thought, oh, that's all right. I listened to the album, listened to this album. I love them now, Steve. It's a turn around, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, I mean, I, that's, it's, it's that kind of um, musical insight that I'm looking for throughout this show. Really. <laughs> I it's sound like, like Dr. Dr. Fox then, didn't I? It's it's some of your tastes and wants and needs. Uh, Dr. Fox. What's happened to him? Is he off air now? Because that's one of the reasons I put no effort into this radio show, because, uh, you know, uh, we, we go to the Golden Globes the same month, we do nothing at the Sony, and Dr. Fox actually said, that's because you're not very good. I like the fact that the uh, Dr. Fox criticisms really hit you quite hard. <laughs> You know, you really took I'm still talking off. about it a year <laughs> yeah, later. Exactly. You know, you've got yeah. to let it go, Rick. <laughs> yeah. No, but then again, you know, he's a medical man, and yeah. Well, uh, you know, you got you got to believe him. You've got to trust his opinion. You exactly. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I could have done without the rectal examination. I think you could have <laughs> just said. You're not very good. <laughs> exactly. Try and enunciate. No, I know what the problem is. Or oh, let's have a look down here. <laughs> exactly. Carl, that to you had to um uh, go, go, go to one of those um well clinics, didn't no, you? I didn't, no, I haven't gone. Why? Because I'm I'm not happy with it. What? I'm not happy with the whole. Well, it's just. Do people know what them places places are? We'll give you a have whole. You, have you heard of them? Yeah, I've had one. Yeah, they they they, take, they check everything. Which you know, Suzanne, my girlfriend, was like, uh, you know, you're thirty odd now. <laughs> uh, when was the last time you went to the doctors? And I haven't been for ages because I don't. No, I never go. Doctors. I never go. And there's, I think I'm, I'm honestly going to die there. I'm I in just agony. Think like, they can always find something. Jane made me go to one of those well things. Yeah, those yeah. boot things where they do it. It's yeah, a couple hundred quid, and they give you a com complete head to toe, don't they? Put put head, head to bottom <laughs> is what it is. The uh, they do the old uh, finger up the arse thing. Now what is that testing for? Well I like that he said it quietly, because he's on the radio, you not you can't say arse. Yeah. I say it quietly. <laughs> say it quietly, it. yeah, yeah. Arse. Yeah, arse. That's what well, our mistake was, because we got, um, a complaint up how, didn't we, for saying, and I'm talking about a male chicken here, which is a cock, as you know, yeah, and we course. said that word, right? So if we'd have gone, cock, we'd have probably gotten away with it. 
You can mean? get away with murder. If you just, yeah. If you just whisper it really So go on then, yeah, so. Go so, on then, So, yeah, yeah, no, I just, uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not going because I'm not having that done. I don't understand what, what you're going to find up there, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Your what, head? What, yeah, but, why can't you just, I mean, it's the heart that I worry about the most. <laughs> Do you mean that in a, in a kind of romantic yeah. sense? No, no, I mean like, you know- if They'd have to have a long finger, wouldn't they, to check <laughs> that out. They go, is something wrong with your left ventricle? Yeah. Well, this thing about- this thing about the, uh, doctors, they- they hold your testicles and they make you cough. Yeah, they don't hold the testicles anymore, they just put it sort of like by the side of them. And what's that testing for? I- I- I don't know, I think it's something to do with, uh, if you've got something wrong with your- your diaphragm or something like that, you can't- you can't do it when they press there. I don't know, it, it shows you, them something. So you it's can't, not- you it's can't not doctors having a quick feel. Mm. But so you can't- <laughs> <laughs> Well they- well that's good because, do you remember when Carl said he's gonna die of cancer? And I said, why? He said, I don't check me balls. I said, why? He said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> so they feel it for you, they- they feel them for you and you can- you can just relax, shut your eyes and think of England. Well don't mess with them. What do you mean? You can do more damage messing about with them, just leave them. And there's two anyway. You can afford to lose one. Yeah. I don't think that's the point. I think the, the point is it- it sort of s spreads, doesn't it? You know, it-, it you've got mm. to check the- No, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, if- don't- don't do it, cos they spend a lot of money saying to people, you know, have a quick feel if you've got the time, what have you. <laughs> but I, I'm not- I, I'm, I don't worry about it. Leave it. Leave it alone. <laughs> why- out of interest, why do doctors stick fingers up your eyes? Check the prostate. Check the prostate? Yeah. Cos it was swollen, it's- it could, yeah, it, it can, you know, uh, lead to all sorts of problems. Yeah, again, they're not having a laugh, Carl. <laughs> they're not going, hang on, look at this bald little mank fella. But there's uh, no nice uh, way- I feel his balls, <laughs> stick a finger up his ass and send him home. Three hundred <laughs> quid, please, <laughs> on you go. What about me art? It's fine. And they're all, they're all laughing. Roger, Jeff, stand behind that two-way mirror. <laughs> yeah, 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 what's this? <laughs> no, I'm uh, not going anyway. So really, you're not going because you don't want- No, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't even matter, it's not the fact he's a stranger. If it was someone who I knew, it'd be just as bad. <laughs> Imagine that! At a dinner party! Oh god! Oh well, hello, hello, Roger and Selena. Um, do you mind? Roger, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> Would you allow any of the celebrity doctors to do it though? Dr. Dre, uh, Dr. Fox, 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 any of those. Dr. Who? I just don't understand in this day and age. <laughs> Would why? you allow Christopher Eggleston to stick his <laughs> big right, northern finger up your Do you want a song on anyway? <laughs> what? Uh, Beanie Siegel. I love this track. Oh, it's very urban for you, Rick. Beanie Siegel. Feel it in the air. Beautiful track, isn't it? Well, it's wonderful. And I love your summer's day like this as well, Rick. It's the yeah. ideal choice. Well, yeah. that one. well, I'm a little bit worried that if there are any new listeners, very <laughs> unlikely, yeah. that, that, that they may, know, you know, be familiar with um, our work, but they might not know the, the wonderful little gem that we found just there, a little rough diamond in the in the mud. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just working here, just working away as a little producer, a little sound man. A wasn't crone. He? Yeah. And he was, uh, and we gave him his opportunity, didn't we? Mm. It's like Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah. And he, and he grasped that opportunity, didn't you, by the horns, and three years later you're exactly where you started. <laughs> <laughs> so, good work. Got Mondays off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe a, a, a useful way of introducing the mind of Carl Pilkington yeah. to um, our new you, audience. You use that term loosely. Yeah, when I say mind, I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought- what, 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 Look at his face! Oh. There is a website, have you got a oh, website? Oh, there's address? a website that we just found. Right, Carl, what is the address? If you are unfamiliar with what Carl looks like- Please um, log on to this now. Log on to this website and stay tuned, but list, log on to the website because you'll see Carl's face, you'll see some of his pearls of wisdom. Yeah, now what's it? what's the address, Carl? Uh, freewebs.com. www. Yeah, freewebs.com. Freewebs.com. Yeah, com. Com, yeah. S forward slash. Yeah. Uh, the dash K dash man forward slash. The K man. It's okay. complicated. It is, yeah. Do it again, say it again. But get a pencil right. now, they've all got a pencil now. Freewebs.com. One word. Yeah. Slash the dash K dash man forward slash. Now when you say dash, is it, is it a dash or is it, is is it, it an middle, underscore? Is it, is it underscore, is it, is it in the middle of the word or is it hover in the middle of the word or is it at the, is it at the bottom? It's just- just a line and that. Yeah, I know, but is it an underscore or is it a dash? Try both. <laughs> <laughs> he- he covered it down! Have a go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the oh. sort of level we're talking about! Well, already you've got some insight into the mind of Carl Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But I thought what, what we should do is we could hijack- <laughs> <laughs> Imagine 
imagine that. Imagine Bill Gates. Yeah, or a teacher <laughs> in an exam. Hot down both. <laughs> Uh, multiple choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, okay. But anyway, yeah, if, if you're a reader of the uh, Weekend Guardian, you'll know there's this thing called the Q&A, which they, they give to uh, celebrities and thinkers and the like. Mm. And basically it's a series of questions they pose to each pe people each week, and it's the same questions, and it gives a little insight into people's minds, the way mm. they think. So what particular, what thinker philosopher is in this week's? <laughs> oh, it's the lead singer of Feeder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you're in good company, Carl. Um, no, I like Feeder. No, fine. I love Feeder. So, Carl, I'm just going to fire a couple of these questions at you. We'll maybe drop them in throughout the course of the show, just to try and get a sense of who you are. Um, mm. so here's the first up, first question. All right, you got your thinking head on? Go on. <laughs> you weasel. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, what, for me, or...? <laughs> Already... <laughs> no, Ronnie it. Corbett. No, no, but, but what do you mean, like, what will make me happy, or yeah. for everyone to be happy? No, what would make you happy? Maybe that is that. Maybe that's the answer. Y your idea of happiness is to everyone being happy. I don't know. What's your? What would make you totally? Unlikely. Happy? I imagine it's a twenty-four hour monkey channel <laughs> on like the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. A never-ending popsicle. Go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> I, d I, d I don't think I've had it yet where I'm like really, really happy with it. Carl, I've never seen you really happy. No. No, but um, when have you been at your happiest? Probably, I like I like sort of fish fingers, potato cakes, and beans for a, for tea. Yeah, <laughs> you're not you're not in, yeah. All right, well let's move on. We'll come back to that one. Let's <laughs> you know, I don't think you're aiming high enough for. Uh, well, what would your answer be for that? When are you happy? What would make you happy? Um, I I wouldn't have the I'd have fish fingers, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't have the potato cakes. Yeah, I'd have fish fingers and beans. Sounds like a huge fan of the beans. <laughs> really? So yeah. your idea of um, perfect happiness is probably just fish fingers, is <laughs> just it? Just the fish fingers. Okay, good. Alright, second question. What is your greatest fear, Carl? Mm, going to the doctors. Okay, so, more, so, so presumably, uh, ill health and mortality. Uh, That's how you no, do it, you see. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't <laughs> any particular doctor? <laughs> I don't want to live forever, either. No, I just no. The beginnings. I just want to get to about 80, 83, 84. <laughs> Specific! <laughs> Specific. Yeah. Okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh. Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill's pretty good. You like yeah, him? Yeah, very good. He's Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's not that good at that. I know that, that that even if the Nazis had won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose he's, <laughs> I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, here's one, here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh, That's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> depends, depends what for, do not it? Go on. Oh, I think something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <coughs> they don't. They don't. They don't kill what, people what, now for uh, uh, parking illegally. But, but what sort of what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know. But what is that? What what, what are you talking about? Well, guillotine hanging. Uh, uh, hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh, can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just. It's all bad. Why? Mm, why? Why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's what's the point in keeping them, you know people people around? Well, what's the point in killing them? Just because it's like right, that's that done. Who's who's next? You know what, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> Employ them on a radio show. Uh, yeah. Play a record, right. Carl. Next question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back to the questions. Of, uh, what do you want? What have you got in here? Rick, I know you're a massive fan of the thorns. Yeah. But maybe you're less familiar with the uh, different elements of the thorns mm. solo work. No. It's no. A track from Matthew Sweet. Oh yeah. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Matthew Sweet, and a song called In My Time, Richard Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It was great, that. Yeah, just asking Carl some of these uh, Q&A questions. This might be my idea of perfect happiness, being in a room with Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just what I watch him, I just watch him look around, when you're talking, uh, he looks at you, and it's like, you know when the owners say, it's like the cat can understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's like, he's on the edge look. of that, he's yeah. on the edge of that, you think he can, and I know he understands the words, but I don't think he understands the full impact. He never, whenever you say something to him, 
It might be some, you know, a revelation or some. Uh, he always picks up on the wrong side. You know, well, that's not the important bit. Do you know what I mean? He always goes. It's a bit like having a fourteen-year-old French exchange student. You know, their, <laughs> yeah. their English is not amazing. They roughly yeah. understand you, but they're trying to piece together what you're saying. Exactly, but it, it's great. You see, um, the thing about Carl is, and d don't take this the wrong way. I like him st because he's stupid mm. in a way. Mm. <laughs> No, I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? But even though I think he is considered, uh, stupid, some of the things he says, I think borders on the, I don't know what the PC term is, the retarded. <laughs> do you know what I mean, yeah. Carl? Anything in particular you're thinking of, though, Rick, when you think of well, the, Well, uh... um, he was talking to me the other day, because I'm, I'm trying to write a show called Science, and he's sort of, uh, gonna help me out with some of the research, and I wanna, I want him to do something on the DVD for it, right? And, uh... He, um, was talking about it, and uh, he was talking about, um, he says that uh, in the future, they reckon we'll be able to, soon, he said, they'll be able to take us into space, and it's gonna cost us £150,000. He said, what's the point? There's nothing up there. He said, the, when they went up there, right, he said, when Louis Armstrong went, <laughs> in 1966, <laughs> right, he said, it was nothing there. So there was him, a fella called Buzz, there was one and third bloke that didn't even get out of the spaceship. He said he went all that way, he didn't get out to stretch his legs. How good can it be? Forget it. That's him summing up yeah. space exploration. Don't, 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 don't you agree with that? What, what's the point in going up there? Because you're Are we talking about the finger in the arse again here? Or it's space. No, what, what is the point in going Because you're to expanding, you know, human endeavour, aren't you, in the human uh, understanding of the world and the universe. It's like, what else are we going to do as a civilization, as a, as a people, if we're not constantly searching and, you know, and, and reaching out into the far distance? But there's nothing there, then. I know some people you grew up with that haven't left their street, but that, that's not everyone. But what is it? What do you mean there's nothing there? That what, what, what has got to be there for it to be worthwhile? Like, just something. What, I mean, like, to be honest, what would you be I happy with finding out on the moon? Video, just, just just something. I don't think they looked hard enough anyway when they got there, because they seemed to get out, have a bit of a dance about, and then they came straight back. And I sort of think, you know, did they look properly? It's not a day trip, is it? But what, what I mean is- But they is, took that car out there, didn't they, and drove around a bit? Yeah, but only a little bit. What I mean is, say if an alien landed in, in Africa, there's not much there, so they'd go, what yeah, do you mean there's not much that. there? Well, it's a bit barren, isn't it? What, Africa? Just in general? Well, anywhere the, the, like that. The, the, desert or whatever, what I'm saying is, it's got, have a good look round. Probably the, uh, where all life came from and uh, uh, probably half a million yeah, species of I animals lived there. buildings and that and stuff. Oh, just, buildings. Well, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, did they look properly? Or did they just land, get out, go, oh, a bit dusty or whatever, right, let's go back? I just think it's a bit pointless. Especially oh. when we haven't done everything there is to do here. I Go mean, on. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is stuff <laughs> that needs sorting out. Well, there's, I know the place that there's, there's no medical man has been <laughs> in this room. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, there's definitely an unexplored uh, cavern. <laughs> right, in front. All right, Steve. Would you go to the moon if someone said there's a space? He doesn't march at a concert because he's scared his glasses to fall off. Of course he wouldn't go to the moon. That They'd spin him round in training, his glasses would come off, and that'd be it. He'd, yeah. he'd feel sick. My worry is I'm not sure I'd get- I'd have to- cause I- would I be able to wear him under the helmet? <laughs> Imagine him! Like, I went- I went paintballing once, and I had to wear the glasses <laughs> underneath the mask, and of course it was a bit hot weather, it was awful- all, it was steamed up in there. No, I couldn't see anything. I got shot straight away. I was out of the game. It was pointless. <laughs> you know, it cost me like eight quid. Yeah. You don't have to be that fit anyway, do you? You're only sort of sat there. Well, not- uh, well, yeah, but what- what are you talking about? Think of G-force alone and weightlessness. Yeah. Of course you've got to be- what? Yeah. I what? think when you said think of G-force, he thought of G-4. <laughs> yeah, uh, follow up winners in Pop Idol. I can see it as his- as his eyes glaze over. Yeah. There are more quick questions for you, Carl, just to try and get inside your mind. Um, what do you- uh, what is your greatest regret? Uh, probably- I didn't do that well at school, did I? So I'm- I'm trying to, like, learn stuff now. Yeah. But not, not mentally, but, you know. He reckons he's learnt more in the last three months than he ever has in the rest of his life, reading a couple of science books I gave him. Well, that's impressive. We'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Um, well, I live in, sort of, central London, don't I? So it's- <laughs> Brilliant. Traffic and that. And yeah. they yeah. were thinking more- so More of what- what, what fears have you got? What worries? Do you- do you- do you, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry about it? There's no point, there's no point, is there? Cause there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's uh, the, the- what, the- the little Chinese fellow across the road? 
Just, just, just stuff that that I've got to sort out. You know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? <laughs> it's true. That no, is I true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on the shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't what worry about wars and stuff going on because there's now I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> Play a record, <laughs> Tom. For who? I mean, that's that's got to be one of the best rock tracks ever, isn't it? Oh, there's no oh, argument. Do I sound like Dr. Fox again? A little bit. Okay. That's a good <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to get a Sony award this oh. year. Carl, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Yeah? It's good to be back, isn't it? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit, what? Have we, have we got Rockbusters? Well. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, new listeners. <laughs> new listeners won't believe their luck when they hear Rockbusters. We've got Rockbusters. Have we got, well, dare I say it, have we got monkey news, Carl? Uh, well, I've been away, haven't I? So, I've sort of got a few things that I've, I've read about roughly, yeah. but I don't know the full ins and outs. You're joking, because usually you do your research quite well, don't you, when you get uh, off and and over and read the top line. Uh, so what are you saying, though? Are you saying that there's, it's kind of monkey news? Uh, we'll, we might have time to do something later. Well, yeah. we gonna, we've Listen, got to have him monkey news. I love visit. it when he teases us with his monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> we've yeah. had emails about that, that website address. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was, it was a, a, a what's the name, a underscore. An underscore. Okay, so first. give it out one more time. They'll go to this to find out about Carl Pilkington. Someone's put in a lot of effort. It's a really good website. There's some great pictures of Carl. It's, well, they're not great. They're just, uh, <laughs> freewebs.com slash the underscore k underscore man slash. Okay, forward slashes all the, all the way. Yeah. Except yeah. the underscores. Is there the end of course, yeah. This is interminable. Isn't it interminable <laughs> giving out email addresses? I know, yeah. Rub it, it's so boring. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh dear. Is, mm -hmm. there, is he enjoying the show? Uh, it just says, um, I love spending two hours on a Saturday listening about fingers up asses, doctors squeezing testicles and making you cough. Uh, have you got any news on the airy Chinese kid? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, when, when you say it like that, some of the stuff we cover does sound a little bit of, uh, you know, drivel. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Carl was worried, Carl was worried about swearing, because we were talking about finger arse and that, he's generally worried. And, and I, I don't have a problem with swearing, although I understand why you can't say certain words on radio, it might be offensive, people aren't listening. I mean, you know, the F word, the C word and all those. But when they bleep it out, when they bleep it out in a record, they bleep out the vowel. Mm. So in the F word, they bleep out the U, so it goes, for beep. Right? What, what, so they go, it's not offensive, I didn't hear the vowel. Presumably, yeah. So if you change the vowel, it's not, do you know what I mean? So, uh, in the C word, could I say, um, could I talk about the, the philosopher Immanuel Kant? Well, you can talk about Immanuel Kant because he's one of the great thinkers of, of all time. So Kant is not an offensive word because the vowel is right. different, okay. is it? Leave it, leave it then. <laughs> do you know what I mean though? But I, I don't no, see how it can be offensive. You can't. It it's can't not, be. Can't it? be. He's, he's a thinker. He's a oh, philosopher. Okay. His name is his okay. name is Kant. That is his actual oh, name. I, mean, yeah. I think it, it comes from a long line of Kants. From what I can, I mean, he hasn't changed his name. I think his father, his grandfather. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. all yeah. Like German people. Oh, well, Germany is, I assume, full of Kants. Well, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. What? Well, <laughs> what? What else? Were so we can change the vowel. So could I say? Um, could I say? Uh, uh, Probably not. Oh, what if I change two words? What if I said cump? C U M P. Now that's not offensive at all, is it? That can't be offensive. So I could say you fucking cump. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, well, I, I need a schnit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Wonka, Willy right. Wonka. <laughs> yeah. Absolute. That's a good one. Willy Wonka. Yeah. W yeah. You got, although yeah. Willy is Willy offensive? Could you say Willy? It's tricky. Willy tricky. Willy Wonka, and his and uh, Willy Wonka and his fucking oh. cumps. Yeah. That would be fine. That would be absolutely it? fine. Is that all right then, Carl? Have you got any other questions or anything, Steve? <laughs> well. Uh, I, I, it's not so much a question, but it's something that I think might be of interest to you, Carl. Um, I was reading about this in the paper, and I know how fascinated you are by people of the Japanese persuasion. Um, two elderly men mm -hmm. found on a remote island are believed to be Japanese soldiers in hiding since 1945, desperate to go home. Diplomats from Tokyo are investigating the claims of these men, who are 87 and 83. Mm. <laughs> what? What? What are you thinking there? Well, no, go on. I know what you're thinking. Go on. Say what you're thinking. I'll do that old, though. Why? Why? Say why. I don't, I don't want to. Just leave it. Leave Carl's leave got it. a theory. Well, I, I, th I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think th this is fine. It's, it's, I, I'd say that Carl's views don't 
reflect the views of XFM, mm -hmm. right? Carl's okay. got a theory that Oriental people don't age well. Sure. Uh, let, let Carl- yeah, but, but that annoys that me the way- yeah, but I think- what? People will probably agree with me, but for some reason- well, the first time I said that, I wasn't even worried about it, but now, because of reaction of people, <laughs> it's, I don't understand- I don't know why I can't say that. What's Be your theory? Explain your theory, in a nutshell. Just like you don't see a-, a, a, a you know, sort of a 33-year-old Chinese person. <laughs> no, but, but at the same time- you What do you mean you don't yeah, see but a 33-year-old I'm not having a go person. at the same time, you don't see that many fat ones either. So, in a way- that's- that's good news. Nobody would be upset about that. But what do you mean- But your news isn't bad news, because it's not true. But wait, stop, stop, stop. What do you mean you don't see a 33-year-old Chinese person? I don't understand. What do you mean you don't see them? What do you see then? Sort of, you know, young- young ones. Uh, and then, like, you don't see that middle ground. <laughs> I don't know what this theory's based on! So you see old ones and then you see- uh, and you see yeah. young ones, but you never see any in between? Yeah. What do you mean? So what's the oldest- what's- okay, what's the oldest Chinese person you've seen before the age of 33? How old do you think? About 22. 22. So you've seen lots of 22 year olds. So you've seen range from babies to 22 year old tw uh, Chinese people. Yeah. That's fact, okay? And then what gap do you miss out? What- 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 when- when do they pop back up on the radar for you? What age has a Chinese person got to be to be older than that? Well, 49. <laughs> <laughs> Specific. What, what do you mean? When you say they don't age well, what do you mean they don't age well? You think that you mean that middle-aged ones look old? Because you think at 23, when they start 23, they're like, happy birthday to you, and they look up and oh, jeez, it's 52. What? What do you mean? No, I just, I just mean they don't age that well. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what it is in them, but they just don't. Oh, you, all right then. Here's, here's a question. You tell me of a Chinese person on the telly who's about 32. Tell me of a Chinese person on the telly first. <laughs> G give us the great gamut of uh, Chinese talent um, currently on British TV, right? And I'll, and I'll, I'll pick and choose. Go on then. Bruce Lee. Hmm. How long has he been dead, Bruce Lee? Seventies, wasn't it? And not, not not really on the telly much, was he? Okay. What, what age was he when he died? 33, I think. Well, I would have never guessed that. Well, what do you think? How old do you think he was? Probably about forty-two. What? You know Bert Kwok? Yeah, he's old. Yeah. Do you remember the Pink Panther films? No. Okay. He wasn't that old in them because it was sixties, seventies. But how old did he look though? If 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 he walked in and someone said you never guess how old he is, what would you have said? <laughs> right then. There's my point then. There's my point. I have to say. I've been listening to you two talk, and I like the idea that there's people who've been waiting 18 months for some of this. <laughs> <laughs> for the- for the Kant discussion, the, uh, Orientals. I- I- do you know what I think? I think, um, uh, Kant, uh, as a philosopher, um, is very popular in Essex. Because I hear him saying his name all the time oh, whenever I go now. through- What? They're all shouting this and that. <laughs> Kings of Lee on an XFM. Carl. Did you HD Merchant Carl Pilkington? Carl, oh. dead air! Talk! Yeah, I'm just- I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, it's but someone... that's no good on radio! You can't just look at something! You gotta talk! Is he even more backward than I remember? I don't know! It's just that like someone's emailed in. Yeah, so He's... you gotta tell yeah, the listeners that! No, I'm telling them now, I'm doing it! Someone's emailed in from Tokyo, mm. saying that he's getting married in a few months. Mm. To a Japanese woman, she's 27. <laughs> Just want to know how long I've got so she starts looking old. <laughs> well, how long do you reckon, according to your theory? Mm, about. Probably about four years. <laughs> about four years and that. So. <laughs> what would you advise him? To get out now or? Well, have some good sort of wedding pictures done and that. <laughs> God, it's not true! The theory's not true! Well, we'll see, we'll see, won't we? Oh yeah, oh yeah, great. In four years time he's gonna send a picture going, oh you're right, Carl. Look, she looks like a prune. What? He's gonna suddenly start saying his girl, it's not true, it's not gonna happen. It's that thing though, innit, of looking at her mum. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that, isn't there, that you should, shouldn't really meet up with your girlfriend's sort of parents and that. Sure. Cause yeah. you just sort of get a little taster of what's to come and what have you. Then what's to come with yours? Uh, it's a good job I didn't meet her early on. <laughs> no, no. You're gonna be 
such trouble! No, they don't listen. It's all right. Really? Well, Suzanne does, doesn't she? She'll probably be out. Really? But she, she knows. She's got some sense. <laughs> yeah, when you get back! Yeah. You went holiday with them, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I've been, we've been on since then, haven't we? I don't think so. Yeah, I went on hol holiday last week, been away, but that was just me and Suzanne. I'll talk oh, about that it? later. Yeah, okay. Oh, that, that, that's coming up. Plus, of course, Rockbusters, the return of Rockbusters. Let's start Let's Rockbusters. Do Rockbusters. Let's now. do Rockbusters. Let's get it rolling, because we've got- I have got some amazing prizes. I went to the Americas and I brought back gifts. Not your tobacco and your potatoes, but brilliant prizes. Now, quite seriously, these are not the usual tat. You will win some tat for Rockbusters, okay? We've got DVDs, uh, CDs, uh, uh, things like that, right? But the winner- of Rockbusters today, we'll go through to a chance to win the prizes in the- in week six. We're only here for six weeks, by the way. This is our first of six shows. Thank God for that. Yeah. And, um, I got- I went to- I went to do The Simpsons, uh, last weekend, and I've got, um, a drawing here, an original drawing of Homer by Matt Groening. See that? Look at that. Uh, as Homer there, your pal Matt Groening, May the 18th, 2005, and Homer's saying, I love Carl because he's stupid like me. And that's gonna be framed, original drawing. Uh, that is worth a, I think a lot, but I've promised Matt Groening that it will not go on eBay. So please, I hope it goes to a fan. Um, I've also got a rare Spinal Tap poster, uh, met with Christopher Guest, and he signed that, Nigel Tufnell. Um, so, uh, fans of Spinal Tap and The Simpsons, possibly the two greatest things ever, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, also, uh, my friend Rob, who did flannels with me, has drawn us three as flannels. There's Steve there, a little gog lanker. There's me there, a little bloke dumplant, and little Carl Pilverton, Pink Floyd numbskrunt. And these are all, these are gonna be framed. So some very nice prizes. And I've got a little surprise for you. Obviously I met Homer. Um, press that little button there. Listen to this. Hi, this is Homer Simpson. I like Carl and his perfectly round bald head. If you put three holes in it, it looks just like my bowling ball. Brilliant. Actual proof that you've uh, met the people themselves, that the prizes are bona fide and genuine, but don't enter this week's Rockbusters thinking you're gonna win those prizes automatically. No. This week you just win the usual tat. What is the but, tat, Steve? Well, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay. But you go forward for. to the big, uh, the big showdown, the big final competition in week six, where you get the chance to win those all quite One person wins prizes. all those beautiful so just uh, everyone collectible goes prizes. Yeah, everyone, yeah, the winners of each week go into the draw. What is Rockbusters, Carl? Uh, we've worked their appetite. I think play a record and maybe some wonderful adverts and then come back with Rockbusters. It's that kind of teasing that has made this a potential award-winning show. Bronze, I think, next yeah. year. Can we just swap that round and do ads and the song? Uh, whatever way suits you, mate. Go on. XFM 104.9, <laughs> Magic Numbers, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, I'm a little bit worried. I've just got to warn the listener, if we suddenly just go off air, right, it's because champagne is pouring down a hole where there's loads of wires into the desk. Because Steve... Yeah. Getting ready to open this champagne, right, just took that wire thing off, just put it there, of course because it's warm, it just it exploded everywhere. Yeah, I should explain now, I didn't bring in champagne to toast our <laughs> return to the radio, I mean, I'm not an idiot, but um, actually uh, from Focus PR, Ashley has rather nicely sent us some uh, Lindauer sparkling wine and I'm just trying some and uh, it's really quite refreshing on this uh, summer's day. So if you're perhaps working for some kind of PR agency, you know, or any kind of company and you want to send us stuff which you want us to shamelessly promote on air, then feel free to do that. Uh, so you're just, just looking for free stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, electrical goods, um, oh, okay, it's not just like champagne. Definitely stuff. not. Because I was going to say, if other champagne companies, what's that champagne company called that they sent us That's free? Uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, which I imagine is available now. <laughs> yeah, so other champagne companies feeling jealous could send you some and you'd, you'd mention it. I don't want to exclude anyone from this. You know, anyone <laughs> is welcome to send anything in. Um, Brilliant. And I, as I say, I'm particularly interested in, in um, sort of designer goods. Okay. Um, you know, the Apple Mac people, they're welcome to sure. send anything in. Now, what's annoying about that champagne opening like that is that, as you know, I brought my camera in. Um, uh, and I wanted to film you opening that onto Carl's head, got the cork. Rick, I've got another bottle. Have you ever- I don't want you to miss out on oh, an opportunity yeah. like that. That's a bit of a waste of champagne, that opening two bottles. But Carl, would you mind, cause, I, cause that would have made a cracking noise against your head, that cork going off. And uh, cause it's such a lovely, bald little sort of dome. Mm. Yeah. Um, put your head, we'll put your head right down, yeah? yeah? It'll open it, we'll see what the cork does and I'll film it oh. for, uh, like a website or something. Maybe we'll make that the finale of today's show. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, sponsored well, by Linda yeah. Sparkling Water. Oh yeah, the sound, the sound of a cracking cork against Carl Skull. Sponsored by Lindau. <laughs> sponsored by Lindau. Available now. <laughs> Great. Right, we're doing Rockbusters then. Oh, okay, <laughs> now you, you should explain briefly what the concept is, Carl, because there might be a few new listeners. It's, block <laughs> it's Blockbusters. Right, go on then. Well, no. it's not, it's not Blockbusters. No, because they were real clues, that weren't would, they? Yeah, that was actually He says they're a cryptic clue, it's not cryptic. Yeah. Well, it's what am I, it's like, what am I thinking? This competition is like, what number am I thinking of? Rick, just calm down for a second, let me explain basically what the concept is. You'll remember some of the greats from the past. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, you give some vague clue, is that right, Carl? And from that, we're cryptic. supposed to deduct mm -hmm. which band or artist you're thinking of. So yeah. for instance there was a Well there was one, the West Indian fella spinning a fish round his head and that was Detroit Spinners. The Trout Spinners. Yeah, Detroit, Detroit, spinners, Detroit, Detroit spinners. spinners. Yeah. yeah. There was also what happens if you fall over into a puddle in Texas, what? Wet Knee Houston. Wet yeah, knee that, Houston. that is the level of Carl's That's what you're clues. working with. But could I just say there's no irony in this. Carl doesn't think this is quirky or kitsch or ironic. This, he thinks these are- th he thinks these could go on the Guardian crossword. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. This so is the best stuff you can come up with. Yeah. Right, so- so there's- there's three of them, right? Yeah. I give you the cryptic clue. Yeah, not and to cryptic. help you along, well it is. Yeah, uh, and really. I give you some initials of the band or the artist or whatever to help you along as well. Yeah. Uh, three no, of them. This is on the text only, we don't want emails on this one, just- It's the one that gets the highest or the first one to get three. The first email with three or the first one that is the, the highest. So if, if no one gets the third one, which I wouldn't blame you for, uh, so if there's like 30 people that get two, it's the first email that comes in that we pick and uh, they win a, a handful of tat, which, would you like to go through? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll search out the tat in a second, I'm not sure where it is, yeah. Good stuff. There's some DVDs and stuff in there, it's not bad, yeah, but uh, it means you go forward to the grand final in six weeks time when you're playing for all that amazing stuff Ricky's got, we've got the sign uh, genuine exclusive drawing of Homer Simpson done by Matt Groening, um, featuring references to Carl. We've got the signed Spinal Tap poster. This is big yeah. stuff you can't get anywhere else. No, it's a rare, it's a rare um, American poster signed by Nigel And it's such Tuffle. a shame that your only chance of winning it is with this inane quiz. Uh, absolutely. It's not, it's not down to skill or anything. Uh, it's, it's just such a shame that- Let's that just do it then. Go on then. Uh, right. The first one. Go on. Uh, what you got to remember is it's a band or an artist that, so that X of M play as well, right? Right then, so, uh, the first one. Oh uh, yeah, cause X-Men play the Detroit Spinners <laughs> and Whitney Houston all the time, <laughs> yeah. don't they? Alright, these three. Okay. Give away a bit, these are, these are X-Men bands. Okay, yeah. Right, uh, if you got, if you got like a, a ball- Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I just, just, I don't know, and the, you don't think about the cryptic clue is that every syllable counts. <laughs> he says it's different, every time he says it, it there'd be somewhere different. Look, he's, look, go on then. Go. Right, so if you get a bulb, right- A bulb what? A bulb. A bulb. What's a bulb? What's a bulb? Like a- I like bulb. I like bulb. <laughs> oh, I, I like bulb. So okay, you get yeah. a bulb? You get a bulb, yeah. 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 <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Right, go on. So you get a bulb. Right. Oh, yeah, a oh, bulb, yeah. Have you got something in your throat? What are you doing? Are you eating a gobstopper? What are you doing? <laughs> we'll play a song then. No, come on! <laughs> get, get a clue out, for goodness sake! So the, the cryptic clue is, so, if you get a bulb, right, so- <laughs> <laughs> That's the beginning. Okay, great. Right, oh. right, if you get a saw, then right, if you get a bulb, like, go on. And you look after it, right, you look after that bulb. Mm. And you teach it stuff. Jesus oh, like, Christ. What are you doing there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is extraordinary. This that's is extraordinary. Amazing. Imagine that written down in the He's telegraph. Had 18 months to get this. Imagine right? it. That's, an, that's not a clue. That's an essay. I don't know what it is. It's a conversation I don't know with if yourself. He means a light bulb, a bulb like you plant in the garden. What kind of bulb does he mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Well, you get a bulb. Well, um, well, remember that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay, it doesn't no, matter it, what- it does, but I can't say too much. <laughs> <laughs> right, so listen, let me just do it again. You get a bulb, right? Yeah. When it's young, you look after that bulb, yeah. you teach it stuff and what have you. What have you done there? What, what's gone on? <laughs> William! And so what are the initials size? of the band? R. Right? R. R for rabbit, right? So what's the band there? Second right. one. Jesus. Uh, people have a problem doing this. When they get home from from like an, a night out drinking, right? What what's the problem they've got? Right, the the initial there K. What's the band? Right, people get in from having a night out. They'll have a problem doing this. What is it? What's what's, what's the problem? Okay, and right. clue number three. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Right, that's that's C. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. You had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah, and, and that's the band letter C. C. Right, so three bands there. 
Three uh, cryptic clues. Not really. Text in 83XFM. Just just send the three uh, three band names. That'll do, won't it? Can they do fine. a website as well? If they want, they can email in. Well, tell them what it is. Yeah, Ricky Dr. Vegas at XFM dot co dot uk. Just right. send it in there. Give them again uh, quickly then, Carl. Right then, so get a bulb when it's young and that. Look Brilliant. after it. Brilliant. Different. Totally different. It. Teach it stuff. Yeah. And all that. Okay. Ah. Ah. What's the band? Right. Yeah. Second one. Mm. People have a problem doing this when they get home late at night. You mm. know, they've been out drinking and that. They get home. What, yeah. what problem are they going to yeah. have? Mm. K is the initial. Mm. Third. Third one. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. What do I mean? Mm. Brilliant. C. C is the initial. Play a record. I mean, it's. it's uh, Abomination. Like that. Embrace. Glorious day on XFM 104.9. Rick, there may be listeners um, tuning in thinking they've got something better to do, for instance, switching off the radio and just staring blankly at the wall for uh, the next <laughs> half an hour, but yeah. no, because the, what they're going to miss is our grand finale oh, yeah. to this, which is of course- um, Sponsored by- Sponsored by Lindauer's, the uh, sparkling w sparkling wine solution to a hot summer's day. Yeah. Uh, that we're going to be firing a cork. Did you just make that? Yeah. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. good. Um, <laughs> They're going to be firing a cork, uh, at Carl's head, uh, just for the sound. Just I, I just think it's sound. Like, huh? It's not happening. Yes, it's it is. It. You it's said, no, no, we've said it is now. We promised it to the listeners. Yeah, so. come on. I'm not happy with it. Why? Because the pain. Well, I, I've never had it done, so I don't know how painful it is. Well, what's well, the reason to do it then? Yeah, we've got to try it out, haven't you? It's, you're perfectly, it's, 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 it's like mm. a little, like a little cowbell, yes. a wood block, is it? I just, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I'm hoping for pop. Mm. Like, uh, and I'm gonna film it for my website. Brilliant. So go to that this week, um, uh, rickyjavase.com and yeah. see Carl Pilkerton getting hit. Uh, a high-powered cork coming out of, um, uh, uh, Lindauer Sparkling Wine. <laughs> Lindauer Sparkling Wine. And of course, if you uh, want to send us anything in, and um, perhaps next week, that you feel we could, um, actually, that, maybe that's That'd be great. That's the, that's the, that's the, this is like interactive, because a lot of people plan the show, like Dr. Fox plans his show, we sort of come up, we riff on the, so we, that's a great idea. Send stuff in that we could harm Carl with. Yeah, we could Harm Carl. Harm Carl. We yep. do a do a jingle. Harm Carl. I always want one on. of those George Foreman grills. I always want one of them. I know, but that's too uh, the, too much, isn't get, it? We could, what if we just pressed his head inside it? But we'd, have to, we'd have to put it on. Put, we'd no, just, put it on. See, yeah. see, yeah. Just squeeze his oh, head inside it. I've got to do that thing with a tea towel one day. You know that thing I did with a tea towel? You put a tea towel around his head, right? Tie it. I put a wooden spoon in, and you only have to turn it like a couple of inches, and it it kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it really is, yeah. yeah. So we'll be firing a cork at Carl's head. I'll be filming it for the web. Website. So that's coming up in about, uh, about 10 to 3. Look forward to that. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I'm loving this. This is my. Oh, I just. Uh, oh, just being in a room with him. I just can't. I want to squeeze his head all well, the time. I'll tell you, if you're a fan of um, imbeciles and idiots, yeah. you're missing out if you're not watching Celebrity Love Island. I, I watched about well, 30 seconds of it and I hate them. Just, uh, just desperate uh, idiots and slappers. <laughs> I, I actually. Angers me. I, I I switched on Celebrity Love Island. And the first thing I thought is, where's a tsunami when you need one? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but seriously, but there's a guy on there. There's a guy on there, Paul. Dan I think his name's Paul Danan, ex of um, Hollyoaks, and he's an absolute joy because, like Carl. He's an absolute simpleton. Oh, really? And it's fantastic. And he was on one week, and he was talking about how he fancied lazy Lady Isabella Harvey. Oh, yeah. And he said to her, he said, um, thing is, right, I really fancy her because, um, she don't like reading books, and I don't like reading <laughs> books. Oh, they've got something in common! But I love the idea that, they, that he's attracted to someone for something they don't do. <laughs> I know, you know, yeah. I've never killed a kid. What, She's never killed a kid. What, never get what about sleep around? That yeah. would be a good thing to be attracted to someone for. Oh, just honestly, and Big Brother's the same. Is it? Just a load of ropey old, um, Cats. uh, yeah, I know, just like a horrible, cellulited, wobbly, rice arsed fat titted tarts oh. and idiots and show offs and are they they're all they are they they all disgust me for a different reason. Mm. I don't know which one to hate <laughs> most, most and why. They 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 all give me a couple of reasons to hate That's them. That's what the nomination should be. Yeah. You know, nominate who do you hate the most? Because I Absolutely I you know, I thought I was gonna switch on and find that actually, you know, people like Abby Titmus and Rebecca Luz had been misrepresented by the press. Oh, well, the one that wanked off a pig in public? <laughs> oh, yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Was that, did you say wonked off? 
I said, said wonked off a, a pog. Yeah. Wonked off a pog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> great, isn't it? But I mean, so, so, so uh, it's uh, amazing, Rebecca. I mean, let's, uh, don't even get me started on Abby Titmus. Don't well, even get me. There's, there, 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 don't. Uh, I like the idea of her, uh, of her parents perhaps going to, you know, some kind of, um, you know, someone's birthday or whatever, meeting some old friends who've oh, yeah. been away living in another country. Yeah. How's young Abby? Is she still a nurse saving lives? No, she gets her tits out for a living now. Oh, and a fanny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, Lu Rebecca Lou's, um, by her own admission, I don't know if it's true, but by, but she said, she sleeps with a married man, then sold a story to weapons, then wank wonked off a pog, <laughs> yeah. right? That's a hell of a CV, That's, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. That is amazing. Me. I bet her Nan's very, very proud of her. Yeah. Uh, are they all- are they- are, oh, God, don't- just forget it. Don't get me started. I'll be watching every night for the oh, next yeah, ten yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't not. Is it, it, you, my adrenaline rushes, I and you, you get- oh god, I just tune in to see- you, uh, it's almost like you tune in to see which one gets hurt. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? Emotionally scarred. But maybe one of them will come through, well, we'll find out- we're always gonna be- exactly, we're gonna find out that one of them was like, re had a really, really bad child and we feel sorry for her for yeah. a little bit, you know. Like the Jade Goody syndrome or something, and yeah. oh god. Yeah. Then they released an exercise video. Oh, Carl. We gotta get in you in on this. Oh, imagine Carl in Big Brother. That would be a joy. That would be amazing. But you turned on and you hated it, didn't you? Yeah, I gave it like three minutes and it's gone. Yeah. There's always something better on though. You annoy me, like you watch it. You moan yeah. about it now, but you watch it. I know, it. I, 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 I know, yeah. I know. There's always something better. I, nice I, I really did not watch any of Celebrity Lover. That was just too awful. I think celebrities are worse than, uh, um, general public though to me because if they're so desperate, they want nine little bites of the cherry and it's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Well, at least these people, you know, they, they think that they're gonna get out of their uh, job they don't like maybe or, you know, it, it's sort of like, I, I, you know, I give them their fifteen minutes, but it's oh god. Oh. But, but there's always something. I mean, when we went, were out the other night, Steve, right? There's a program on about uh, a spider that's a foot long and eats chicken. No <laughs> one's, <laughs> no one's talking I about don't know it. What, to stop. what do you mean? What do you mean? No, well, I, I just, I'm sorry. I had to stand up because I thought I was going to explode. What do you mean? There's a spider that's a foot when, long when and eats chicken. There was a program on about it about yeah. how there's this spider in the jungle somewhere, but yeah. I missed it because it was out. But no one's talking about that in the papers. <laughs> that's a me. That's that's a worry. <laughs> that's a bad worry. In case it nicks your Sunday roast. What do you mean? No, if well, no, but if it likes chicken, no, Rick. You yeah, know, yeah. In, in like two years time, taste. who knows what it might. I like. know. It move up the evolutionary ladder. No, it start liking Carl, then humans. No, I'm not yeah. exactly yeah. about the chicken bit because I eat chicken. That isn't that shocking. But the fact it's a foot long, <laughs> and and no one's. It's just on on a Thursday night. No one's talking about it. <laughs> No. What do you expect from this? It's got its own PR. What do you want? What do you want this spider to be to be famous? What? What? Where is it? Where is it? It's in the jungle. It's not worrying anyone then, is it? It's not going to move. Well, why? It's not going to. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not going to move? Well, how is it going to get here? Is it going to get on a bus? There's waves and that. They come in bananas and all that. So don't worry about it. So uh, <laughs> I'm not. If you're going to be like that. Anyway, listen, um, we better line up Babushka, we better play that surely, because I know you need to analyse those lyrics. Yeah. Um, that's very important to you, I know. We've still got that cork, uh, Oh, hitting. cork on their head's gonna be great. We're gonna put his little head down and really give it a firing. Sponsored by Linda Sparky. Jessie's Girl by Rick Springfield. And the reason I played that is twofold. One, it's one of the prizes we're giving away. It's an album called Rock Gods, and that's with a Z. Right and an umlaut <laughs> over the O, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got it's got Kiss, Judas Priest, Deep Purple, The Darkness. It's, I mean, it really is good. It's all it's all your classic um, rock tracks. The other reason I want to play it is because I like that song. It's a great little up with bubblegum pop song, rock. You know, great. But it's got one of the worst lyrics in it. He's, uh, you know, he's worried about, um, bringing up the fact that he loves his girlfriend's, uh, his, his, uh, his, uh, mate's girlfriend. And he goes, I'll bring it up, he goes, uh, I, I, you know, I tell her that I love her, but, um, the point may be moot. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> he doesn't use that in a rock song. <laughs> the yeah. point may be moot. <laughs> well, I was listening to uh, yeah. Christian O'Connell on the breakfast show when he had these bounty hunter thing running a couple of weeks back, and um, I don't know what happened, but anyway, he ended up with Brian Adams in the studio doing a live session. Brian, you know, good nature or whatever, yeah. but you can't help but feel with Brian that he sort of he thinks that he's Bruce Springsteen, but yeah. there's something wrong. I mean, he's got the voice and the guitar, he can play and everything, but yeah. there was a lyric and he, he he played it completely earnestly, and it was a session, and the lyric was something. It was from his recent album. And the lyric was along the lines of, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, um, uh, I, I'm sat in my hotel room, there's a knock at the door and I get kind of nervous. I'm hoping it's you, it's just room service. <laughs> Which is extraordinary, but Christian came up with the best. Uh, it came, they finished it, and obviously Christian was thinking, "What did I say?" 
And he came up with the best answer if you've had a session that you're not entirely convinced by. He just said quite simply, that sounded great. That's good. Which is amazing. That, yeah. Who are you complimenting there? The engineer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, the sound oh, recorders. God. What does that mean? That's great. That sounded great. Yeah, good. We got some good mics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Brian Adams. Is it true he bought the pub next door to him and closed it down because they were noisy? I hope so. Yeah, that's a good, that's what yeah, money's yeah, yeah. for. Oh, that exactly. is what money's for, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely right. Waking up the neighbours. That was his album, wasn't it? That, that was, was right. That, that was, right. I don't know if that was before or after that, whether it was related or not. Well, if but you buy a house next to a pub, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. So move, rather than ruining the fun for everyone. It's more good advice from Carl Pilkington. Carl, while we're talking to you, we should give these answers to Rockbusters. It's the big quiz. Um, and of course, the winner this week goes forward to play in the grand final in six weeks' time where they get to win all those amazing gifts. We signed, a signed Homer drawn, yeah. um, especially oh, stuff, yeah. for, for Carl by Matt Groening, uh, Nigel Tufnell signed Rare Poster. Uh, they're, they're amazing. Should we give away a sort of, uh, maybe a, a, a original print of behind the scenes of extras? We've got some amazing yeah. pictures That's filming right. extras. I was thinking the other day, you know like I'm how excited I am to be with Carl and let off corks on his head? Well, our editor, long suffering editor, Nigel, we worked with Ben Stiller, Kate Winslet, Sam Jackson, all these people for eight weeks, it was amazing. But my highlight, I, I was that thought about it, and my highlight was dressing Nigel up, our editor, in a baby grow. Sure. It was, I planned it, we got the, 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 um, department, um, uh, costume department hired it and we dressed it up and it looked brilliant, didn't it? Yeah. And it's just, and it's- And that is BBC licence fee money <laughs> going towards you <laughs> dressing up your editor. Cause you didn't pay for it. <laughs> the BBC paid for it, so that <laughs> is how your money is being spent, people. But, but, it's available on the DVD again. Don't Nothing's it. wasted. Which you have to buy for <laughs> 15 quid. <laughs> Sure. So, yeah, it's, it's, a win -win it's like it's the whole thing is one big reality game show, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, anyway, so the answers, give us the, give us the. Go on, give us the clue. I haven't got an give idea. Go on, give me the clue then again. Right. Well, do you want to say who the winner is or no? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hear the answers. Uh, first, first clue was uh, if you get a bulb when it's young, you yeah. look after it and that you teach it stuff. Yeah. What's going on there? Go yeah. on. The initial was R. Yeah. Right. That was that was razor light. All right. Raise a light, you raise a light. Raise yeah. a light, okay. Kind of works. Yeah, Second didn't matter one. what sort of bulb it was then. <laughs> it was very sure. specific. Uh, Go, in mind. Go on. People have a problem doing this when they get home from a night out drinking. Yeah. What's the problem they're having? They have a problem getting the key in. Getting the key in, that, key in, key in, key in. That's the. That's awful. Word. That doesn't count. Key in. Key in. It right. It's keen. It's yeah, keen. It's one to. Right. Awful. Um, awful, awful, one, awful, awful. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah. Uh, that, the initial I was C, that was Caesars. C, C, Sars, C, Sars, Caesars. They managed to get that as well. Who's three. Caesars? I love the fact that even he knows they managed to get that as well. Did anyone get all three? Yeah, a few people That's did. terrible. Okay, Caesars. who was the first one? Who I don't first? know what it says about XFM and its listeners that people are getting these answers, right? I know. Go on then. I mean, horrific. But anyway, we're gonna give it, and he goes forward, as I say, for the big prize, the big prizes in, uh, six weeks' time. It's Paul in Bookham. Where well done, well done, Paul Bookham. But also he does get um, the uh, complete series of uh, Alias, League of Gentlemen, that Rock Gods album. Um, so you know it's, it's, it's pretty good. But Open Water on DVD and a chance to win all those prizes. Brilliant. Yeah. Coming up next, a court smacking a bald man mm. on the bumps mm. really hard. Good. XFM 104.9 <laughs> playing Green Day. Uh, the studio's falling apart. I know, his microphone broke, his mind broke. Rick, I don't know why, uh, Lindauer's, the sparkling wine, <laughs> will be associated with this shambles of a show. It is falling apart. This is awful, this studio. It's got to be fixed. Right? Right, now, Carl, come on, dear. It's the time where I'm gonna let a cork off. Do you want to film this, Steve? Yeah, let me That'll be available on the website next week. com. so see Carl getting hit. One bloke suggested we leave the metal cap on because it's get a better pitch. Mm -hmm. But we'll take that. <laughs> He's taking. Let's get the Wait. camera ready. Get the camera ready. Ready? So if you just joined us, um, we are yeah. using some Lindauer's sparkling wine <laughs> to basically. Well, what can I say? We fire a cork at Carl's round right, ready? head. Ready? Hang on, hang on a sec. Let me just put the headphones on. All right, film this then. Okay. He's in position. Just look. firing right. up. Okay, Carl. Carl, come on there so we can. See your head a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... Oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! No! <laughs> 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 oh, it's like, it's like jackass. <laughs> Did it hurt? Did it hurt? What do you mean, did it hurt you? I saw it just... It, I went off, it went off course, did it? Just glanced at it. 
<laughs> right, Lindo, is you going to send us um, eight more bottles, please? Yeah, we're going to get this right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Homesick. Kings of Convenience. Beautiful. Yeah. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly the end of our first of six shows, I'm our just summertime back to special. Some of, the, some of the highlights, Rick, so far today. I don't know what you've made of it. We, we Finger up the arse. Finger up the arse. Testicles early on. Uh, um, oh, we don't age very well. Bit of, Kent, a bit of racism. Bit of racism with the uh, Germany's full of cants. Yeah, that, that was a highlight. swearing. Um, um, cork, cork on the air, got champagne down the electrical <laughs> works. <laughs> So yeah. good. Just to, the, the, the finale is uh, it's monkey news, obviously. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, yeah. Well, there isn't. Uh, I've been away, haven't I? Oh, uh, there's been no monkey news. You can't get. No, no, but I haven't had, had a proper chance to sort of, you know. Um, Carl, your monkey news is of spurious tales from the 17th <laughs> century sometimes. So let's have one of those. No, let's have a so monkey that, who dressed as Zorro and they thought he was uh, a woodsman, but when they took his head off he was only he was a four foot hairy <laughs> chimp. Let's have one of those ridiculous stories. Well, we've, we've done that though. But uh, do you want to go back on some of the ones? Oh, for just what that, is the monkey one? news? There must have been some monkey news this right. week. The only thing that sort of stood out, do you know, like, they're having problems- You're just making this up! Where's your information? Where's the piece of paper? Where's the document? What is this? Because I've been away, so I haven't got anything right, let's just hit, let's, 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 But let's it's hear bad enough out. when he's reading it he gets it wrong. When he's just riffing, it's gonna be absolute twaddle. Let's hear it out. Right, do you know, like, they're having problems getting new, new, um, people to be policemen? Oh, for Go on. They've, uh, in America- they're taking them on to, uh, sort of join the SWAT team. <laughs> They've taken what on? Some little monkeys. Okay. Uh, giving them walkie talkies and all that. And, uh. Well, they can't talk. <laughs> They're just walkies. <laughs> yeah, giving them some walkies. What do you no, mean? What, what was. They're giving commands and that. And, uh, they Well, so it's one way. They, they tell them. They've got the little things well, strapped to them. They're good at, like, Getting into small, sort of, you know, small places and that, and sort of, you know, cracking stuff and all that. Like I say, it's just half a story I just picked up on. That's not a story. Well, what do you want? Monkey news. Well, I'll, I'll get some better stuff next week, but I've literally like got off a plane. This is the ago. worst. Uh, this is one of the worst shows we've ever done. And that's saying something, Rick. This we've done some tripe. <laughs> this is nothing. And to end with the the police in America have given monkeys walkie talkies. That's nothing. That is a disgrace. And what do you mean that you've not had enough time to prepare? We've been off air for eighteen months. Yeah. yeah what? There's been no accumulated monkey news in that time. It's got to keep it fresh, though, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Great one. Well, Cold train. Speed of sound. Steve, I know you, uh, like an insight to my, um, musical taste. Always. That, but that's my favourite Coldplay track of all time. I just thought I'd, uh, just throw that in. Not a fan of clocks? Uh, no, I think I, I uh, overplayed uh, Parachutes a little bit and, uh, but, uh, so that's my favourite one. I like it. I'm, uh, I'm afraid to say I'm a bit of a Philistine when it comes to Coldplay. That sounds the same as all the other ones. I'm sorry to say. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to meet these boys one day. <laughs> Yeah, and they say I'll turn to their face. I don't care. A little bit rock and roll. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm Ricky Gervais. A little uh, funny little words all type voice over there is Stephen Merchant, and with us our producer Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. Whenever we say producer, of course, that is in inverted commas. Yeah. Done with the fingers. Well, he, I, he didn't have it. I wanted to play some off my iPod today to record it because they didn't have it here. Uh, it's a great track called Anthony and the Johnsons. He didn't even have the lead. He went, right, it's difficult. And he, and he went, is it any good? I went, yeah, it's really good. He went, well, why haven't we got it here already then? Oh! Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the paradigm, is it? If x has not got it, it's no good. Four non blondes doing well, is it? That's still in the cupboard, is it? Unbelievable. We're a little bit annoyed today, aren't we, actually? I'm really annoyed. Yeah. All that stuff we did last week, um, uh, uh, that Landau sent us some sparkling wine, and we thought, right, we're, well, you shamelessly plugged it. Yeah. How many times have you mentioned it? I about twenty mentioned times. It about twenty times. We we uh, well, the finale was hitting Carl on the head with a cork. That's on the website, by the way. Okay. RickyGervais dot com. Go there and see Carl being hit in the head with a cork. Right. Yeah. We and we said, look, send us free stuff. We'll talk about it. Nothing. The 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 the. Cupboard I mean, literally is nothing. Empty. The cupboard is bare. No one has thought. I tell you what. There's the, there's there's those guys from the office. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean let's be honest, Rick. We are taste makers. We're yeah. opinion formers, you and yeah. I. Yeah. And you'd have, you'd have thought if anyone was going to send us some free stuff, yeah, 
you know, uh, uh, it makes me fume. And well, do you know what it is? It's right. because people, PR people and that, they've realised no one's listening. But not only are we going against all our principles and losing our dignity just for some free stuff. And integrity. And integrity, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're what? going against excellent policy because obviously they would have got thousands of pounds for Landauer to be mentioned <laughs> last <laughs> week. On, 20 really. times. No, it wouldn't have. It's 40 quid. Right? It's <laughs> 40 quid. Yeah. For a, 40 quid for a nine minute advert. <laughs> exactly. So advertise your quality <laughs> stuff here. Yeah. Jeff's Garage. Cheaper than some other garages. <laughs> uh, we do. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, actually, so we played that for once for a <laughs> tattoo parlor. Yeah, you remember that? I'm sure we played that for a tattoo parlor. Who can? What tattoo parlor can afford to advertise on a radio station unless it's a tin pot one like this? Oh God! Oh, I've got good some good music today, though, Steve. Oh, really? I hope so. I'll be the judge of that. Go yeah, on, well, what well, 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 ACDC. Oh, have you got a bit of uh, bare skin? You need uh, colouring in. Come on to. Uh, Ron's bike shop and tattoo parlour. He'll write mum on your hand and give you Harley a tune up while you wait. I can't believe no one wants to advertise with us. And that only costs what, 20 quid? Yeah. And they play that I mean, I turned down millions of pounds to do adverts because I think it's beneath me. I don't, and I thought last week I'll give a little bit back. I'll give, I'll excite all these people who want to get a bit, they, Nothing. all I'm thinking is, Steve, either we, our cash rate's gone down, no one wants us anymore, mm -hmm. right? Which is impossible, surely. I would have thought so. Or, we're on a tin pot station that no one listens to. Now- Ding! Correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> correct answer. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm having to hold on the pop shield of this mic, because it keeps falling off. It's embarrassing. This it's awful. Really embarrassing. I mean, uh, oh, God. Well, Carl, what, what are your thoughts? Why have you stuck it out here? Uh. Nothing better coming in, I thought. Well, I'll tell you why, because you're always on holiday. You don't do a lot. Oh. You get paid, you know, well, doesn't he, really? He's a moany. I don't I mean, he doesn't try and get on at all. He doesn't deal with people. He moans about everything. And, uh, you know, so he's. I'm alright. I've got my own little room and that. Yeah. Like a cage. It is like a cage, isn't it? And he can shut the door, shut the door. If people walk past him, shut the door. He doesn't want to look in. He's like a, he's like a miserable old chimp. Did you, we notice today how much he, he is Simeon, isn't he's he? He's very strange, actually. Um, we maybe should try and get a picture on the website because Carl's arms are particularly chimp-like. <laughs> <It's> very, <laughs> really very strange. Because he's got that sort of, he's got long downy hair. It's and not the like, long extended knuckles. Yeah, yeah. And his totally round face that sort of the chin goes back and the, uh, the dome of his cranium. I think, Quite seriously, I, I know we sort of share about 98.5% of our genetic material with um, uh, bonobos and chimpanzees, but I think he's got a little bit more. Yeah. I, I honestly think he's a little bit of a throwback. Just his line, they just kept to this sort of really the ugliest one in the cave yeah. and the tree, and he really didn't. He didn't come out of it. I'm not saying you are, you know, I, mean, I don't think you. Well, you are. Yeah, you're chimp like. No, it, does, it does annoy me. My air annoys me on my body and that. Because I've got, I've got, like, air on me, on me little toes and that. Have you? And on the legs. Uh, would you like... see near your little toes, can you pick things up with them? No, that's right. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's the finale of this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to yeah. see if he can play a record and put the fader up. From using... a tyre. <laughs> yeah, while swinging yeah, a tyre. Just using his toe, his hairy toes. Yeah. I've sort of got air all the way, but then it just runs out where it should be. On the I know. Yeah. Of yeah. Just, do you, is this part of the reason why you're always uncomfortable about, you know, being nude or around na naked people? Uh, is that part of the reason, do you think, because you look so grotesque? Well, when I'm on holiday, I don't really like wandering about without a top on unless, like, it's a quiet beach or a, whatever. Sure. So, so what would you normally wear? Sure. I just have, like, a nice sort of light, summery, sort of linen shirt, maybe, just yeah. a few top buttons open. Yeah. But, I don't, I, yeah, I don't like, the naked body isn't that nice anyway, is it? You know what I mean? It, whatever it is, if you're a cat and you're shaved, you don't look that nice. You know what I mean? But with I, mean, I think you'll it. find the cat is naked even with its fur on. The cats don't wear clothes. No, but what I mean is, a, right. bald, a bald cat isn't that good. You know, you no. know it does me head in that I'm bald. I'm not, you know, I wish, if I could have hair, it would be nice, but that's like- Would you prefer animals to wear clothes like Mickey Mouse does? <laughs> Or goofy. You know that I don't like Edith and all that, we've done it. But don't you think sometimes you could sort of like, maybe, uh, um, I don't know, fancify a, a little bit? Like, um, I if there was such a thing as a, an ape, um, salon, and there isn't, Carl, <laughs> there isn't, right? Um, would you, you know, give a orangutan a, a trim, maybe start with hair? Because some of those look like they're going bald, but they've got a they comb should, over they don't should they? just have a shave. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like that. That's what I did. Just take it back. <laughs> and the underarms as well. 
Yeah, they, they've really got a lot of underarm hair. Um, even the women ones. Really? Yeah. That's disgusting. I know. I don't know. I don't even know why they breed. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they get they laid some of those horrible old, uh, hairy <laughs> ginger orangutans. Yeah, they are particularly grim, some of those. I know, yeah. The big ones. I know. Ginger yeah. ones. Yeah. <laughs> they can't be happy, can they? What is that? What, why is- where did that happen, the, the ginger thing? Why do people give them, like, hard time and that? Well, you just gave them a hard time then, so why did you do it? You no, were just flying just, in, were you, to it? People, people do sort of give- I, I don't- I don't understand why, but ginger people get quite a bit of stick and I, I've never understood it. No, I was doing it, it's just- I don't know why. I they don't do know. They do though, don't they? I don't know, it might be historical, it might have been because- I, I, I'm sure they don't ever in the world. I'm sure it's probably. No, they are. They're always. I've said to you about even like ginger cats are always fat because they, they're sort of sick of it probably. Oh, play a record! Wait, 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 wait. Ginger cats. What do you well, mean they're sick of it? They, cat, they've been eating like because yeah, they're upset. They've that. been bullied. You never see like a thin, happy ginger cat running about. He's always overweight and looking a bit fed up. It's just a good point, isn't it? <laughs> I would say it's a good point, Carl. It's a point. So last week, the Chinese don't age well, now anything ginger, including cats, yeah. no, are no. sick of it. No, but I'm just saying- Are I, you I ginger? Don't... Would you like to take issue with any of uh, Carl's points? 83 XFM is a text, you can text us, maybe you've got- maybe you've seen a thin ginger I'm not, cat. I'm not having a go though. That's what I'm saying, I'm just saying it's weird how, how people give them hard time. And it's- uh, if I could have air, I'd go for ginger air rather than being bald. Really? Mm. <laughs> from Ben Folds on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I had a fax. Mm -hmm. Never mind champagne and freebies like that. Just forget that. We're not doing that anymore. It didn't work, okay? But we are still in demand. Got a fax here, right? Uh, so guy says, I produce a program for the BAS scientists, right? Wintering in Antarctica. Now what this bloke is saying is, there are scientists, right? Um, researching in Antarctica, and they're soon, they're already locked away and sort of like out of touch because they can't get to them, right? But they're soon going to be living in 24 hour darkness because through midsummer here, it's, it's darkness for 24 hours for like three months and they're Jeez. totally cut off and he's trying to get some stuff together and he wants us to record a message and it said, um, uh, every year, um, uh, they, they choose a celebrity to do something, a message, uh, uh, of, uh, of their choice. They had Rolf Harris, David Attenborough, Jonathan Ross. This year, Ricky is the popular choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm up there with Rolf Harris, David Attenborough and Jonathan Ross. In, in terms of the vote amongst some scientists stuck in a hut <laughs> in Antarctica for three months. I think so they just, they've just got cabin fever. So that's they another poll, so that's another poll I've won. <laughs> Uh, a what British a Antarctic scientist in a hut pile. If I was trapped in a little room with <laughs> several other men for three months of pitch oh, darkness, oh, I, sexist, or, or, or indeed women, yeah. I can't imagine why I'd ever want a message from Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> why would Rolf? I mean, David Amber, fascinating. Well, I assume it is the site. It's the it's the animal. That I, I assume they're researching penguins or something, aren't they? If they're stuck there, or maybe but what's seismic activity, or maybe polar uh, uh, shift. I don't know. Possibly if he were researching kangaroos. Yeah. Oh, well, he, know, he knows about all animals, doesn't he? You can take him a budgie with a broken wing and he'll sort it out. Or he knows a man who does. Sure. He can, you know, he'll, he'll sort that out for you. And they do a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while yeah. you wait. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, but anyway, I thought they want a five minute message. We can do better than that. Let's dedicate the whole show to them, Steve. We can what? Dedicate the whole show to them. What was it, trouble with my diction? A little bit. I'm just thinking again, you know, we've got to slow down because <laughs> these guys are there, they're, they're working, they're busy. They're used to, uh, speaking eloquent yeah, <laughs> English. Yeah, exactly. They're used to talking to intelligent, yeah, educated people. Yeah. So Carl should be something of a surprise <laughs> to them. I imagine they'll just flood back early and come back to study him. <laughs> So, this is, uh, this, this show is dedicated to all you sign- I know nothing about them, I don't know how many there are, I know they're just, as I say, in a hut somewhere, presumably with a laptop, drinking, uh, hot chocolate out of steel mugs with- <laughs> Just looking up porn. <laughs> <laughs> they're not yeah. on the internet, are they? Oh, are they not? Well, no, What's there's no the phone laptop? line. Well, well how do they charge up the laptop when it runs out? Well, they've probably got generators. They must have other stuff. They've they, they got a telly in that, haven't they? Of course they have. No, for DVDs and things. Well, they could probably, yeah, they could probably have a, uh, a DVD player that, that would run off a generator and stuff. So they can play, I don't know what we're giving this on, CD or something. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um... And what are they... What, how can that enhance your life, though? That you, uh, like, two months has gone, you've sat there, you, you, you're chewing, um, Kendall Mint cake and, uh, uh, 
and just looking around at white walls, right, thinking that the thing's gonna come in any minute and put you out of your misery, <laughs> yeah. right? And you go, all right, lads, it's here, what? A five minute message from Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who? The, uh, fellow from the office? Oh, yeah. Go on. I mean, so yeah. I don't know how I can enhance. I mean, I, I go voted, mental. One of them's going, I voted for Ricky Martin. I, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand, um, what they're researching. You say penguins, but that's just a hypothesis. Well, they're assuming that, cause it's Antarctica, where, where the, uh, the penguins live. Is there anything else there? What else is going on? Well, there's presumably a climate differences and... Well, yeah, cause it's a, it's, it's a landmass, isn't it? Arctic's just on ice, and Antarctica is actually a continent, it's a landmass, so there's stuff there. But presumably not in the winter. I imagine it's like ten foot of snow, and really not a lot happening. Sure. I don't know what they're researching, they could be, it could be, uh, uh, uh uh, astronomy, as I say, it could be some sort of seismic thing, it could be just testing polar melting, it could be, it could be penguins, I, I've no idea. I haven't got the information. Uh, I, I don't think they want us to go into what they're doing. <laughs> they, they already don't, know, yeah. They probably want to know what's happening in the world for, oh. Well, we, we've got the man here. That's an interminable five minutes for them. They've already, we've already wasted <laughs> that five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna put it on excited to hear from you, and they've just got five minutes of us discussing on, what though. they might be doing. What I'm worried about is this bit, like, well, for these, for these ten people there, we've just annoyed the two hundred listeners we've got. <laughs> Because they're thinking, what's in this for me? <laughs> well, we'll have fun along the way, and what I think we're doing, they, they've been stuck there, as I say, they're out of touch, they don't know what's happening, so Carl Pilkington is the man, um, uh, we're gonna have a break, we'll have a song, maybe some ad breaks, and then Carl is gonna let these scientists who are stuck away in the darkness know what's been happening for the last couple of weeks. Is that alright, Carl? Well, I, you know I don't really follow the news, so oh, I don't play a record. I was gonna ask them what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace a glorious day. Well, it is a glorious day, Steve. Brilliant. Every day's a glorious day, isn't it? Well, it is when I'm with you. Yeah, love the world. Yeah. Um, so these scientists, they're stuck away in the darkness. Um, let's tell them what they've been missing. What's the highlights, Carl, of the last, um, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant and Carl Pilton, by the way, XFM 104.9. Um, etc. What's, what have they missed for the last, uh, just, just, just do the last few weeks. What have they missed? Remember, they haven't got newspapers, they haven't got telly. What, what's the, look at him, he's looking at me like I just said that in Arabic. <laughs> what, what do you understand? Think what, what's happened. Think what they haven't got that you know about. What have you seen and heard in the last couple of weeks that they couldn't have? Well, like on, on the news and that, what's, what's gone on in the world and that. Y yeah. Uh. Well, or just things you've done personally. I think that'll be of less interest. Yeah. <sighs> Pope's dead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, li I like it. I imagine that. Imagine if that wasn't breaking it to them. <laughs> yeah. Like they're listening in. Oh, what's happened? Pope. The Pope's dead. <laughs> well, let's say like that. Break it to us gently, Carl. Well, I think that's better than how they do it on the news normally, though, isn't it? They make what? a big deal out of it, and it pa you panic a bit when it's just breaking news, and you think, oh, there's a war on. Yeah. And you go Pope's dead, and you go, well. So you just use that was. short, sharp tactic. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like softly, ripping a plaster off quickly. Said it, yeah. I just said it softly. No, Pope's dead. <laughs> Mm. When you were, you know all that coverage of the Pope with like those millions of people that had gathered in, you know, in Rome and stuff. Mm. I was thinking about, you remember we talked about the Queen Mother, mm. and they were queuing up, queuing up, queuing up to see the Pope. Yeah, like the state. four hours and to get a And once again, I couldn't help but feel if they popped on some kind of like dessert trolley and just wheeled them past <laughs> everyone else, <laughs> they could have got that done in about three quarters of an hour. Yeah. You know, once again, people not thinking. They're not expanding their minds. So you're yeah, right, logically. Logically. Well, like students and ragweed exactly. with a, with put a bed it, down on the street. novelty beds. They're all dressed in kind of cardinal's gear. Yeah. Just, you know, trundling them off and down the, yes. But it's, the way, it's, it's the way they also said, they've now got a new pope. He's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in B&Q. <laughs> <laughs> So, who have we offended? I, I mean, it, 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 the thing is, it's look, because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling a bit guilty about offensive, but it's going to be like we're going to be living with Salman Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm though. Not, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good that you can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. But, you know, whatever, if, if you can get away with it. Yeah, why <laughs> couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I mean, he goes, he goes there a lot, doesn't he? He goes there a lot! That's why! 
if you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, and we've we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps oh, he's not like the raffles, though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, it's, what's it? It's, it's own people. But let's put this in context. You know, he's not he's not a villain. But sometimes when people leave groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was, where they live <laughs> now, they've retired, right? They've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere <laughs> quiet, right? And it's so quiet- <laughs> It's not a witness re- uh, <laughs> re- <laughs> <location> <laughs> protection <laughs> scheme. But because- because there's only about eight people live in this village, it's not worth, like, the- the-, the like, corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in the it's village? A, it's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. <laughs> so, uh <laughs> So anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you're meant to call up and go, all right, Harry, uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop, and my dad found that out. <coughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box, have a look mm. at what's, what's left lying around. Yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village, <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, I, I, you know what I mean? It seems in Manchester you can probably get away with this. There's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's, he's stopped doing it now. Has he? Stop doing it. Yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. 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 Good. All right. So with the Pope's dead, any other big news? Um, there was that uh, that thing I told you about last week. The foot long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does this mean to them? They're going to think that the world's been taken over by them. It's not like this never did it. We're not going back. There's a foot long spider on the loose. Are these people bright though? He, well, let's have a look. Antarctic scientists. Yeah, yeah, they've probably got an O level yeah, or two. They're looking at penguins all day. Yeah. I, so how bright have you got to be? What do you mean? Well, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, do I? But they've been chosen. This probably cost millions of pounds to set them up there. They're pro- yeah, they're- they're pro- oh, Carl. This- I'd say this is like- for scientists, this is like Big Brother. <laughs> you know I mean? This is like a big dinner scientist there, yeah. watching this, finding it's out what's gonna go on, there's little challenges that they give them, little time. It's like this. Celebrity Love Island without the sun and slappers. Mm. Go on. I think, what else- what else has gone on? Well, while you're thinking, Carl, I should just tell you, now, you threw that question out earlier, um, why are ginger people historically mocked? We've had a couple of responses on the text, 83XFM. I, again, as ever with XFM listeners, don't believe what they say, don't trust what they say. But no. one of them, um... Have we got any respect for anyone in the world? Um, get back to you. Uh, Pete in Tooting, now again, I think this is nonsense, he claims that the reason ginger people are disliked is because Judas was ginger from the Bible. How- I don't know where he's come up with this idea. No, um, I've heard that. But sh- I mean, are there a great many people from- you know, the Middle East, who are ginger? Well, that's probably why he stood out. What sure. You, and he's pro- he was probably fed up, and he thought, I'll get him back. Yeah. Maybe- Unless he was wearing- unless he <laughs> had his hair dyed ginger when he was on the witness protection scheme. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Which he had to go into, what, after what, it all came out in the book. What did he do? What's- What did he do? He, he, stitched, up, he stitched him up, didn't he, to the Romans, didn't he, Judas? Didn't he do it for forty pieces of silver or something? I'm, I'm not big on the Bible, but apparently- um, Incidentally, if you'd like us to uh, stitch up any kind of messiahs for 40 pieces <laughs> of silver, just get in touch, 83XFM, uh, we're willing to do that for you as well. Um, but so that's, so that's one, one explanation. There's another one here which is, uh, again, I don't believe this for a moment. It says here, ginger people get a lot of stick because in, in Elizabethan times, people with ginger hair were told that their mother had slept with the devil. And that was why their hair was their hair was ginger. So there's two options. Maybe if you've got some more, you can uh, any more spurious thoughts, then get in touch. Eight uh, three XFM. But yeah, I don't know. So, uh, no, 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 there might be truth for both of those. I mean, the truth. The point is that if only of those are true, they were already being picked on. If you know what I mean. Right. That's the point. Mm. It, it's mm. sort of like I, 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 maybe that's not the the the, uh, the total root of it. Well, the Judas thing might be the root of it. The first big um, ginger to. Uh, do some, uh, uh, a little bit So if off. he was bald, then old bald people would be like, Yeah. Get our time on that. Yeah. Well, we do mock you behind your back anyway, Carl. Don't, yeah. That's going on, don't worry. Mm. Uh, so, t- uh, play a record and think of something that's happened to tell these poor scientists what's going on in the world. Mm. All you've come up with so far is the Pope's dead and there's a big spider. What is that? It's chicken. 
<laughs> the Pogues, rainy night in Soho. Uh, I hope uh, I hope there isn't a rainy night in Soho tonight, Rick. I'm right. <laughs> You're one of those uh, who agrees with me. <laughs> so we just had a, uh, an email here from a guy called James Lee. He says, uh, hi, just writing a bit of info on the scientists in Antarctica. I'm a scientist who's just come back from one of the Antarctic bases called Halley, uh, or Haley. There are 15 people staying there over the Antarctic winter. The scientists are looking mainly at the atmosphere, things like the ozone hole and meteorology. Right. I think there are six scientists staying over the winter as well as a doctor, electrician, mechanic and a carpenter and so on. And so he's saying, uh, they do listen, they can't, they have the internet so they maybe could listen uh, to the show on the internet. And uh, if you get the chance, say hi to Francis and the rest of the winter is for me. Sure, no problem. Yeah, thanks James. Um, but yeah, there they are. That's what they're doing. That's what they're up to. But, but why, why are they asking you for a message though when I mean, have, have these people got families and that, or are they convicts, or...? <laughs> 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 no! What do you mean, of course they've got They probably do get messages from their family. <laughs> well, what, why are you doing one for one? Is that... I mean, say, do you know how, like, you see it in, like, porridge and stuff like that, where if someone's in prison and no one visits them... Yeah. ...and they sort of look a bit fed up on that? Is this message that you're doing for, for like, people who d don't get a letter in the post from... Brilliant. So they, they put this on the shelf until someone doesn't get one. All right, Hargreaves? Yes, sir, I didn't get a message today, sir. <laughs> you have got a message, Hargreaves. <laughs> I've what, sir? Hargreaves, you have got a message. Really, sir? From Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really, sir? And I give it- Don't talk. <sighs> don't talk. Please, there are scientists listening. Try to d keep the talking shit down to a minimum yeah, today. What's annoying me is there, right? They're saying this stuck over there for months. But it yes. seems to me like they're wasting a lot of time. Right? Why? Well, you're saying they probably watch DVDs. They're saying they've got internet access. Yeah. Yeah. They're well, I'm wrong. Listening to messages. Yeah. Get the job done and go home. Well, Do that's so. Well, then we don't have to tell them anything then because they, they listen to the internet. They've got, if they've got the internet, then yeah, it's a waste of time. Good point. Play a record. Well, hang on before that. Here's a good point. You've had long time to research what's been going on in the world. We just had an email here from Nicholas who says, why haven't you told them about the recent pig Olympics that just went on in China? You've missed that one, Carl, once again. Who won? <laughs> First of the game to die, Morrissey, XFM 104.9, and Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, you failed miserably. The scientists stuck away. Right, one more chance. What what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to. What have you seen in the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, like I say, I don't I don't really watch the news and that, so right. I can't uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing. I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So, I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, don't even know. Uh, but, uh, I'll tell you about the Pope and that. Yeah, he's mm. pretty extensive. What uh, about the, uh, the EU constitution and the, uh, the no votes? What, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What, what's the problem there? Oh, this, this isn't, this no, isn't, better, this better isn't broadcasting though, is it? This is nothing. Come up with something. Well, the Talk! Fat, the fat baby then, the fat baby that they found, that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That, uh, uh, oh, for f I don't know what, it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It what? was on the telly, it was on the telly and But what was on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell, tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just they've found some, uh, there's, there's this illness called Momo, right? And, uh, they've just got this, this woman had a kid. It's really sad, it was on Channel 4 and that, right? And, uh, Kids born. You sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids born and that, right? Momo? It's called Momo, Isn't that a yeah. black music award? No, no, right, little, little fat baby and that, and uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies. Right. And uh, one so of them- They're in danger. How fat? Are you not telling me what do you mean? How fat are they? Six stone it was, it was only two. And uh, so there's, there's three of them in the world, and there was this one, and there was one in Brazil. Are they like and, endangered? Uh, is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't I'll be worried. Is it like a conservation campaign? <laughs> and <it's their> face. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just sad. If you, I know. Uh, it's easy to show that, but, but, you, but if you've you seen it, you just go. It's a bit, bit sad than that. Um, well, I haven't seen it, and I know nothing about it. Well, I've told you, there's three of them in the world. I, d I st uh, okay. What else was on telly? Uh, the uh, something I watched the other night. That was just good. 
Uh, again, you know I learn stuff from the from the telly. I don't watch the news. Yeah, well, you don't about. learn stuff from the telly. Yeah, you, know, you, you, what, you told us there's a fat baby in forget the world. Forget about them. There's in, a spider. In, a spider eats chickens, and there was a fat kid. That's forget, all right. Forget them in Iceland, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll give them rockbusters later to do. Right? <laughs> Iceland. But um, but what's her name? I tell you what is interesting, Steve. What? Um, I didn't know that much about it. O autism. Okay. Oh, good. There's some more entertaining stuff on XFM one hundred four point nine. To cheer up people. Go on, and what? What? Come on. No, right. Have you heard about it, Steve? What autism. Is? Uh, it's, uh, it autism. scares me to death when he comes up, when he touched on a serious subject. It, uh, we've been talking about wheeling a dead pope round, the Chinese don't age well, and ginger people are hated, and now we're gonna that. touch on a really- I mean, no, I uh, uh, my heart's in my throat. Go yeah, on, Carl, then. Tell me- tell me your insights to autism. Right, well, it, there's this- it, again, Channel 4, coming up with some good stuff at the moment, right? It might have been Channel 5. Um, <laughs> But what's the name? It was it's the attention span I like! Uh, this, these, these people who, uh, they've got, got like this autism thing going on. Yeah. And, uh, they sort of take in a lot of information, they get sort of a bit, they get so into it that they know everything about that subject and what have you, right? And there was this lad who, uh, he knew everything, right, about EastEnders. Right. He sort of, the, the cameraman was saying to him, uh, so, you know, why, why are you standing on that? I said, oh, I don't know, I just like it. And he said, uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was a Thursday, it was five to eight, Pauline Fowler walked in, she had a pink jumper on, she said, all right, love. And he remembers everything from that moment on. Yeah. Right, and everything. Which is great, but then, the way the program was making out, it was almost like they were saying it's, it's a disability. <laughs> right. When in a way, it's more like a superpower. Sure. Like, like Rain Man. <laughs> well, if, you, if, you, if you can take it's Rain Man, no, I mean, he has special autistic powers. <laughs> oh God! We must send, we must send for Rain Man. I, I don't know what to do. So I don't you know mean, what to so do. He would be a but great there's other things. So a autistic Sorry. mastermind. He'd well, be what I'm saying is, don't be watching EastEnders though. Sort of. Why didn't they give him an encyclopedia and say, get into that? Sure. That'll be useful. Yeah. Keep him away from EastEnders. Wasting his time there. But I don't think it's a. It is a disability. No. Yeah, there, there are other things, and they're, they're not. Uh, it's, it's also autism is a matter of degrees. From what I know, uh, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I feel that I have to at least be the voice of reason, as as ill-educated as I am on the subject. But I think one, there's degrees of autism. I think some are higher performance than others. There's other there's other issues with it. It's not they just they just got good memories. They don't go around doing tricks for people because they can remember stuff. There are other there are other issues with it. Do you know what I mean? Right, well, I mean, they did, they seemed a bit- But you watched the programme! What did you learn? That he knows when Pauline Fowler came in! Yeah, I mean, there was other bits where they couldn't control her emotions and stuff. Oh! But, but that, but, other, that other little bit, yeah. But the main, the main bit of it was he, he can soak up information and stuff, and I'm just saying he didn't seem really bad. Do you know what I mean? There's disabilities where people say that's a bad disability. Go it's on. like how people say about, uh, this is brilliant. This is just like uh, I, I. This is amazing to be in a room with this man. It's incredible. You just wind him up and listen to what comes out. And no, I'm, I'm going to sit back it's now. It's I'm not going to even. I'm not going to defend you no, no. or explain anything. Just tell me. Go on and tell me about the other disabilities no, what, that are worse. What, what, no, what I mean is how people can sometimes easily get mixed up. Um, how people are scared of like a cyclop. <laughs> when at the end of the day, he's got a disability. A bloke with a bloke. Who's with scared of a cyclop? No, it's Apart just from Jason and his Argonauts. <laughs> where have you, where, where's this cyclop that you're scared of? No, I'm just saying in history and in books and that. No, 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 not in history. Hi hi history happened. Yeah. But what are you thinking of? You're, you're mixing history with Greek mythology and Roman mythology and every other type of mythology. But what do you mean? There wasn't really a giant cyclop that went round picking up ships and throwing them around. That's not history, Carl. Do you think Batman's history? <laughs> no, but this was, uh, it was ages ago, wasn't it, when we were sort of falling No, I'm not saying thing. it didn't happen ages ago, I'm saying it didn't happen. Well, he might have done. There's no, I mean, what's so ridiculous about a fellow with one eye? In the middle of his head, and he's big and scary and lives in a Why cave. Why is he scary? Because he's got, what, if he had eight eyes, I'd be scared of him. <laughs> At the end of the day, he's got a dis- uh, oh, we'll talk about him a bit. <laughs> Bobby Womack, across 110th Street, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant, and over there, Carl Pilkington. Can I just remind people that- A man um, so stupid, it isn't actually offensive. Mm. 
I just want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Good. Uh, no, I just wanted to remind people that they can get in touch, uh, on the text, <laughs> 83XFM. You'll need that, uh, text number shortly because we're going to be playing Rockbusters very soon. Um, Gav has texted it, texted in, and he says quite simply, what's happened to the webcam? All I can see is a bold monkey. <laughs> um, well, you're absolutely right, we'll try and get that sorted out for you. But, uh, we're rock, we're rockbustering now. Do now. Should we do it now? Say it up now. Okay, great. Yeah. So we'll just, you well, should just remind people, Rick, for, uh, particularly if they're trapped in Antarctica for the next few well, months, what this game is. Well, this is, um, uh, um, blockbusters, um, just totally ripped off, and, um, the clues are bands and artists. Um, they, Carl says they're cryptic clues, they're not cryptic clues, they're more like what word am I thinking of. They're tenuous, um, some of them don't work at all. Mm. Um, so it's, it's really are you in tune with a shaved monkey? I mean, it's nearly embarrassing to get the clue. I pride myself on that I don't really get them. And I, I'm, I'm sort of proud of that, because you shouldn't. Yeah. But anyway, I've, I think I've given it a, a big sell. Yeah. Now, you do win tat today, but the big prize is going forward to be in the draw in, um, five weeks' time, when there's a, a signed, uh, Homer that I uh, got Matt, uh, Grain in to draw. If you go to rickytoraise.com, you can see him drawing it. It's an original. Well, uh, if they want to see it, they can go to xfm.co.uk slash ricky, and it's actually... Just click on it, you can have a look at oh, it. Oh, you can see all the pictures there, can't you? There's also a signed, um, Nigel Tufnell, um, poster, uh, and, uh, us three as, um, flanimals. But there's a little, actually, video clip, I was on oh, rickyserace.com, mm -hmm. you can actually see Matt Groening, um, uh, drawing it. Well, so those, those prizes are the ones, that, the big prizes you can win in five weeks' time when you, if you get to the grand final. In the meantime, uh, it's the usual selection of mediocre gifts which will be given away. That we've found in a draw that people have sent us yes, to give so away. Yes, first up we've got, uh, the, um, I think, J well, I think most people agree, the mediocre John Travolta film Ladder 49, which I think right. barely made it into cinemas over here. No. Uh, we've also oh, got on DVD. And, that, what, you, and we're giving that away. <laughs> we're giving that away. Brilliant. On DVD, oh. uh, the TV series <laughs> Grumpy Old Men, which I think is repeated every single night on BBC Two. Oh! Anyway, uh, and, and we're, and that's free as well, is it? Yeah, oh, that's free. Oh, well. okay. That's free well. right. uh, we've got the complete third series of Alias. Great gift. Um, only if you've seen the previous two seasons. So, um, is that the one I mean? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, French and Saunders at the movies. A collection mm -hmm. of all their hilarious movie mm -hmm. spoofs. Um, again on television. I think every Friday. And uh, the TV series Operation Good Guys. You know, fine series, but you could see that on UK Gold most nights. So, so um, once again, an excellent. But session. if you win all those and take them straight down to record and tape exchange, you will be able to get two albums that you actually like. That's exactly right. So. Well, People send us then, so they sort of get bigged up on the radio. So that's done. We don't need to, <laughs> need to worry about that. Yeah, angry. So uh, anyway, then three three clues. Well, hang on, let's play the jingle. No, I haven't got one. Have you not got a jingle for Rockbusters? No, I'll do one quickly then. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Rockbusters. Brilliant. All right. So we've got we've got three of them. Uh, cryptic clue and the initials. The band. It could be a band or an artist. We've done all that, haven't we? Yeah. All right. First one. Uh, the fella oh, for f let his wife know how he got the bruise on his leg. Right? Give us that again. The fella let his wife know how he, how he got the bruise on the leg. He got a little bruise. Hey, yeah, it's, it's all, uh, imagine it's that in the Times crossword. You read it again, it's slightly different. Every time I look back at this crossword, it's slightly different. All the words change. The it initials, can't be cryptic. The initials there, C L. Right? C L. Fella got a bruise on his leg. He let his wife know how he got it. What's going on? Right, <laughs> And Se what's the next, uh, second one. clue? <laughs> second one. That, uh, that Potter lad had, uh, a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards and that, right? He had a lot of bottle playing with the wizards and that. What's, what's all that about? <laughs> right? I love it! T he always says, what's all that about? TB there. Band or artist, the initials TB. That Potter lad, he's got a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards, right? And the, uh, the third one, uh, the Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. Oh. What, what, what do they need, right? Mm. The Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. The initials TM. Right? 83936 is the text number. Um, we don't want to receive emails from this because we can't be bothered, so just a quick text. Make sure you include, uh, all three answers. We're not interested unless you've only got, you need, you need to get all three. Yeah. But, but the winner may only get two, but oh, it's, the it's the first one with the most right answers. Yeah. Uh, that wins all those, all those DVDs. Hey, this is a box set, to be fair. That's pretty, that's a pretty good prize, that oh, one. Oh, you could probably get, you could get two, uh, two, two CDs when you take that down to record tape exchange. And you don't need to see the first two seasons because you won't know what's happening anyway. Oh, okay, fine. Um, 
I'm excited to think that there's um, some people now in uh, Antarctica just scrabbling around to get a pen, yeah. just trying to figure them out. You know, that'll, that'll keep they'll, they'll probably uh, stew on that for the next <laughs> two months. Here we think gorillas, gorillas on XFM. 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, uh, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Carl, okay, we've got to sort this out. We didn't meet again this week and this is a shoddy show. I thought we had a sort of framework for it, but, um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, I uh, thought, it'd be, uh, you know, Carl could sort of tell him what was going on. He doesn't know anything except watching telly. Late night telly on s strange channels, like he gets all his information uh, about the news on Anna Nova and, I mean, I, I even tried out because um, Monkey News last week was awful. It wasn't Monkey I mean, News. It wasn't Monkey News. It was I, oh, I, I can't remember. It. On, I've been away on holiday. Brilliant. Yeah, and the, the Monkey News stops. Uh, um, I, I phoned him up that on there was a, there was a front cover um, of the I think it was the Telegraph one day this week, and um, it was an ironic story. It was a fluff piece, but it was a funny story. It was about a uh, um, a monkey in a uh, in a zoo that had had a a. a a ruck with its father because it's adolescent. It was like the equivalent of like 16 to 18 and it had a fight with its father and it escaped. It ran away and it was like, you know, an interesting story. Yeah. I phoned Carl up and said, this is a monkey news. Um, a monkey has escaped from its cage after an argument with its father and he said, what was the argument about? <laughs> I mean, he thinks like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Amazing. What was the argument about? Like the zookeepers are going, oh, look, oh no, he's brought up his untidy room again. The father, oh look, he's caught him smoking. Again. Oh. I mean, what do you mean, what was the argument about? They have fights. They oh. have fights and then it ran away. His dad wanted him to go to college, but he just wants to quit and get a job. <laughs> yeah, and he, he fancied a monkey in the other cage. And the father was saying, she's not good enough for you. No. Oh. So what was it about? News today? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of monkey news. You got a little bit of monkey news, right? Yeah. You've redeemed yourself right. then this we, week. We've got some stuff there and that. Uh, what else has been going on? You were, uh, what are we going to talk about now? So I've got, so I've had to come now. Your head's gone. monkey news. Yeah. And, why uh, is your brain, why is it, you, it seems like since we've come back on air, you have become dimmer. I mean, it is extraordinary. It's like, it's like BSC well, has kicked in. Or did really we just are. forget? We just forgot. Maybe what? it's been a long time we've forgotten just how stupid he is. Yeah. Uh, it's proper, do you know what I mean? It's, it, it's the silences. You know, yeah. he forgets we're on the radio. There's just I know, dead it's, air. it's unbelievable. And oh. it's, it's our name uh, on I this. Know. They put a poem. But oh, as I said before, you know, he is, he is, uh, 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 no offence, he's, he's not a bright, bright lad or educated or anything like that. You but know, some things he says uh, does border on the retarded. I've been trying to take in too much information though, that's that's the problem recently. Well, I said to you last week, I've been like reading more books and what have you, and trying to take in too much, but the problem is, like even, even watching telly and that now, Suzanne said to me, you know, stop doing that, stop watching telly late at night and going to bed, because it's, it's making your brain too active. And I'm sort of- Heaven forbid. And I, you know, I'm trying to get to sleep and I can't, and then when I wake up, I'm th she, she had a go at me the other day, right? Because it was the night after watching The Fat Baby, right? Woke up in the morning and, uh, she had a go at me because as soon as I woke up, I said, um, something like, how can you freeze time? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, aren't you gonna say good morning or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna burst! Just imagine it, right? It's a, it's that the sun comes up through the window. Oh, she's like, uh, Carl's like that, his little head. He, he, his eyes open, he goes, one of those floppy night hats. <laughs> How can you freeze time? Oh, God. But it's because, like, whatever, the night before I might have heard that on the news or whatever, and it's just been sort of whizzing around my head. Sure. Um, you know, th it was a big <laughs> debate. I think they found, <laughs> have, they, have they found a way of doing it or something? What are you talking about? They've done something about freezing time and all that. Oh, the, see, this isn't information, this is nothing. That is nothing, that. They've done something about freezing time. Imagine Jeremy Paxman coming on, going, well, I had the issues tonight, it said something about freezing time. <laughs> it's, you you uh, think before you talk. No, but I, I don't worry about how to do it, I just think about what affects that. Oh, one. they haven't asked you to get involved. Well, this is what Phew. I'm saying, though, you Phew. can't explain it, it's a, it's a tough thing, isn't it? But what's the point of me worrying about It's not about a that? question. Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking and he suddenly stopped and he was thinking about it and he went, oh, I don't know what, he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True though, isn't it? 
I've it's never seen any ghosts, full stop. There are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, but I mean when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record! <laughs> someone. Anthony and the Johnsons. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Interesting. Hope there's someone on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, um, more, uh, revelation. Um, we were talking about it last week, but Carl brought it up again, just now. Uh, didn't want to go to the doctors, didn't want to have a full sort of body checkup that may save his life, because he saw on the website they do a, a, a test where they have to insert a finger in his ass. Well, don't tell me about it. Why? Don't put it on the website. Just put, we look at your heart. Yeah. We check your blood pressure out. Yeah. And then they, they could just do it quickly. You could just sort of say, right. Uh, How would they do it quickly? No, but what I'm saying is it's, it's worse than it going in there knowing that, I mean, they've got it on the website. So you, you're on the journey on the bus thinking, in about 20 minutes I'm gonna have a finger up my arm. But they're doctors. Yeah, but just they're not doing it for a laugh. They're not filming it with a two-way screen. They're not putting on boxing gloves so it hurts more. They're <laughs> up. Oh, it's I prostate. All right, out again. Out again. I'm just saying in the, 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 saying in the day, the sort of. Do you think they're in the pub going? Here he comes. It's Pilton to know. I think it was Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Do they allow ladies to do that? Do they allow female doctors to of do it? Of course they do. They're doctors. No, that's worse. Though. You're sounding. You're sounding like him. No, I'm just interested in because you know. Do they allow female doctors to do the finger up the arse? Well, of course they do. They're doctors. Forget the female and male. They are doctors. Right. Do you know any female doctors to do that? <laughs> but what I mean is, I, isn't it a bit like if you're being searched at an airport? You know, and you're a woman. They send in a woman person to search you. They don't. They don't send in a bloke to do it. Is that the same thing? Yeah. I mean, they, they probably trust someone who's gone through uh, six years medical college not to be taking the piss as opposed to a fat security guard who couldn't get anything else. Do you know what I mean? You're talking about there's doctors all the time coming out in the papers. Oh, they gave them this so they could look at their boobs or whatever. Or, you know, it's all well, like you're no, always hearing stuff about dodgy doctors. But what I'm saying is the reason why they do that security because there's there's lots of security people and they can you know for your own you know for the, the you know um, your own modesty. They there's a female one to search females and a male one to search males and that's fine. But th there's not like four or five GPs to choose from and you go in there and you go, is it, is it your arse and testicles? Do you want a bloke or... It, you know, it, you, you accept it. they got long fingernails? They don't have long fingernails. What do you think this, this female GP looks like? She's sitting behind the desk like Cruella de Vil with, a, with, a, with cleavage and long red false nails going, Hello love, bend over. This may hurt a little bit. They, there's, there's gloves and Vaseline. You, it, it, I mean... Uh, this, I'm, I don't believe what there's two of you now in the room. Carl, they're doctors. They have to, they, uh, what would you rather do than put the hand down your throat and round your elementary canal to feel your ass? It's a quicker way in. You seem to know a lot about these doctors <laughs> and stuff fingers <laughs> off people's asses. You're a very well informed gentleman yeah. about this sort of thing. <laughs> well, say, say if they did find something. Yeah. Um, would you then have to get like a second opinion so someone else's no. finger? No. Well, no. They, they test it to see if there's anything suspicious. That it's usually uh, a, a, a swollen prostate, which which can be anything. Um, so they, you know, they catch it early, and that's it. They feel they feel up there. But if you want a second opinion, then the same doctor will just stick a thumb up and have a feel around there. <laughs> so it always works in the same way. Yeah. Well, yeah. if there's you know, if there's a doctor who can, I don't know, put me at ease. I mean, surely there's another way around it. I don't believe that. I mean, what is this? Sixty million people, or something in the world, isn't there? Sixty billion, or something. Uh, well, six billion, something. Yes, you got it. Right. He hit it. Well done. That's good work. Right. So yeah, this this six what six billion did it? Yeah. What's six billion then? Loads, isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, you want a doctor to phone up <laughs> to assure you that the finger at the bum thing is not painful and that it's necessary, and just that, that it's not necessary, really. It's just that it's not an easy way round. All right. What's you know the what phone number here? It's uh. I've changed, haven't they? Oh, for fuck. Oh, you're the producer! Hang on, here it is, here it is. 0871-222-1049, and I think you, you select option one. It tells you, anyway, what to do. Please, if, if, if you're a GP, or, or if, you know, even if you've completed medical, I mean, we, we want a qualified doctor, really. Anything else is not good enough for Carl Brookington. Um, just to, to uh, we'd love to talk, you can ask him all the other questions, because you know Carl, as I said last week, he, he, he doesn't, um, feel his own testicles because he doesn't like the feel. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like a doctor to explain to him uh, how necessary well, I, that I, is. And this is truthful as well, I've got a very slight pain around the genital area at the moment and I'm not, I think it might be some kind of groin strain but I'm a little bit anxious, not entirely sure Yeah, what I is, feel, so. I, I'm, I, 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 you've been with me twice when I've gone along to get them checked. Yeah. And I go, oh, what's that? Yeah. yeah. 
It's terrible. I mean, but, you know, it's usually- you, you, you're- I think you're in a pretty low risk there, aren't you? I hope so. You're, you're coming out of the twenties. I think it's a- I think testicular sort of- I shouldn't be doing this, I'm not qualified. <laughs> <laughs> they told all they said was to me is sort of like it's twenties and fifties. So like we're in. <laughs> mine sort of felt like they dropped a bit the other week when I was on holiday. I don't know if that's like when you're relaxing or I was wearing shorts a lot. How far? If it's two foot, it's too far. I was having problems walking. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Why? Well, it was just a bit sort of a bit. I, I had shorts on all day. I'm happy and walking about on the beach, what have you? Mm. And then at the night when I put some long trousers on. I, I was sort of walking like well, they, probably, they probably like stretch a little bit. Sometimes, uh, I, I told you when I was about 18, I was scared. <laughs> I, I, I went to uh, the doctor, I felt a pain, right? And uh, I was, because I was doing biology, I thought I'd show off this doctor. I said, I've got a pain. I think it feels like it starts in the epididymis and goes up the, through the urethra. By the, and uh, he went, <sighs> he said, your jeans are too tight, they're squashing your balls. <laughs> so uh, we want a doctor like that. So what's the phone number again? It's uh, 0871. <laughs> Two 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 one zero four nine. 1049 What character. do you mean the balls drop though? We've got to come back to this. I don't know, they just felt like, uh, it's not too bad at the moment. I was alright on the way in, but it's I, just- I, I feel twinges all the time, but you never know whether it's just it's because they're in- but they felt like they weren't my own. Do you know what I mean? It, they sort of felt a bit like these were- There wasn't a bloke it. standing really close to you, was there? No, you didn't get mixed up just <laughs> on the way back. <laughs> on the flight back. <laughs> so Someone else has got- Well, do, take a, um, leaf out of nudist books. They just walk round, they've they yeah, got nothing on it. Don't about nudists. Why? Well, let's- let's play this ad break and that and- Have you had another encounter? Mm, uh, if we've got time, I'll tell you about it. Have you really? Uh, right, we've got, uh, 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 who's that on the line? It's Rob. Rob, and, uh, are you a doctor? I'm a final year medical student. I'll be a doctor in two months, touch wood. That's close enough, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. So, um, uh, wh where do you study? Do you want to give, uh, more details or do you want to remain anonymous I as you're calling in to- I study at, at Hospital. All right, great. So, um, why do, uh, GPs, uh, sometimes put, uh, their finger up, um, a man's anus? To see what's there. You know, if you've got hemorrhoids, if you've got an enlarged prostate, you know, it's either that or they stick up a big tube and have a look up with a light. What? And it's easier to do that. Now, uh, are you um, dumbing this down for us, or are you going to foul your medical exams by saying stick up a big tube with a light? I I'm dumbing it down. Okay, come on then. We're all intelligent people here, uh, and Carl. So you can you tell us what now. What's that called? It's called a sigmoid escape. Right, nice. That was I a clever test, wasn't it, Richard? Twelve inch long. Robot. Yeah. Twelve inch long tube. I can put up there. So, Carl, would you prefer that or a finger? Well. So do they, do they sort of do the finger first, and then, I mean, at, at what point do they say, hang on, we need a light here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's, it's normally if there's something wrong. But, so, so if I go then, say if I go to this well-man clinic, right, and yeah. uh, they go, yeah, the art's good and that, yeah, uh, finger, yeah. there you go, and then they go, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna go and get me light and tube. I'd, I, you know, I could start worrying them because they've sort of found something. Yeah, they're, they're not likely to go straight in with the tube. They'll, they'll probably send you off some tests first. Well, Carl, there's the nothing. Well, right. you go to these places to, to, to put your mind at rest and to know where you are uh, with your health. I mean, it, it's not that you go along. That's, that's what most people worry about. They think that because I'll go along and they'll find something. Well, one, there's, that, that, that's, that's illogical. There's no, there's, it doesn't heighten the fact they'll find something because you go along. And two, if they do find something, it's a good job you went along. I mean, I'm a hypocrite because I don't go to the doctor. But, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 I, I've had that done. You had should be concerned if when they shine the little light in your ear, it comes out the other side of your ear. No, the other ear comes right out the other side. That's but, when you should be worried. But Rob, right, you said then, if they, if they find something, they send me off for some tests, why can't I just have the test without that and cut out the middleman? Do you know what I mean? Because you're wasting there, lots of money. There's hundreds of tests they could do, and they could do every test and they could all come back with nothing, or they could do the finger up there and send you for the three tests you need to find out what's wrong with you. But in this day and age, with all the technology and that, and like brainy doctors and all that, the only way to find out is sticking a finger up there. What are you worried about, Carl? Is it fundamentally that uh, this doctor who's, uh, uh, um, has done six years medical training, yeah, is, is, is it embarrassing to have a man's finger up your ass? I just don't understand how you can get round to that without- But what don't you action. like? Is it fundamentally you don't like anything up your ass, or is it, uh, is it the fact that it's a man's finger well, up there? I, d I don't like going to the doctors, it makes me nervous, because I think if anyone searches you long enough they're gonna find a fault with you, right? 
and especially if they're going that far into you. They're going to find something. And Probably not. Well, you know, I, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know how to get round to that sort of, that point where you get a, what, what do you talk to the doctor about when he's like, alright, nice day, uh, strap your trousers. He goes, I'm just gonna, he says I'm gonna just, um, Maybe. Uh, Maybe people just shut up and let you do it and then breathe a sigh of relief when you say there's nothing there. Yeah. But I'm is that at the end of the test or is that the first thing he does? It's the last thing. So that trousers up out the door. Because he knows it ends conversation, he knows it's a bit of a faux pas, the, you know, the doctor says, oh, I better not kick off with the finger up the arse, what I, what I do is I'll, uh, I'll start on with the, uh, you know, the head, and then we're then I go, oh, one final thing, Mr. Pilkerton. Um, so, so Rob- he, dro he drops his keys and he goes, pick them up, and as you bend over- Will, will you be doing this, Rob? Is this what you're, like, open to do? Um, you do all I'll, these- I'll have to do it at some point. All doctors do it at some point, no matter what they specialise in. So the first one, is he another doctor there to sort of make sure no, he's doing it right? Not, not dentists. <laughs> no, but do you know- Dentists aren't doctors anyway. <laughs> no. But, but do you know what I mean? Like, normally it's like a, a co-pilot will have someone with them for the first one. So when yeah. you- when you put your first finger in- Yeah. Will someone be there going, right, you just want to move to the left I've already done it. Have you? Yeah. Mm. See, that's the thing with a student, you're learning. So you get people teaching and, and you learn on these things. Can I just point out, uh, Rob, I, I think I'm right in assuming that, uh, uh, you have a glove on. Yeah. And there's lubrication. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt. No. There you go. What but, are you worried about, Carl? who's this person who, who everyone's testing on in your class? <laughs> it's not one person. It's one person. There's like, when a patient comes in and they've got a problem, <laughs> your, your boss, the, like, consultant, he does his finger up, and if yeah, he finds something, he goes to the patient, is it alright if the student has a feel as well? Then the student puts on a glove, puts the leave on the glove, and sticks his finger up, and sees what he comes out with. <laughs> uh, Rob, I wish you could see Carl's face. I mean, he just, his face when you said, then he goes, says, uh, can this fella have a go as well? He looked horrified that it was, a, he thought it was a free-for-all, like there's a queue of people trying on gloves and going, let's have a go. That looks good up there. What have you found? No, but I mean, how come you had to sort of, is it not something you could test on yourself rather than waiting for other people to come in? <laughs> because then yeah, you know, because then- an awkward position to get to, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, but you can have a good rummage then without feeling too awkward, but to, f to sort of have a go on, on your first patient when you don't really know what you're looking for anyway, do you know what I mean? Never really thought about it. Because you don't, if, if you've never done it before, you pop your finger in there, and you've got a sort of look, you've got to have an expression on your face like you know what, you, what you're finding. Well, they can't see what you look, they can't see you your face. There. You've got the, the big boss consultant there going, um, now move your finger there and you'll probably feel this, because he's just done it, he knows what's there. Well, what, what oh, so you're, he's already had a go, he's yeah. had a feel, and he's going, right, if you feel to the right, that's the conglomerate yeah. or whatever. Mm, the conglomerate, yeah. The, it's conglomerate is in perfect right, working well, order. Uh, well, that's, I'm still Thank you, Rob. That, thank you. I'm sorry you had to go, to go through this. Um, Carl is probably the worst patient you'll ever encounter in your medical career. Good luck mm. with your finals and, uh, and thanks very much. And, uh, do you know any female doctors who do this? Or? Thank you. XFM 104.9. Thank you. Josh Rags, it's the night time on XFM 104.9. Uh, Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. Um, and, uh, what we, what, is, is it time? Is I it think, time? I think so. Yeah? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right then, so, uh, there's this monkey, right? Right. In Canada, it's in a zoo in, uh, Toronto, I think it is. Mm. Um, his name's Pascal, right? And, uh, what happened was, all the, the people in the zoo, uh, sort of said, you know, what can we do, uh, sort of spice the day up a bit, right? Yeah. So they left, uh, No way this is a new story. Yeah. Okay. So they, they left. Any dates? Uh, Just let him read the news, or well, would interrupt Moira Stewart? It was an out to <laughs> No, because she always says, today, <laughs> so you know it's news. She doesn't say, right, there was a monkey, right? right. right. Well, in well, Canada, on, right? Just finish okay. the right. A couple of weeks ago, in this zoo in Canada. Right. Um, Jesus. They got a camcorder. Right. And they said, let's, let's leave it for the, uh, for the monkey to have a, a play with, right? So, um, anyway, they, they passed what? it around. One of BAFTA. And a couple of chimps and that were rubbish at it. They were like filming the floor and all that, and the fingers were always in shot and stuff like that, right? But anyway, there was one, this, this one chimp called Pascal, right? Who, uh, 
<laughs> annoys me that he calls them monkeys though. He They're was, not monkeys, they're he apes. Was, he, was a, he was a dab and at it. Like, he was like, uh, <laughs> filming stuff, really good shots, you know, sort of nice nude and that. He used the lighting properly and all the rest of it. <laughs> no, he didn't! Just let, is this the news? What are you talking about? Is this the news? <laughs> God, so Steve, anyway. it's so annoying. You know it annoys me so much. <laughs> Things like that. He was a dab under. He was doing really good shots. It really annoys me. Let's Any, hear the anyway, news. Anyway, right, so he started, uh, at night, like, when the zookeepers went home, he started filming, like, other monkeys on, on the go, like, like, whilst they were at it, right? And he was filming them and what have you. <laughs> the Ron Jeremy of I the zoo. It. You yeah. know it's gonna end up on the web. <laughs> So anyway, the zookeepers came in the next day and it's like, let's see what shots he's got. Anyway, he's got all this like, you know, all these monkeys at it and what have you. So, oh, um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, honestly, so, I, you so, don't know what this is doing to me, Steve. So, Can I stop him now? So they thought like, uh, actually there's a few monkeys who, who aren't at it enough. Do you know what I mean? They have problems and what have you. So let's give them the videos. That is so it. untrue! This is so untrue! So, it's so untrue that it was filmed by a monkey! So it's what so happened, untrue! Then, right? Rick, I don't know so, who to believe. <laughs> Oh God! You're talking so much shit again. So you must know that's not true. There's so no way. A load of tapes out. Look at me. Honest. Look at me. Don't keep talking. Look at me. Yeah. You must know that's not true. Can it's we just hear the end of this news? You. you had a go at me last week because I didn't have the full story. I've got the full story. You're still not happy. There is no way mm. that b by chance one all this. Oh, what should we do? Let's give him a camcorder. That could happen. Yeah. He then films him at it. That might happen. It might happen, but I don't think he'd keep the camera still. Uh, 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 two, they go. Hold on, this is good. Stuff. This is good shit. This porn's good shit. Anyway, Look at so that. He's got a lovely shot. Yeah, yeah. So this is ridiculous. Let me just recap because I, I lost my way there. So the monkey has filmed the the monkey porn, yeah. and now he's they're showing it to the other monkeys. Is he directing? Can you hear him just, saying stuff? Can you hear him go? It's like, just like you know, chimp pimp one, two, and three, and all the rest of it, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, so they've got all these other tapes um, because what happened was um, they said he's quite good at this. Oh. And, and the animals God. and the animals are uh, happy having him around because he's not a human. He's just one of the gang. Do you sure. know what I mean? So they started putting him in with other things like you know ostriches. Right. Uh, and talking <laughs> shit. I, I there was uh, so. And do you know they have a problem with pandas in in Japan. Yeah. So they've they've sent him out there, filming uh, filming a bit. Of, where are you going? It's, uh, you, honestly, you, you you really annoy me. There's Come no on, way this I, is happening. It's just near the end. Why can't he just find a real story about a a a, a, a monkey? Let's hear I mean, the end. At the end is he's really that he's, he's going to China. He's, he's filming the pandas and what. No, he's not. They wouldn't send a so monkey so director. No, they would not that. send a pointless. monkey director. Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen, possibly the greatest rock song of all time. I don't know. Well, big words. Big words indeed. But I, I I echo them. Um. Well, we're running out of time. We've got to get on. Well, uh, um. With the show, it's, uh, near the end. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope the scientists stuck in a big, I don't know, hut in the middle of nowhere in pitch darkness, ten of them, um, Oh, I've actually been fascinated, Rick, by the finger up the arse discussion. We had Chinese the, uh, don't age well, gingers, Pope. yeah, gingers, all that. Um, the big fat kid. Well, actually, th th they're, they're probably securing the knowledge that if they want to kill some time and it's dark, there's nothing better than stick your finger up someone else's ass. Exactly. So, uh, enjoy that. But oh, uh, they, uh, they've been hanging on for Rockbusters clues, I imagine. Mm -hmm. There's the answer. So, on, give us the clue again quickly. Alright, so the first one was, uh, the fella let his wife know how he, uh, got the bruise on his legs. Go on. Right, that was, that was, uh, Courtney Love. Yeah, Courtney Court, Court Love. So that's Courtney Love. Is that that's the first one, CL. So that one's fine. Uh, the second one, uh, that puff. Oh, what, what am I doing? Letting that one just go? Just let it go, just let it go. Am I just letting yeah. that go? Annoyingly, we haven't got time to take issue that, with it, Rick. Uh, okay. That Potter lad, he, uh, he's got a lot of bottle, hasn't he? Doing all that stuff with the wizards and that. Go on. That's, uh, Brave Harry. Yeah, the Bravery. Bravery, current sort of XFM band, the Bravery. Brave Harry, that works as well. No, it doesn't. And the last one. No, it doesn't. No, no it doesn't work. The Buddhists. It doesn't work. Won't be able to get in their temple without doesn't these. Doesn't work. Brave Harry. Brave Harry. Uh, it doesn't uh, work. Brave Harry. The Brave Buddhists. Harry. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these TM. That's yeah. the monk keys, right? So who got all, who got all them? Uh, the monk keys. Who got who got all them? Right. Which band are called the monk keys? The monkeys. Oh, the monkeys. Yeah, the monkeys. 
Right, so uh, who's, who's the winner this week? The winner this week is Gina. Well, we're letting that go, yeah? Gina got them all right. Uh, I think her text said she was from Horrorstead. I don't know, I've never heard of that place, but uh, I assume that's right. But Gina, you win that selection. I can't believe she got them. I cannot believe she got them, but she goes, uh, wins those and also goes into the, the prize draw and we'll have, um, six people competing for that, uh, original Matt Groening thing. If you go to rickyjerase.com you can see Matt actually doing that. We've got a signed Nigel Tufnell and, uh, um, original drawing of us as Flanimals. Um, I see what I see, xfm.co.uk slash Ricky. It's yeah. I'll we'll look at the picture. And, and uh, well that's it. It's, it's three right. o'clock. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. More drivel next time. A shaven monkey. Right. An honest mistake by the bravery on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Our producer. Right. An inverted commas heat put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, they know. They know. How are you doing alright Carl? Yeah. Didn't they also write something about me uh, Bald round head? Yes, perfectly round with yeah. a bald man head, they said, so. Did you need to know that when you listen to the radio on that? <coughs> really matters what my hair's doing. Your hair, have you, have you given it a little sh polish? Because you look like a cue ball at the moment, and you've had a shave in it. I've never seen such a round head. It looks, it actually looks like a plate with ears. Yeah, well, for those that have never seen Carl, I, I actually, um, if you remember, I think he looks a little bit like, uh, Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. It, <laughs> He does! He does! If you've ever seen that show, that's And also he looks like, you know when they say, um, they find one of the little four foot human and it's actually half a million years old and they give it a name and it's got, it's the first, you know, Australopithecus into, uh, he looks like one of them as well. Perfectly round little, he is the missing link, he looks half human, half monkey. Cause he's got a slight slouch as well. So yeah, it's know, like yeah. those pictures where you see it go from an ape to a man. And I he's know. Sort of in the middle. Yeah, and he's, and of course his monkey hands, his hairy little wrist to those little, those skinny little things that you can get oranges out of holes with. And it's unbelievable. Why are you so all shaved and polished and everything. Got a wedding. <laughs> what? Got to go to a wedding today, so, uh, thought I'd, you know, clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Shouldn't you be wearing head. a suit or something? No, I'll go home and put some that on. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Suzanne, uh, said, you know, make an effort. Uh, <coughs> sort of had a shave and that, and then she, I came out of the bathroom, she said, oh, your head looks a bit sort of eggish. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. <laughs> she always worries about when I have a shave, because I, I just, you know That's I mean? your girlfriend, Carl. I know. Saying that. that. Yeah. Just think, so don't worry about Heat saying it. And the funny thing is, it's Boyd, Boyd Hilton, I think, of Heat that wrote it. And he's got a little bald head. Yeah, no, don't slag him off. Yeah, but on the end of his review, does it say, you know, written by <laughs> Baldy Boyd? No, because <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's a magazine. Don't worry about it. Looking forward to the wedding? <laughs> Ah, uh, a bit boring, isn't it? But <laughs> <got a> bit, <laughs> um, they're probably listening. Should we do a shot? No, no, it'll be a great day for them. But I know what will happen. Suzanne will see, you know, all the fuss and that, and then she'll get ideas and I'll have to let her down and all that. Why? Yeah. Uh, why is it you don't want to get married again? I always forget. It's just it was it for at the end of the day. I've been with Suzanne for eleven years, right? Sure. We're happy. Well, I, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what counts. You're and, never happy. I am. I'm all right. Yeah, no, you're, you're happy with Suzanne and everything, but apart from that, you're never happy. You're, you are the most grumpy, moany thing in the world. I mean, I get annoyed, but I'm always happy. I was annoyed here, I was happy coming here, but there was a bloke behind me walking and scuffing his feet, he had a pair of those stupid skulls on, and he, he was clicking and scuffing. Wear some shoes, you don't have to click. Pick your feet up. Flip-flops annoy me. Mm. You know? But I'm happy, I'm just annoyed. You are just like, oh, the world's on me. It's rubbish, this. I know the world's great, it's just sometimes people annoy me by <laughs> being there, <laughs> you know. But, uh, <laughs> Steve said I should be locked in one of those towers that princesses used to be in locked fairy in tales. fairy towers. Because so, everything annoys me. Um, but you, you are, you're grumpy. I'm not, I'm alright. Oh, right, okay, listen, we better play a record, um, soon. But, um, coming up, Steve, I went away with Carl. Okay. It was a little present from Jane, it was a golfing day, and I could take someone, took Carl. It was a brilliant day, absolutely, absolutely brilliant, but it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed. Because Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. Oh. Sometimes, Carl, I think you're on another planet, he's the only ones. Another girl, another planet, by the only ones. What a song. Amazing. One of my favourite intros ever. Um, 
Dr. Fox disagree with me. His favourite ever was, uh, I think, Money for Nothing, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. Great, another great tune. Yeah, another great, another great tune. I'm not knocking, I'm not yeah. knocking him. If uh, you'd like to let us know what your favourite intro of all time. <laughs> <laughs> that number again is over. <laughs> uh, for, for. Uh, right. Well, we got so much to, to get through well, with sorry, this show. Let me just get this, Mike. I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golfing, a golfing a day, day of golf. And, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Oh. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I know. Well, she doesn't play. No, she knew. No, it was a right. present. It was playing golf. It was. It was a sure. golf event. She doesn't play golf, so um, I had to choose someone to uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Um, sorry, it wasn't a romantic meal. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that, was, that was my immediate thought. I was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, me and Carl uh, just uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. <laughs> it <laughs> just sounds like an excuse for James to have a day off from you. <laughs> 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 but right. you don't play golf, Jay. I know. I know. Go, <laughs> go, go. go. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so <laughs> chose Carl. Obviously, um, uh, we went. Well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf, absolutely brilliant. Such a beautiful place in Stoke Poges, it's like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Well, we uh, he bought he we he bought the shoes specially for it. Oh, we could have, I'd love to see him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes. We had to change them. He was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over twenty two pounds on these <laughs> these golf shoes. <laughs> uh, we hired a buggy that was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I, I just it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me. You were a bit scared. Yeah. What? what I nearly killed us once. I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers, and he'd scream, go, stop! And he'd put his foot down the brake, and then went, like, reverse. Well, at one point, he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake, and then we had, we had to reverse, right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I looked behind, there's a big oak tree there. He screams, <laughs> what's the tree, right? He was, he's, he's, so. Oh, Jeeps of hazard. <laughs> I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind because I had to go to my ball. Because uh, anyway, um, so uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that because it's always the first one because there's a clubhouse and you yeah, want to look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> he takes that off, man. And I've been saying, buy some balls. He just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets good. <laughs> he tees up, right? Whacks it. It goes miles, like right angles, straight into these uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around. He goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing because it's like impolite to laugh. But he he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around. And then his second shot, I go, you know, you're off for three now. If you take another shot, he went, oh, right. So it's his third shot. He puts the ball down. <laughs> <laughs> he hits the ground before it and misses the ball off the cap. <laughs> and I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the terrible. Tortoise. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or something. Sure. We, it was just rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, you and I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We, I, I can't stay in lateness or laziness. You hate lateness. Or, yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. There was no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he fell instantly asleep. he fell asleep. <laughs> and he was late. No, do you know what I mean though, Steve? If you're sort of like nice and warm and what have you. I was tired anyway, I've been stressed out <laughs> for four and a half hours, right? Uh, <laughs> right? And my life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache. You're going for your run. I'm going to have a bath. I walk in, put the light on. For some reason it didn't come on, but I thought, it's all right. I'll just, uh, you know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the it's dark. It's summer, so it's light anyway. Well, so. there's no windows in the bathroom, so <laughs> yeah. So you're in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. <laughs> he calls up, asking me. So I said, "Well, I won't." Uh, you know, it doesn't normally take that long for me because you know I haven't got like long hair. I've got a dryer and sure. so I can sort of one wipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, already ten minutes late though when I called. Well, of ten minutes. Mm, ten well, minutes. lateness is lateness. Oh, Next doesn't matter. Dinner mm. wasn't until quarter past, so mm. we had like another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up. Hurry up, hurry up. So I said, "Yeah, all right." So I get out. And dry and light me tackle and what have you. <laughs> Calls back again 30 seconds later. You know. No, I don't, no? you know, you I don't, don't like that. You better wipe. 
30 seconds later, come on! So I end up going downstairs to the- to the meal area. Naked. With a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> I've got headache as it is. Meant to be a relaxing weekend. <laughs> but anyway, so we have our meal, which is re really nice. Can and then, it. We're, then we're sitting yeah. in the bar, I'm having a- I'm having a cigar by the fire. Yeah. Like, we're having a, a rather nice, uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah. He's there going, I've got headache. Is this 1955 <laughs> that you live in? <laughs> <laughs> It's so right. And we, we are knackered. Because, you know, he's not used to work. I've seen him moaning, falling asleep. He's sure. not used to it at all. And you've been on your feet for o for over half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, we didn't even walk around the golf <laughs> course. We had a buggy. Yeah. It wasn't even exercise. So, we get onto conversations. Talking about, he's, he's asking me stuff about evolution. What about he, what's the, tell me that. Why Why the giraffe? What, what's that rubbish about the giraffe getting a long neck? So, well, it didn't, it didn't try and get a long neck. It, it was selected. And he said, but... Why would evolution do that? I went, well, you think that evolution didn't do anything? There's not, there's not this consciousness, there's not this will that a giraffe has to stretch its neck to reach the leaves. Why not have a long enough neck to survive and pass it? He was going, yeah, but why did evolution? <laughs> now, this, this, this yeah. isn't. The, but by the way, this isn't the most stupid thing. This okay. is uh, this is warming up. This is about quarter to nine. Okay. Right? He said, why didn't evolution make a giraffe good at carpentry so it could build a ladder? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. Right. Right. Okay. So he's thinking. He's thinking around it. He's trying to. He's trying to pick holes in evolution. Yeah. We get on to. Uh, I said. Well, things are. Uh, I said. Uh, um. Uh. We can see the speed of evolution in, um, in lower life forms like bacteria, viruses. They evolved. And that's why. Um. Uh. Soon we won't have an antibiotic that can kill some certain bacterial strains. And he said. And this is about um, half eleven. And I said, I'm going to bed. Right. He said, in the future. They reckon that you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Right, let's put a song on, right? No, and we'll oh, come back to so it. So you're going to explain that? Yeah. You've got an explanation. The Verve and Sonic on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. So let's just get this right. What did Carl say? He's just specifically he said, his words He again. said, they reckon, and he, he, he uh, I said I'm going to bed. He went, no, really, I said no, I'm going to bed, Carl. There's no point now, because, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just like you're talking gobbledygook. You know what I mean? I might as well talk to a pot plant. <laughs> yeah. He said, in the future, they reckon, I don't know who they are. <laughs> sure. I don't know, people who post things on the internet that he oh, reads. Uh, I think. Telegraph. Anyway, can, can complete the sentence. They reckon that in the future you'll be able to wake up. I love it. There's always a little scenario, an embellishment, yes. like this little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, darling. It's your yogurt. Hello. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt. You can have a chat with. All right. Well, that, you know, thanks for that, Rick. I'm looking at you. I'm going to throw that over to Carl. <laughs> right. It's when I was away on holiday, right? I got. Uh, I don't normally buy the Telegraph because it's too big and that, isn't it? So, but, uh, they were giving it away for free on the plane, so I thought- Ding dong. Might yeah. as well have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw a couple of things in it, and I thought that would be interesting. I saw this thing about the future, and it was talking about evolution and what have you, right, which I always find weird, because I always think that maybe we've sort of done it wrong anyway. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think- You can't, you can't evo- by definition, evolution can't get things wrong. Mm. Things change that it's not successful. It can't pass on its uh, genetic material. Or, uh, but it, it, if if you're around, you're, it's working. If you're around, it's working. Slugs are as evolved as they need to be. Slugs are as evolved as you. And well, me. that's true enough. No, yeah, yeah. No disrespect, but it works. It so, works. Sorry, around. But, but what's your point, Carl? No, I mean, I think we probably would have been better off staying as a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, because there's more water than land, isn't there? Right. And you wouldn't drown. This is why I went to bed. No, I can't I'm thinking of dozing off now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> No, but it went, it, do you know what I mean, from, what was it? it was bacteria, it was yeah. fish, mermaid, man, <laughs> onwards and what have you. So anyway. <laughs> oh, so God! Oh, oh God! No, there there are a few knowledge gaps in your theory of evolution. <laughs> oh, no. You generally got it right, though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, yeah, it, it went, it went bacteria, fish, mermaid, man. Um, <laughs> so what, <laughs> what next is the big question? <laughs> so, so, so it was telling you all about this and what have you been saying now? Like uh, we shouldn't have interfered because maybe if we wouldn't have invented planes and what have you, maybe we'd be able to fly and what have you. Sure, if we really yeah. needed to and stuff yeah, like that. Okay. So, we, so we've interfered with with mm. evolution, you see. 
Right. But then it was saying, well, what's the future got? Well, we, well, yes, in one way we have interfered with evolution, yeah. The, ev uh, the evolution of the human being in society is changing. It's not, it's no longer based on the strongest or the fittest because medical science can keep us alive long enough. Um, people can uh, uh, pass on their genetic material where without this civilization they wouldn't have been able to. So, yeah, um, it's di it, 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 there are different parameters, there are different pressures, there are different things that say whether we're going to pass on genetic material or not. Okay. So in that sense, you're right. Right. And that, Rick, as far as I'm aware, has led to a yogurt that you can eat and have a conversation with. So <laughs> this, this is what it was saying. It was just saying, you know, we're living in mad times and that. You sure. know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. One of and, which uh, is. Go on. And, and the fellow was just saying, uh, you know, with computers and stuff like that, the way it is, uh, we'll be able to wake up. Go on. Have a chat with your yogurt and have something to eat. What do you mean, have a chat with your yogurt? Because of the amount of, I mean, you have them yogurts already, those friendly yogurts. Those bacteria friendly ones, so this is just a, a really friendly one. Yeah, they didn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! I'm my best! Do you know what? Sometimes, Carl, I think that we're having a chat with the yogurt. Do you know what I mean? I don't, there, there can't be any difference. Uh, yeah, but then I'm always reminded that would be more entertaining. <laughs> that would be more informative. God! You two, City of Blinding Lights. I'm gonna see them next week. I'll yeah. well, enjoy that. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. again for letting me know about your, uh... Old Nobbo and, and, and Edge and yeah. all that. Now listen, you just got an email there saying, can you turn up, uh, your microphone, Steve? Apparently my voice is a little bit, uh, well, Carl has to do one thing, make sure we're heard. That's yep. all he has to do. Well, I can hear it. Sounds fine to me. Mm. Well, not to the listeners, and that's who we're trying to please. Well, yeah. it's one person, so they can't hear Yes, but we've only got one listener. <laughs> so yeah. he's not happy. <laughs> we're buggered. <laughs> you don't have to say buggered. Um... Mm. Not twice, certainly. <laughs> no. <laughs> One's could have been a mistake. Yeah. Twice, pointing it out, is definitely, yeah, complaint material. Now, Carl. Carl, you haven't uh, told us about your holiday yet. You were meant to do it last week and you didn't. Uh, you started yeah. telling us but we didn't have time because we had to do monkey news about a monkey who was a director who cared about lighting and stuff. Mm. Is there but, more monkey news this week? Uh, yeah. w w is it as... Uh, uh, okay. Is there... Uh, is it real monkey news? C did it happen, or is it mostly embellishment in your round little head? It's proper stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's good. It's so holiday. Where did you go on holiday? Uh, Sardinia. Good. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, nice food and that. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, nice beaches and what have you. Excellent. Sounds like a nice long beach to walk down. Yeah. But uh, so we're having a nice walk, right? You know, uh, nudists do me head in. Sure. <laughs> right. Not uh, a problem though, is it? It's not like being scared of spiders where they might jump out under the chick uh, chicken sink, kitchen sink at you. You know what I mean? It's not a big problem being, I mean, they're done in by nudists. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it just annoys me. It sort of ruins the day a little bit. Because it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Take your clothes off if you feel uncomfortable. It's much more relaxing. Yeah, but, well anyway, right, so I'm walking along the beach. Right, lovely long beach, what have you, you know, watching the sea, picking up shells and that. And what are, your, what are you wearing? What's your natural beach club? When he says picking up shells, I imagine he's like on all fours going, <laughs> yeah. like that, you know what I mean, looking at things. <laughs> Just like washing his nuts in the sea to, to get, the, to get them tasty. Yeah, going into the sea and then kind of shaking himself and all the water flows off. <laughs> Well, I've just got, you know, flip-flops on, pair of shorts, so and, yeah, uh, and like a little, a little light shirt. Sure. Mm. So anyway, walking along, and, uh, Suzanne goes, oh look, right, and there's this woman, German I think, uh, coming out of the- How can you tell she was German? Under well, arm hair? I'll get to it. Oh, Forget okay. the under arm hair. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> she came out, it looked like she was smuggling seaweed. <laughs> I'm right. going to burst! Oh god! And, and the, the funny thing is, right? <laughs> she, uh. <laughs> That's smuggling seaweed! Oh god! She, uh, she was a bit hairy down there, was she? It, mental. <laughs> I felt bad because I hadn't had a shave for two days. Right? Looked at her. Just. It was ridiculous. She might as well have kept her trunks on. <laughs> it was just like she was wearing furry trunks, right? <gasps> so anyway. Oh god! So I'm walking around. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, go on then. So Suzanne's like, oh, look, and I'm like, oh, not again. You know, because every time we go away, there always seems to be one of these. Is she by herself, this woman? Well, the weird thing was, she was with her husband, right? Oh, yeah. But he had shorts on. He yeah. was happy, right? Yeah. But 
every time, like, cause I walked past her and he sort of ran off cause he's, he's embarrassed. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's nothing normal about it. How, what can he do? He can't go, alright mate. Cause he knows it's, it's odd. Right? How so old was he? Uh, sorry, how old was she? <sighs> it's hard to tell when someone hasn't got clothes on. Sure. Do you know what I mean? It's, they, they always look older, don't they? When, when they haven't got clothes on anyway. But I'd say she was about 40, 41. Okay. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I walked past and, and the annoying thing is, she, she got there on a bike, right? No clothes on, little pair of boots next to the bike. So if you can wear boots, just pop some shorts on. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that takes more effort for me, putting boots on. So put the shorts on, right? right. So anyway, so the husband kept running off. I walked past and, and I, I'm getting annoyed because I'm saying, well, we've got to walk past them again on the way back. There's I love no the way. fact they're right, scuttling away when Carl walks past. Like when you lift up a bit of, um, sort of iron sheeting in the woods and loads of mice run away. Yeah. It's like whenever Carl goes, that nudists <laughs> run away. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, but no, so, so, we sort of come walking back and what have you and, and, you know, I have a, have another look and what have you and he runs up again. Why are you another look if it offends you so much? Oh, you might as well just, just have a look. You know what I mean? <laughs> if she's putting it on show and what have you. But yes. the interesting thing was, I just wondered whether the, the husband. Because if I, the husband were nude, you'd looked at his tackle. Because remember when you went to see those two strippers and it was a woman and man and they whipped their shorts off, you said you looked at his tackle first. Uh, I think any bloke would. Well. You would. You just check it out, it's natural, innit? You just go, oh, right. Well, it is normal or whatever. Because you don't know if. You, you know what I mean? You don't know if what you've got's right until you see someone else's. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go but on. anyway, so, um, but he got us talking because I was, then, as soon as I saw her, sort of, today's been ruined a bit, so I'm walking up the beach. <laughs> it's been ruined! Walking up the beach with Suzanne going, how does it happen? Do you know what I mean? Why do people do this? What's, what's, what fun are they getting out of it and what have you? And, um, I just was thinking, is there any chance that that fella, right, didn't even know that she was a nudist until they went away? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I said to Suzanne, if, if, say if I met Suzanne, it's like we're getting on, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And then you go off on holiday and you go, you haven't got much, uh, luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, no, it's fine, this is plenty, and I'm thinking that's weird. And then we go down the beach and she whips her knickers off. <laughs> I'd, I'd be annoyed, but there's nothing I could do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sure. So I'm just wondering whether that's what happened to this fella. Every time someone came walking up, he was like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. And yeah. he kept nipping off. Yeah. Finding something else to do. Look at some shells. <laughs> <laughs> so what, well, I'm what? wondering, Rick, if at some point, maybe today or in future shows, we should get a nudist, you know, one of those official nudist spokespeople, you know, because all these nudist organisations, get them on the phone, justify themselves to Carl, because, you know, in, in his mind, they are, what would you say, weirdos, freaks? I just don't, I don't quite get it. I was reading something in one of the supplements last weekend and some journalist went round to some, uh, whatever you call it, some resort or whatever and for just call the nudes sure. and that. And it's well, just- they playing volleyball? Well, the annoying thing was, bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that annoying? Well, don't play a sport where you gotta bend over. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Young from the album Zuma, and that's, uh, Pardon My Heart, on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We just had a, a text here that says, and I don't know what the truth there is in this, as ever, but John says there is apparently a nude bike ride today mm. in Hyde Park. Now, I can't believe that's the case, because I don't think it's allowed, is it? You can't ride around with your, your veg, can you? I don't know. Why would you want to? Well, that's a good point. On a bike. <laughs> On a bike, I love the fact that that's what disgusts him. I, I, I want, do you know what, if we did appeal for a nudist to call in, I'd want a very specific sort, I don't want to, I want, I want a German nudist, a middle-aged man called Helmut. Okay. If there is any, or the closest one to it. So, I want a middle-aged man from Germany, if your name is Helmut, you're in, but I'll accept, I'll accept Hans, um, Carl would be okay. good, wouldn't it? All right. Yeah. I think I'm. I'm wondering if the age might. Maybe we could. Could we? Could we broaden? Okay. Out a just a bit? German. A German nudist bloke. Right. Could he at least be fat? <laughs> <laughs> could I find a fat German fella? If your name's Helmut, we're going to give you a big prize. Yeah. But you know, any fat German fella who likes to get his sausage out. Sure. Okay. It's sauerkraut. Yeah. What's the phone number? Uh, oh eight seven one. Triple T one oh four nine. It'd be good just to get an email or a text over the contact, right? And okay. then I can just call them up in the week. Sure. 
And, uh, 83936 is the uh, text number. I think, I, mean, I don't know what our, um, our audience demographic pans out like, Rick, but I'm suspecting that's probably a fairly small fraction of our listenership. The, I know, uh, but you know, the there German must be someone out there. If you know a fat German who likes to get his tackle out, the phones are going. Straight away, away, straight away. Just answer it, Carl. Just answer it. Just pop that. It could just be anything. Well, just so see it what be, it is. To be fair, it could be a nutter. It could be a nutter. But it just say hello. Just if no, you're telling it's nutter straight away. On, it'll stay there, won't we? It'll stay there. We'll answer it. Oh, answer it. it. Leave it. Answer it. Oh, you see this? It's gone. It's gone. There you go. He bottled it, so just as well. Well, you took too long to answer it. There's a vicar in uh, Australia who's who started sort of doing his services and all that. And nude. Hot in it there, out there. Yeah, well, you get the churches, churches, aren't churches? Are pretty cold. <laughs> That's, uh, it was on uh, on some website. Of course it was. Yep. Just saying about a, a vicar and that who's uh, there's a lot of nudists and that who want to get married. Do it, you know. You know don't mess about with the wedding dress and that. Just snip up. Jeez. Well, I also I suppose it's so. Uh, I suppose if you believe in God, you believe that uh, that's the way to be in it because Adam and Eve in that. Yeah, but then in Adam and Eve, they the shame made us uh, dress up, didn't it? Yeah, eating the apple and things. Yeah, but God didn't want that, did he? No, <laughs> he wanted to see it all. He was loving it. <laughs> he was never aware of something getting a life full of all of that, and then they, the snake the snake cover yourself up, stitched stitched him right up. Yeah. So if you believe in God, which clearly I don't, do you believe in God, Carl? Uh, don't know, I don't really worry about it. It was ages ago, wasn't it? So, you know, if it's about, whatever, whatever. Not that bothered. Adam and Eve is pretty interesting though, isn't it? It's not, well, how, how is it interesting? He made, he made, he made man, made, uh, out of dust, then he, cause, just cause he could, he's having a laugh, um, then he made, uh, her out of his, one of his ribs, again, he'd like to vary it a little bit, then they had two sons, uh, which gave rise to the entire human race. What was going on there then? What would have happened if they didn't get on? <laughs> that's interesting. Sometimes with pandas they don't fancy the other one, do they? They go, well that's my choice, one. You've brought me one panda from Lisbon Zoo and I've got to chag that. What if I don't fancy it? What if they bring in the right, a right slapper? Do you think that What if it's the equivalent of like, um, uh, uh Love Island, whatever well, it's called. I it was like Celebrity Love Island. Yeah, and they're going, I am not shagging that slapper. Every, every panda in the world has seen that dirty old mott in magazines. Why am I meant to mate with it? I've got some dignity. Are you talking about Adam there or Panda? Was that um or <laughs> Adam, <laughs> either is fine, I suppose. No, 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 bad do you think that Adam had any say? When God was making Eve, was he saying make make the boobs a bit bigger, would you? <laughs> and, uh, I'm sort of I'm a blonde guy, I'm into blondes really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't know, did he have any input or was it just I don't know. Well, I suppose it's- It was uh, one of his ribs, after I know, well, he's probably restricted. You go, well, I'm, I'm working with a rib, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Give me a break, there's only so many things I can do. Well, he's probably- he's probably in kind of intensive care, wasn't he, with well, the whole- They go, well, I can't just keep making the boobs and things bigger, because their legs are get short. I, go, I don't mind short legs. I don't mind no legs. I don't mind no legs. As long as the boobs are sizable. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you- I'll tell you what's weird, though, Steve, right? Everyone's heard of, like, Adam and Eve, yeah? What's the surname? Yeah, where'd they get their post from? Unbelievable. Now listen, before you play the next tune, we should just, uh, we were trying to mop up some stuff from the last couple of shows which we haven't dealt with yet. One of which is an obsession of yours because you're, we're on a radio station, Ricky and I come in, we bring in CDs, music we love, it means so much to us, we adore it. You don't really care about music, you, oh. you work at a radio station, it's just, eh, uh, you know, I don't no, care. I do, I do. No, I do. you don't. I do like a good track. I don't like everything that comes out and everyone raves about. Yeah, you thought the iPod wasn't worth it because you you, got, you named the five tracks you'd like. What was it? It was In the Ghetto, Babushka, Living in the City, what was the other one? Uh, Killing a Georgie, and there was one other one somewhere, and you just only like songs with a story. Yeah, but then there's a reason to listen to it, isn't there? Well, no, only story once. Going on. No, because you might forget the ending. Listen to it again. Yeah, anyway, you might, we, yeah. You've been listening to Babushka quite a lot, is that right? Because you've, you've really got into your head now, you're trying to decipher well, the when story. Well, when I've been sort of asking for songs with stories, people have texted and emailed in and whatever, and I've had, I've had a couple, you know, last time we did the show. So I've gone, oh, right, that sounds interesting. Uh, and Babushka, when I was away on holiday, I listened to it a few times because I like the story. It's a good little story going on. You got some thoughts on it there, have you? Uh, well, we, we, we have a listen well, to let's it have a listen uh, to the track and then I know you've got some queries you'd like to raise. It's just about a, f a woman in it who, uh, I don't know, she's ugly or something, aged badly, and her husband gets bored with her, 
Have a listen to X F M. You're listening to Magic 105.4. All the way back to 1979. Kate Bush, Babushka. <laughs> so, um, we yeah, would like your suggestions for songs which have stories in them, which um, may entertain Carl. They could shoot to the top of his list. What do you think of that, Carl? That has a, has a, a little story there. Uh, I like it, but. So she she tests her husband. Yeah, she writes him letters. She gets a letter back. It's a pseudonym. Babushka's her pseudonym. It's not a real name. Her real name is uh, uh, Molly Strank <laughs> from Ealing. Um, <laughs> and uh, he responds. He goes, "Oh, he's he's, he's you know." So uh, in real terms, he's he's having a bit of a an illicit affair behind her back because he doesn't know it's his wife. So he goes, "Oh, well, I'll take this a bit further. See how far I go." He turns up. She turns up, she, you know, gets it on with her, and he's falling for her because uh, she's acting like she used to act, you know. It's, yeah, it's, but was yeah. he just playing along with it? Was he like, no, you? no, it's not, because they'd have said that in the song. They don't leave no, it up to Some people do that, don't they? Well, it wasn't. Kate Bush would have said, and by the way, he's playing along. She'd have given us a clue. He's not. He's falling for it. <laughs> she went long incognito. He thought it was another woman. But how much work can you do to yourself to if say say if, like uh, <sighs> I I wrote a letter to Suzanne yeah. right saying she'd uh, know it was you. It'd have egg stains on it. It'd be spelt wrong. No, but and you'd but, sign you know, it Carl crossed out her, Babushka. I wrote to uh, I won't pick Babushka. <laughs> I think that's a ridiculous name. That wouldn't have worked anyway. You just get a vision in your head of I wouldn't have answered a letter from someone called Babushka. <laughs> 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 it's not the point. If Kate Bush is listening, please call in because I'd love her to have a conversation <laughs> with you. <laughs> I mean, that would be great. Forget Helmer. No, no, Helmer, you keep trying. A fat German. We want Kate Bush and a fat German. What I mean is, though. Now, wait a minute. What worries me is he didn't answer the last phone call. What if Kate Bush does for <laughs> <laughs> Well, if anyone Chris knows, if anyone knows Kate Bush, give her a call now. She's probably not listening. She's probably doing yoga or something, I imagine, or making a, a lentil soup, or, or maybe just like repotting some plants, right? But or practicing piano, right? But if anyone knows Kate Bush, she's got a number. Call her up now. Say, tune into XFM. There's a little bald mank fella wants to talk to you about Babushka, right? No, but but how much? But how much? Don't worry. You'll 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 get your. Chant. The how, phone's going. That could be Kate Bush. Could be Bush. No, it's that it's could not. Don't worry about it. It's that Kate could Bush. be Kate Bush. Oh, oh, I know for a fact it isn't. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, answer yeah. it. Half Light by Athlete on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl. Right. Two o'clock. Let's get Rockbusters rolling. I should just, um, if people aren't familiar with Rockbusters, then, um, someone has actually sent in one of their own to test Carl. Um, they've used, I think, the same principle that Carl has, which is, you know, utterly random. Yeah. Well, as you said before, Tenuous, you know, really just, just trying to think really of something yeah. that he might sure, be thinking of. Sure, sure, So, um, I'm gonna, I mean, she's done it quite coherently, but I'm wondering if I should sort of say it more as Carl might say it, you know, just slightly less. More different every time. Yeah, slightly less coherent. So, um, Carl, this is one for you, alright? Mm. You know, it's Sunday morning, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm in bed, but I don't sleep. You know, but like Hollyoaks is on the omnibus. I'm just watching that. You know, um, I go and make a lovely cup of tea. You know, I'm in the bed with Suzanne, aren't I? Having a cup of tea. What's going on there? Just watching the telly and that. But hang on, I haven't got anything to dunk in me uh, in my tea. I haven't got anything to dunk in my tea, have I? Yeah, you know I mean, I haven't got anything to dunk in there. I'm just having, you know, what what am I doing? Is That's, it LB? It's L R. Oh. L R. So, have a think about that one, Carl. I, I think I know it. Yeah. Do you? Go for it. Go on. Is it Lionel Rich Richie? It is Lionel sort Richie. Of, What's your logic? Sort of lying in Lionel, and it's like no no what? rich tea, no, no rich, rich tea. tea, yeah, no biscuits, no rich tea, lying no rich tea, Lionel we, Rich tea, Lionel yeah. Richie. It works. It's, it's, it's just it's just as coherent as like yours. What's that? We've done one a little bit like it. There's no wrong with that. I cannot believe so you got that's it. A, that's the <laughs> toaster. I cannot believe you got it. I might not have got it without the initials, but that's why we chuck them in just to help you along. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so um, what have you got for us right, this so week? We've got, we got three of them. Oh, we by got... the way, don't bother calling in Kate Bush because Carl doesn't want to answer the phones. He says Kate Bush is not going to call, so it's all going to be nutters. So we apologise. He's got one thing to do. He didn't even get the sound right because someone was complaining about they couldn't hear Steve. He's got to do monkey news, which is always twaddle, and he won't even answer the phones now. So I don't know. I don't know why he gets paid. He takes off Mondays because he don't. works Saturdays. He I gets don't. paid for Saturdays. He takes five weeks holiday. Not off Mondays. Not off Mondays and, and, and he moans. Not off Mondays. Well, 
Right, um, what, what's, what have you got for us? Right then, the first one. Uh, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Right? <laughs> there, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Initial D. Right? D. <laughs> Great. Right? Have you worked that one out? Of course I haven't. Right, the second one. Um, you're asked if you want that bit of the egg. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. You're asked if you, if you want that bit of the egg. Yeah. You think about it, but we t uh, sort of decide against it. <laughs> and what, again? What's going on there? You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You think about it, but you go, nah, I don't go against it. Right? I've, yeah, I've got it. Is so it, it's 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 initials W, uh, Y, O? Yeah. Got it. Right, so. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, one, that one works. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and the last one. I don't think this burger will catch on. I don't think this burger will catch on. Yeah, and the letter there is M. So you just, uh, text or email in, uh, with the answers and, uh, win some stuff. What have we got? We've got some prizes. We've got, uh, another box set of the League of Gentlemen. This um, is instant gratification, but uh, you go into a draw for some, something bigger, so what have we got today? Yeah, well today, this is what you're taking home today. Uh, oh. you've got the League of Gentlemen, the complete collection on DVD. That's yeah. not worth, that's worth having, definitely. Uh, we've got Catterick, which is the current Vic and Bob show on BBC Two, which is, uh, good. The Aviator, the, um, the award-winning, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese biopic, and once again, Ladder 49. We're giving that away again, are we? Yeah, 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 apparently got, um, we get a job lot of those, have we? we got loads of them. We've got Oh, yeah. excellent. So Email well. in if you just want a copy of Ladder 49. I'm sure we could dig one out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or phone in, because Carl does not answer the phones. Right. And remember, the winner goes forward f uh, into the chance to win the big prizes, the h signed Homer drawing, uh, the signed Nigel Tufnell poster, and you go to rickygervais.com and see Matt Groening actually drawing that to, uh, to, to verify it. But in Lloyd Carl won't. Oh, never oh, anywhere, is it? Has it? Lloyd Cole, Impossible Girl, on XFM 104.9. Wow. Rick, I'm just reading an email we've had, and it is indeed true. Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting site of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> are, are they against wearing an helmet? Well, I don't. I, I, I think they're trying to, trying to make a statement. I would imagine. I don't know. Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? Obviously it's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> pop some pants on. Are you going to be, are you gonna be that, popping down there and cheering them on? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere near it. What, what are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think, you know, generally we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world, and it's gonna run out one day, and we've not talking got any alternatives. Uh, talking of, um, uh, campaigns and, uh, things and that, um, did you see, uh, um, Sir Bob on, um, Jonathan Ross last night? Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yeah. Uh, um, are you gonna walk to, uh, Edinburgh or sail to France car? What, what do you think of all this? The G8? Uh, I think it's good that, you know, He's, uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but I probably won't, won't bother. No. Having a walk. What do you make of all this, all this campaigning? You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was watching him last night and I uh, respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but... I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation as opposed to he used to work at XFM for a while. Yeah, I know, but I'm just, I'm just saying is, uh, it's, it's good that he's, he's given up a lot of his time to, you know, try and save the world and that, but, you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like, you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Right, I mean? what do you mean wasting his time? Well, he's, he tried it before and... No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think the seven most, uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia, and they get together and they can, they can wipe out the, the third world debt. Mm. I.e. They, they owe us billions and billions of pounds, they can't afford to pay it back. So he's gonna say let's, let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But, won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's you thinking? No, I just I mean... Knew, I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I have ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know, look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. 
Honestly, it's like there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're just, they gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, right, and I wanted to go to the arcade, I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you, but I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <coughs> game on a fruity, and then go back, and she'd go, uh, go can I have some more money? And she goes, we gave you a quid before, and I go, I know, but I'm on holiday, and she goes, there you go then. And then I go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one, I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. right. So, so you think that's what's gonna happen with- That's with, a, with that's a nice, nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there, that the Africans are, uh, are blowing it, it down the arcade? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of putting it towards a fishing rod, they're blowing it down the arcade! <laughs> they're trying to, they are trying, I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals, I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. I just As Bob said, yeah, Bob said, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna it's, get the it's Snoopy. It's fall out of the little claw it's before rigged. it gets the to the top. The is not <laughs> strong enough. Yeah. Do not waste the- no, oh, no, Midge. <laughs> Midge, Midge. 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 I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a- it's a- Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London- Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Saturday- easy. Yeah, don't worry, Carl is not gonna be put in charge of G8. It's not gonna be him, Blair, <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> That would be Brilliant. a joy if it were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what, in one, some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously, it's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's that, uh, what, what are you, what are you gonna do? You're, you're the only, you know- any person with opposable thumbs, <laughs> what's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent, yeah. you know, money out there, we've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads of charity. Go on. No, oh, loads, I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, what? Oh, I give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean. Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. But what, but, but the thing is, I do loads of charities, I do loads of things like, uh, Go on. I pay, I pay for tools, you know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver, paying right. for, uh, you know, toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm gonna stop, to be honest. Why? Because, um, do you know this? Do you know this thing I do, Steve? Right, no. this is this is a fiver a month as well, right? Got got I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, "Oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold. Are you going to help her out?" So I was like, "Oh, why me?" Right. <laughs> so anyway, so they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called I don't know, call her name June or whatever. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> it does to her, but go on. So. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month, and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh, first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had, uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little uh, picture of her, and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up, and, you know, look after her, pay for her food and what have you. So, for a bit, you feel good, don't you, and you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> 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 so, he's saying, he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. You know, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. And this is, this is what I mean, people turn them. <laughs> if they can get away with it. <sighs> that I don't know where to start! That isn't having a go, though. Uh, what do you think, so, what do you think? You think they're going... Don't don't bother don't bother um, getting a job or anything. Go off a bit, and then go off a bit. It's June. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So but you I'll... think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time? Is that what you're saying? That oh. you should just leave him to it? Just leave him to it. Let him sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, oh, just think, carry on? Do you know what this? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not a words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that. Do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up, 
Do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads of- I don't of reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, but people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that. Locals will love that. Right. <laughs> Job done. Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. Yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know, uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, if Bob, Bob, if well. you're listening, please, I would love, oh my god, a conversation, Bob Galdoff talking to, forget Kate Bush, forget that would Hammer. Be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. Oh. What's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. All right. I'm not going to go. I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs> right. Play record. All right. What we're we having? Bit of uh, bit of killers. Yeah. The killers. Somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what. Talking of um, starving, I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. Sure. Um, you must be famished. Uh, well, Jonathan uh, Ross had uh, booked a table there. It came out. I think he's been trying to get there for a while, and uh, um, I think it's a waiting list and everything. Right? And uh, well, it's got to be you're walking straight in. He can he's walk straight in with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, uh, me and Jane went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray. Uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world. Right. Okay? And um, it was incredible. I mean, it's a cross between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yeah. you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Hmm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little, got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or it feeds on worms. I, I, it was, I knew that the, one of their um, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to eat anything here. So I'm thinking, uh, I had something to eat before I went. <laughs> And uh, I was thinking, they better not have mucked around the bread, right? Got there, beautiful, um, and uh, it was it was it was really quite fantastic. And and I let them know straight away um, that I was a philistine, and they really accommodated me. You know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge. I, they they put um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which was more of a risotto, and there's tasting menus and that, and it was it was um, uh, really fantastic. But Jonathan, halfway through, on the way there, I don't like travel well, on the way there, he actually phoned me and said, why are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point. Very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Well, you are, you have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver school dinners <laughs> program. <laughs> <laughs> they've got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. ratatouille, yeah. but they're going for the sort of chicken twizzlers. Well, it's not with chicken. I love chicken. I yeah. Like, I like, I, the chicken I can eat. I'm screaming about red meats. There's nothing I've written, you know, it's a mixture of, it's not, um, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or a But it hasn't pink. got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it. What are you talking about? I, yeah. I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, ca I refuse to eat out with Ricky. Because I can't, it just sucks the life out of me. It actually makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses, always and lamb. you're whinging. You're it's always salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely bit of lamb. Who doesn't think lamb is the best of all the meats? Oh. And you no. just, you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just, it was, oh. And I tell you, and I put it at the, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, badmouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, <laughs> you know, Late sixties, early seventies, came round to your place in Reading, it would have just been the smell of chip fat. Oh, just on. everywhere, chip pervading, fat just on. one of those chip fat fries that's just, yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day, I used to eat just bubbling away. I used to eat beef and pork and that, and uh, it, it, I used to have to, eventually, when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make her burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather anyway, <laughs> where I couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or something. A salad so, in your house would have been I'll a, tell you what a salad pickle is. onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad in my house, right, it was in the summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, great egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Uh, and that was that was uh, that was a salad. But yeah. now, is, uh, that, is that do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this 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 palate? And I don't even it's no, not even I've, a palate. I've, That's I've, too I've, nice I've, I've, I've got more it. squeamish as I've got older. Because I say I used to I used to eat beef but and pork. What do you and mean squeamish? I don't understand what you mean squeamish. I can eat I, I can eat like you know like, it has to be blasted. It has to be unrecognisably an animal. 
You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we, if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just <laughs> fed 40,000 with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going, I'm not into the fish, JC. I say, take and the head off, cook, cook, really cook, take the skin off, I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that, because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, he'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But mm. lunchtime, Would why you? would I spend- you'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch, twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime. Cause we- I know what ha happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger green curry for lunch, you're asleep by one thirty. we're trying to work, we're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just <laughs> eating a sheep, and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat- Carl, he does not like this, but he- he- he'll go- he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich for- I'm having an uh, argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> Again, Here's the situation, Carl. Yeah. I lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. Nah, it's the way that you were, like... I said, where's my 50p? You went, oh, you don't need that. That's not your decision at all. I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment or whatever. Rubbish. And he's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. He's just giving him a keg of beer for free, hasn't he? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I, mean. <laughs> I just- I just think value for money is important. Like, now, okay, so for instance, in the morning, I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card, zones one and two, right? It's about £4.70, I think. But before 9.30, it's about £6.50. Alright, and then at 9.30, when the clock, literally on the clock ticks over to 9.30, it's £4.70, right? Now, sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about 20 past nine. Now you'd be saying to me, oh, just spend it, just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes, I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30 and then I can get a cheaper ticket. Now surely that makes sense. Surely that's logic. Mm. Don't you, I mean, if you were in that situation, Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse than uh, It's madness, it's madness. I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I'd, I'd, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I If I there mean, was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh if they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's I, I go, um, all right. Well, that is the case. That literally yeah. is the case. okay. But not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? Uh, I feel fl- I, if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just- I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. Carl, what about you, Carl? Would you do it? It, it depends, doesn't it, what your job is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever, you can't say, oh, just- Ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation. Depends. Most of the time, I've got to get in work early. I can't be hanging around to last night. You don't, though, do you? I've, so, I've, yeah, I've called him when I was, uh, uh, filming. He was uh, he, uh, I've seen him do one day, yeah. right? I've seen him for one whole day. He went away. He fell asleep at um, quarter to eight in the yeah. bath because he was knackered. So, yeah. you know, he has five weeks already. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's feeder, taking the piss. Feeder. feeder. Pushing the senses. Quite food related sort of uh, show, isn't it? It is. It? Yeah, thinking of gluttony, did you Just see in, uh, <laughs> I think it was Heat magazine, huh? um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh, yeah. She's lost considerable, she's lost a lot of weight. Oh, yeah. And, she's lost um, five stone, hasn't she? Please see that the headline was, um, I used to eat, uh, twelve packets of Doritos a night. At she's night. Twelve packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you've got to eleven packets and you're thinking, one more do it. It's a bit peckish. One more do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so Unbelievable. But <laughs> someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends, news stories, you know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared 23 stone. Um, they, what, uh, of them died? Between the five of them, oh, come on. Between the five of them, the Phillips family from Worcester weighed more than a hundred stone. Jesus. Well, how many are there, though? They spent five of them, and they spent 300 pounds a week on food. Um, a, an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Um, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't, um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it says here, it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that competition still going? He, br <laughs> he <sighs> broke five bikes. He broke five bikes by, uh, buckling the wheels. 
Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids. Cars. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the bike just fell apart. Yeah. Who wow. knows, maybe now he's on that new uh, bike ride, you know, because he's lost some weight. Oh, that'll be painful, that, wouldn't that it? Would if one of buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, another food-related uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via, um, my agent sent from someone here, okay, so, sent from someone at, um, XFM, okay, and, uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought, um, this might be uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday. And obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address. You returned it to someone here who, of course, immediately forwarded it to my agent for ridicule on the show. Don't panic, it's nothing that bad, okay? It's uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out on Wednesday night? Was the, uh, an England game or something? Yeah. So you, you were alone. You were home alone where you went tonight. Yeah. Did you enjoy your meal? Was it, was it a quiche? Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. Cook for 30 minutes on 190. Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. Take an avocado, chop in half, remove the stone, <laughs> peel skin and slice. Place on salad. Put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing. Right? In brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> everything out of the way. Right, then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Remove keys from oven, cut into quarters and put on plate. <laughs> Eat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Does she have to do that every <laughs> single time? She's like... No, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking, right? Um, and to be honest, that, that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. <laughs> And I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> he didn't even do that! With instructions, it was too much! But, um, oh. yeah, I'm not that- I'm not that good at cooking and Did that, you genuinely- um, that's not cooking though, is it, Carl? That's- That's, that's heating slicing. up a quiche. That's good. Cooking it is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm- I'm just- Do, do, do you- like, could you have figured that out uh, if she left that note for you? Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and, um, balsamic vinegar was? Because I've, I've, I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once and I said, right, it's a bit... <laughs> it's ever since, I'm right, year, years ago... I'm gonna die! Years ago... Oh, God, it, leaving Mr. Magoo at home! It was, <laughs> it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. That, uh, <laughs> what I do you mean? I nearly set what the do you mean? Because, do you know like when you're grilling food in a pan and all that? Yeah. Sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere <laughs> greasy. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Bung them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught- well, she's stuck and then sort of caught on fire, I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just as I was sort of plunging it and like, he came in from work. Said, what are you doing? What are you- I said, no, I'm in sausages. <laughs> well, the oven isn't on. I know, they're in here. <laughs> well, you just turn it off. They're panicking and that. But I've, I've never been into it. I've never been into cooking oh, and that. At school and oh stuff. I didn't bother God. doing it. Oh, every time Suzanne comes home, she must think, please be the house still there. Yeah. Please, uh, please not let me hear a fire engine as I come round this corner. Oh, God. She comes and goes, oh, God, thank God. I bet she's always happy to see you when she gets home and you haven't burned the place down or introduced some howler monkeys or something. Unbelievable. But I, what I find extraordinary is there are people who are in sort of care in the community who don't need instructions no. on how to prepare for oh, they, 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 they can do it. Yeah, you show them once. Yeah, no, they, they they it. Whatever you do, don't put sausages in the toaster, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they, and they, they don't, it. They don't put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. What what they put their fingers in. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we doing, uh, Rockbusters on Sunday? Oh, yeah, let's oh, play a song. The, we'll it's play what we'll London's play, waiting I'll for. I'll tell you what, we'll play a song and do, do Why not? Yeah. It's worth waiting Plus, for. Have we still got Monkey News to come? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Roxy oh. Music. With the, uh, the old Dylan classic, Hard Rains, on XFM 104.9. Rock mixing Busters. it up, just mixing it up, oh, mixing yeah, and matching. We've got a Neil Young, we've got a bit of, uh, Roxy Music, we don't care, but do we? But they'll write up, bang up to date with some of the latest tracks from Feeder and the like, so... Yeah, 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 yeah big time. <laughs> but, uh, it's what they're waiting for, it's the Rockbuster dancers. That's right. Uh, right.
Okay, give us the clue, give us the answer. Right then, uh, first one. Oh, yeah, because we haven't got long for monkey news. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. First one. <laughs> there's a, there's a vehicle over there that's, uh, it's changed. Selling kebabs. Oh, it's changed, go on. <clears throat> Initial D. Yeah, where is it? That was Donovan. Donovan. Okay. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. That Good. Works. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Second that's a one. real clue. Mm. Well, they got it. Like they always do, so they're yeah. always real clues. Yeah. Uh, second one. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg, right? You think about it, then you decide against it. I think I know this one. What was the initial again? Y O. Um, is this, um, uh, John Lennon's, um, wife, Yoke Ono? Yeah, that's right. I think that was her name, Yoke Ono, was it? <laughs> yeah, it's Yoke Ono. That was Yoke Ono. No, no, no. no. Oh, You've got no. it wrong. You're thinking about it. You're asked if you want a bit of the egg. Yeah. You go, Yoke. You think about it. Oh. Oh no. Oh, so you say it twice, you stutter. So no, it's no, Yoke. No, no. Yoke, oh, oh no. No, you, you no her name's Yoko, oh no, though. Yeah, Yoko, yeah. oh no. Listen to the clue again. Okay, no, 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 no. So what you say is, do you, do you want this bit of the egg? You look, oh, the other bit, no. Yoke, oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, oh no. Yoke, oh, no, no. Oh, Yoke. Yeah, go on, brilliant. Yeah, okay, yeah, Yoke, oh no, yeah, go on, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 next, next, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last one was, uh, I don't think this burger will catch on. That was, uh, initial M. Yeah. McFly. Right? So, there's your three clues. Which one's that? It won't catch on. Well, who'd want to eat that? You know what I mean? It's like a, a Mac burger or whatever. Mac, Mac chicken. McFly. <laughs> don't want one. Put it back. We'll have a chicken. <laughs> right? So who's, who's got the, oh. who's got the three then? Well, well done to, uh, Ian Shillam. <laughs> Yeah. Mansfield, who's uh, got all those answers right, amazingly. Uh, and he go, he wins all those great prizes, including, uh, Ladder 49, starring Joaquin Phoenix mm -hmm. and John Travolta, which I don't think anyone's ever seen. There's 49 of them. And he wins that, but he also goes forward, as you say, to the big draw, which will come up at the uh, end of the uh, right, uh, run. to win the signed, uh, Homer saying, I like Carl because he's stupid like me, and you can see Matt Groening drawing that to know it's real on, uh, com, and you can win that, and a signed Nigel Tufnell poster. Brilliant. It's a Ricky and Steve classic on XFM, Sugar, If I Can't Change Your Mind. Brilliant. Uh, so listen, it's time, isn't it? We've only got a few minutes left, so you better play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey News. <laughs> <laughs> so Monkey News, if you've, uh, only just started listening to the show. <laughs> oh, you poor fool. Um, Monkey News is where Carl, um, reports for us all the latest monkey activity. A headline or a word or someone, someone, someone's only overheard in a pub and then totally embellishes it and makes it ridiculous and impossible. He <laughs> believes it though. He believes every word he's saying. Let me say that before you hear, when you hear this, whatever it is, I haven't heard it, twaddle, um, remember, Carl totally believes it. Go on. Right, so anyway, right, I think it's in, uh, in LA this happened. Right. I think. Why, why does he think? Uh, so these people are in a, in a restaurant having a lovely meal. <laughs> There's one of them <laughs> short and hairy, but it goes, <laughs> totally covers from top to bottom in a spacesuit so he didn't know it was a monkey. It's uh, not one of the customers, one of the waiters? So, th so they're having a, having a lovely dinner, probably one of the best sort of dinners that they've, they've had, right? Mm. So the waiter comes over and it's like, you know, can we just say that I had a lovely meal and that? Right, it's the chef. <laughs> because it is. So, can we see uh, the chef? Yeah. So, so <laughs> can, we, can we just, you know, see, see the guy who cooked it? Of course. Yeah. 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 Short feather, hairy. So, the waiter, the, said, to be honest, the, waiter, much. the waiter said, look, he's busy, you know, he's got meals to cook and what have you. He hasn't really got time. So, it only took a minute. He said, no, I prefer, you know. So, this like, is a restaurant in LA that I'll, serves brilliant food. I'll pass, I'll pass your message on and what have you, right? So, um. So, he <laughs> sends for so, a monkey PO1. So, it's a bit <laughs> odd, anyway. So, so they go, so they go out, right? They go, uh, they go out to the car and they notice the, uh, the kitchen door's open. Yeah, right. yeah, of course they do, because they're, they're going to discover something that I don't know. So they they're just- Hold on, this, um, just, just out of interest, this, uh, the, where did this, um, chef train before, before we see him or reveal, you know, what he might look like or mm -hmm. like to eat, yeah, um, no. um, so well, anyway, so, uh, so they pop their head in and think, we'll just, we'll just nip in and go, yeah, you know, not? love, love, love fruit salad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they step See the human, we better see the human chef. <laughs> yeah. You never guess what. Go on. Monkey stood on a chair, right, <laughs> cooking veg. <laughs> right, so anyway, so they're like, what's going on here? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Questions? What do you mean he's cooking veg? What is he doing with it? Well, he's, he's stood on a chair by the, by the cooker and he's, yeah. uh, chopping, st chopping stuff. Oh, he's, he's chopping as well, no? He's just not like isn't it? Yeah. It's got a little, uh, you know, he's got the, the bosses in there, they're, they're like a bit shocked. 
so he's a bit panicking because he's got this monkey working for him. So they say to him, "What's going on? Eh? We didn't know this. This is what's going on. You know, you, why have you got a monkey cooking stuff?" So he said, "Well, the it's really a monkey. I should point out who probably doesn't need instructions from its girlfriend." <laughs> oh, forget it. Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. All right. Carl's had a bad week. I'm going to say that straight away. It's, there's a, it's a, it's, he tries to rule out stress in his life. Yeah. But he's had a bit too much stress this week, haven't you? One, a phone call from his mum, stressed him a little bit. Right. Um, something he said in a magazine about his auntie. Okay. Came back to haunt him. Auntie uh, Nora. Auntie Nora. Yep. Yeah. Don't name her. <laughs> oh, she no, knows who she is. No, no. Okay, we won't name her. Right? We just say it's the- it's the one who fights for five minutes and as, um, he sort of saw a skirt when he was young and a fanny like a split tennis so ball. So it could be any of me on his. But <laughs> <laughs> we're- that coming up. And also a bloke, um, in Times Online, um, Chris Campling. Yeah. Did a review of the show. Right. And basically said that Carl Pilkington is a creation of Gervais and Merchant. Well, if only that were the case. He, he said, um, he started off saying he liked the show. Yeah. He was excited. So it was a good show. Um, a lot of the, uh, the I'm jokes. already- I'm already questioning his critical faculties. <laughs> yeah, exactly! And, uh, basically said that, um, uh, we didn't contribute much, or seemingly didn't seem to contribute much, and sure. I- and we- we couldn't sort of like, uh, ad-lib or anything, we just laughed at, uh, particularly me, uh, laughed at, um, Carl Pilkington who was coming up with some, you know, quite funny stuff, yeah. right? But then he does a twist on it, he goes, but the thing is, we're the puppet masters. He's a created person. We've created the, uh, um, persona Carl Pilkington for our own amusement. Right. He bases this on simply that we talked about, what was it we talked about? Um, the Chinese not aging well, and right. you heard him talk about that on my DVD. But clearly I, I say, Carl, remember when you were talking about that? It's a news or member in the week, and so he thinks it's all scripted now. Imagine if this show was scripted. I'd be ashamed. Yeah. If this show was scripted, I would send <laughs> back the BAFTAs for the shows we've- the actual shows we've written, and I would and say- I'm not having a go at Chris Campling, he's- he's nice about our other work, he likes The Office, yeah. he likes my stand-up and everything, and he likes the show, but he's saying, because we- we're not spontaneous, we- we scripted this and invented Carl. It, so he's- he's like, you know, we, we've invented another Gareth. If we had created Carl, I would, I would not have squandered a character that good on this poxy radio station. Absolutely. Also, does he know that we spend about three months on half an hour script? So how long does two hours of trouble? <laughs> but the main thing is, as if this could be scripted. It's dreadful. <laughs> it's just shocking. Or maybe this is scripted. Hang on, you've, you've lost me now. Let me just well, check maybe, the maybe Chris Campling does not exist. Uh, maybe I've made him up. I don't know what to believe. See, the name, the name doesn't wash with me. What was his name? Chris Campling. Sounds- sounds odd. That's something that I made up, isn't Campling's it? Campling's almost like- it's almost like a joke, it's almost like a gay name, isn't it? Or is it Campling? See, I think this is scripted. Yeah. I think I've probably made this whole link up, and Carl is a creation. Campling, that's not a real name. No. I made it- I wish I'd come up with something better. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Down to the River by Bruce Springsteen on XFM 104.9. So, uh, yeah, that little fella in the Times thought Carl was just a puppet. We created him, he's an actor. What's it, what was his, what's his act, what's his actor's name? Um, Brent Hogwell. <laughs> we, yeah, we got him from, we got him from, uh, a spotlight. Yeah. Brent Hogwell. This uh, stupid dopey Mancunian accent, he just puts that on every week. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, he speaks well like Hugh Grant. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we just, got this whole world around him, we set a whole, what do you think about so that? He had his head shaved, <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So yeah, does he, would he think that, you know, maybe if he's looked online and seen me Ed, and he's noticed how round it is and that, <laughs> does he think it's sort of been, Sort of, you know, morphed into that <laughs> shape just for the show, just for two hours on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, you would spend five <laughs> hours in yeah. prosthetic makeup like John Hurt in The Elephant Man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything oh, about him was made up. Yeah, we created him. We created. Well, oh, because I remember coming up with Auntie Nora. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. said Rick, we need another character. I said, what about giving him an Auntie Nora? Doesn't sound convincing. I said. Yeah, and you said, what is it about? I said, well, I don't know. Um, she fighted for five minutes, and she's got a fanny like a split tennis ball. <laughs> no one's gonna believe that. Yeah. Oh, that brings us neatly. Well, let's put that to bed now. So, Chris Campling, honestly, honestly, we do not script this shambles of a show, and Carl Pilkington really is like this. If you want, we, you can meet him. 
We, I, I'd love to send Carl for a drink with Chris Campbell. Can we do that? <laughs> and then he'll eat his words. Chris, if you're listening, honestly, this isn't a stitch up. As I say, I'm not having a go at you. It's a very well written article. Um, uh, it's very, very fair. <laughs> I you're just that complimenting on, on his grammar. Yeah. It's a very well written <laughs> no, article. No, no, I'm saying we're not having a go. He's that beautifully. It's not like he snagged us off. He's just, I would just love him to meet Carl Pilkington. People in the street come up to me and say, is Carl like that? And I, I so want them to meet him. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe he can send in, if he's online, um, he can send in five subjects for Carl to talk about that we couldn't possibly know about. Just so he knows that we just really do throw things at Carl and that drivel comes out. Imagine if it was scripted. But anyway, so Chris Campling or anyone who knows Chris online, get him to email us and with five subjects that Carl can talk about. It's a good idea, isn't it, Carl? It is like I'm the elephant man the way I'm being treated now. <laughs> Like I, I scripted that. I wrote that joke last night. Mm, are you sure? Is it, or was it yours? I don't know. I Carl, Carl enters and says, I'm like the elephant man. Hang on, let me just check the credits on the script. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what though, Steve, that I found out about the elephant man when Go I was on. talking to Ricky. What? You know, the only bit that's- that was normal on him. Oh yeah, no, it's, uh, it was in the film. You know right. the bit in the film? I was watching it one day, it was on, and I said, look, your favourite film's on. And it came to the bit where, um, he was being exhibited. Uh, and he was naked behind the screen to all the doctors. Go on, what did you say? And there's a bit where he goes, um, uh, and strangely, um, the only thing that is normal are his genitals. They're untouched by this disease. They are totally normal. Right, what did you say? It's a bit annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the only bit that you'd want as an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> the only bit he'd won that sure, was, like, it was an like an elephant. Yeah, no, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and he got the head. <laughs> 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 so, so other stressful things. But, so anyway, you're, what, what's the anti-Nora thing? Sorry, I should, anti-X. Anti-X. Uh, what did she, yeah. what, why is she upset? Well, he mentioned her in Zoo. He did, did, did a thing for Zoo magazine and he, and he mentioned about when he looked up her dress, it, um, oh, it, she had a- yeah, what? by accident, remember? <laughs> You were going around looking up your elderly relatives dresses in case they for weren't people, For people who've not heard Carl talk about this in the past, yeah. just explain quickly again yeah, what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it at all. When I was a kid, right, Auntie Nora used to come around- uh, me auntie used to come <laughs> <laughs> Is it there's any ambiguity now? Yeah. Me auntie used to come around and that, and stay, right? And I, uh, I, I'm sat on the floor watching the telly, right? <laughs> She sat on the sofa with a caftan on. <laughs> I turn round, right, and it's it was it was there. It was looking back, back at, at me, right, and we've we've mentioned this, and I just Ricky really sort of said, "What did it look like?" <laughs> and you know, a split tennis ball came to mind. That's what we talked about, right? So anyway, Zoo magazine when they did the interview. And she's the one that used to put a valance on everything, isn't it? Well, not everything, obviously. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I've done this. So you did interview in Zoom. Yeah. And, uh, and like they said, you know, do you, again, it was like, you know, do you plan stuff and, and do you worry about stuff when, uh, you, after you've done the show, you're worried you've upset anyone? And, you know, I was saying, uh, really, I forget people are listening. Uh, and, you know, we're just having a chat with mates and that. I said, but now and again, I do worry, uh, when I'm on my way home from the show and that, and I'm thinking about what we've talked about, and I was saying, you know, the an Aunt Inora in <laughs> Aunt Inora <laughs> in incident. Yeah. Uh, incident! You know, like, water yeah. And, uh, anyway, so this was in there, right? And I, and I was saying in the magazine, you know, but I think I got away with it, she doesn't, doesn't listen to the show, but, you know, and I don't think she reads Zoo magazine, so. <laughs> She's more of a nuts <laughs> woman. <laughs> sure, yeah. So, uh, anyway, so my mum calls up. Oh, the, other, uh, the other week, right, oh. and she goes, uh, uh, wish you wouldn't, you know, talk about an Inora and that. And, uh, I was like, oh, so how do you know about that? She goes, well, one of your cousins have called us up and said they've, they've read the article, you know, the article about it. So, uh, so yeah, that's why we don't want to talk about it, really. So he's, oh, he stitched you up. Oh. So do you know what Auntie X has made of this? Do you know if she was upset or not? Uh, well, she doesn't, doesn't know about it. Cause she, I mean, maybe she, maybe she, she's always thought it looked like a split tennis ball. <laughs> maybe you're just in sync, you know, because your relatives and stuff. Maybe she knew instantly. Even if you hadn't named her, she'd have thought, hang on, so I farted for five minutes once. Yeah, if that's not really ambiguous, it could well is it? Be me. If you hear <laughs> like someone who farted for five minutes has got a, a, a fan of like a split tennis ball, you're gonna go, I wonder if he means me. Yeah. You're gonna remember or that. Or Andy Jackie. Is that, it could be Andy Jackie. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and he got in trouble. We know last week when he was going to the wedding. Let's, no. let's talk about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is that a cure? I love it. In between days. XFM 104.9 with today's team with three car built. Into the, the cure in between days on XFM. So, Carl, you were going to a wedding last week. Was it last week or the week before? No, it was last Saturday, right? Like. Yeah. And he went, he said, uh, looking forward to it. He went, no, it's gonna be boring. Suzanne was listening. Knows that the, uh, the couple, uh, were taping the show. So she had to get in there before he didn't she? She went up to him and said, look, when he, you wish him back to the show and he says it's gonna be boring. He didn't mean you, he meant weddings in general. I love the fact she has to run around and clean up after him. It's right. great, isn't it? How was it? Do you not like weddings? You're not a fan of them? Uh, they're only good for the, for the people involved, aren't they? What are you talking about? You're getting free food, free booze, free music? Yeah, but it's not, it's just all the hanging about and there's loads of people there you don't know. Absolutely, I agree. Do you know what I mean? You, you've got to make an effort. And yeah. And, uh, even the bit that was important, right, when they were getting married, right, there wasn't enough chairs, chairs, cause it was, you know, all the family gets the chairs, don't they? So I was sort of stood at the back. <laughs> <laughs> stood at the back of that watching, and uh, I couldn't hear what was going on because a woman was breastfeeding the baby. Oh! But what? What? How loud was this baby? Because <laughs> you couldn't hear what was going on. Yeah, so <laughs> it was it was slurping and that, and it, she, she was like, I, I just thought, how hungry <laughs> is it? Could it not have waited? Because <laughs> you've all got to wait for the buffet or whatever later. Oh yeah, no. But also just in this Well, there was two, on. wasn't there? What did you- Why <laughs> didn't you know this? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that annoys me with weddings is the gift. Is the gift thing. Cause like, you buy these gifts, right, you spend a little bit of money, maybe, you know, I, I like to be a little bit lavish if I go into a wedding. Oh. You know? Well, you, no, come on, you get a gift, right, you package it and, off. and I don't know about you, Rick, but you, I like to see the response. When I give a gift to someone, I want to- I want to see that- the feedback from that, you yeah. know, this is very much, you know, I, I want to see what it is that's Jane bought them on, on, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, and exactly. put my name to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes I have to, oh, thanks for the, I go, oh, no worries, <laughs> no worries, yeah. no worries. Yeah. But, you know, certainly, I mean, we talked about it before, but certainly, you know, it's the, the amount of, the amount of money spent and the amount of time given to the gift should be correlated by the amount of the response you get. Absolutely. If I give a book token, a shrug is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but if I give, you know, sizable, I want kind of, I want them to be showing it to friends, if it's a bar, I want them to show yeah. it to a barman, you, you want to go, look, look what Steve Merchant got me, yeah. he's the greatest man in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You go to a wedding, you turn up with a gift, you could have spent, you know, upwards of fifteen pounds on it. <laughs> you turn up, you walk in, you say, excuse me, where's the bride and groom, I want to give him this gift, and some Bloke, normally the brother-in-law says, oh yeah. no, 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 the no, brother-in-law's no. mate. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. They're too busy to see you right now. Just stick the gift on this big table with all the other ones. Yeah. And, um, they'll get back to you. In a week. It may be six to eight weeks after the honeymoon. They may write you a note. They won't thank you personally, they'll write you a note. It'll be a general thank you. It's and you're, you're, thank you. Your name in different type. <laughs> yeah, but it might have some vague reference to, you know, to yeah. what you did, but it won't yeah. really be personalised. Yeah. The <laughs> set of mugs, again, will be in different types. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Steve Merchant, <laughs> yeah. for your wonderful gift. We, uh, we love mugs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, a, and a photocopied signature. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, no, it's not right, is it? Oh, dear. And, uh, in, and also, uh, of course, as well, if there's, a, and if there's a baby involved, you know, perhaps they, you know, they, they had a kid out of wedlock what and that's mean? where they're getting married, there's normally the little baby signature as well. Oh. Uh, like, oh, I hate that, like the baby signed it. Uh, From Paul and Sharon. And little Billy. <laughs> <laughs> be Ben, be Ben, ben these days, ben. I reckon. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Carl? How was the wedding, by the way? Did you find Um, Suzanne sorted something out. Yeah. What? Um, I don't know. <coughs> oh, actually, no, we, we're going away. I'm a week away with them. But well, that's, that's your gift? Yeah. What, no, you're going away? No, we're going away to Cornwall or something, and, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. We've, we, we've sort of paid for the, for a place to stay in there. Coming along and that. And their gift is to spend a week with you in a s confined space. Oh, they'll, they'll have a great time and that. Will they? Yeah, it's fine. Can yeah. I, sorry, can I get a pen? I'm making a note of how many times you say and that during today's show. And so far there's three. I've noticed three. I'm just gonna, can I just make a note because I think we can have a competition here. <laughs> and <laughs> if you can predict how many times he's gonna say and that, mm -hmm. the closest one wins um, some of the crap DVDs that we've got on offer. Which Hold on, tell, tell them we've got Ladder 49. Definitely. <laughs> Landed Ben Folds on XFM 104.9. We've had an email, Rick, from Simon Whitaker. He says, uh, he's throwing the question to Carl. Have you seen the video for that Ben Folds song where there's apparently a monkey working the sound desk and shifting the piano? I'm so, yeah, you want to check that out? 
Talking of monkeys, um, working the same desk. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've also had a lot of emails directed Smooth. you. Yeah, a lot of emails directed you, Carl, asking if you saw this program that was on in the week. The uh, no, I think I didn't see it. I think I it's know, called I know the, the strangest, of the strangest village yeah. in Britain. Yeah. Did he watch it? He called me six times during it. <laughs> of he called he me six times. Erida. Now, just explain briefly what this was because I didn't see it. Well, it was um, uh, a sort of a, an experiment. Um, for, I think oh, I can work out from the sort of seventies, um, and it it was sort of run by, from what can make out, mainly sort of German uh, Christians. Right. And um, what it was, it was um, uh, people with various disabilities, or mental illnesses, uh, Down syndrome, uh, uh, autism, b bewildered, you know, and and they were living normally in the community. And there was three hundred people in the village. Half um, had some sort of uh, um, problem, mental problem or, or disability, and the other half were sort of carers. And uh, um, I mean, it was you know, it was it was very very strange. And where is this village? Uh, it's, it's somewhere up, in this. It's up near York Whitby, York. isn't it? York. Right. Yeah. Okay. But he called me. Uh, he called me at various points. You were watching that. Uh, it just started off. He, w he went, "Geez, if that's the beginning, what have they got coming up?" <laughs> then there was two fellas, and it, 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 the phone rang, and it went, "What is going on?" And it was two um, blokes who had created their own language, <laughs> okay. and they were going, "What do you know?" And you go, "What do we do?" And what it, it, you know, it was an interesting program. Anyway. I love documentary like that. But what made it twice as good was that I knew that Carl was getting confused. Yeah. He was get there was one bloke that went round interviewing people and he just have a string of questions and he'd go, Have you had, ever had curly hair? What's your favourite animal? Have you ever seen a badger? Uh, and um Carl was getting stressed. It was stressing me out. Right. He was trying to think of the answers quickly enough. <laughs> Is that, yeah, he was sort of saying, you know, uh, do you like Mosaics and that, and I was like, oh, I do it. And, th and the next question was coming in. It was like, it was like Mallet's Mallet. Oh, you know, that sort of <laughs> that word association thing. I was yeah. stressing yeah. out. But he said he wanted to go there. He actually said, oh, "Could I go for a holiday there?" And I went, "Well, I, I doubt that. I don't know. Maybe you could go on a a visit." You know, oh, that that would be great, wouldn't it? To st for Carl to walk in there. But the thing about it would be like, Carl would be the ruler. He'd be the king. It would be that, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I mean, he would just die. I don't know. There was some of them were quite clever. Really? Yeah, I don't think he'd- I don't- I, I think he'd probably be average. Yeah. I, don't th I don't think he's. <laughs> okay, he just come in. No, I don't. Th I don't think he'd shine. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of them were quite good at some things, weren't they? He didn't like the um, the angry bloke who punched. Um, there was a um, this really sort of sweet Down syndrome woman called Nan, and um, uh, she hadn't hung her coat up, and this angry um, bloke was going, "If you don't hang your coat up, I will." And he punched her, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah, poor yeah. Nan got it in the t neck from everyone. There was another woman bullying her, wasn't he? That, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you like the little um. The the, the 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 little dancing to a fellow with a woolly yeah, hat who was helping right. that if, woman. If I went there, he's the one who had sort of hunt down and say, come on, let's go for a pint or something. Sure. But, uh... Incidentally, do you like mosaics? We didn't establish that. Uh... <laughs> he's still thinking about it. <sighs> what was his name, that one, that you, the, 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 that you liked and you wanted to hang around with? What was his name? Uh... uh I can't remember. I can't he was good, I liked him, he was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. He yeah. Fe he's the one that fell over, then, and then, um... Proposed marriage to that woman, didn't he? Yeah, I remember. Um, I was on a. I don't know if this is all right to talk about. I mean, it happened, so you know, not worried about. It's all right to talk about. Everything's all right to talk about. But I was on the train, right, uh, coming from Manchester back to London, right. Yeah. And uh, got on it. It was like a Friday night, and it was heaving. You know, like the the, the last train is and all that, and. Um, Absolutely chocker. Right? Yeah. So I'm walking through the carriages, <laughs> thinking, oh, is he in his seats anyway? Is it? Anyway, everyone's like, it's, it's heaving, right? It's people stood up in the doorways, you can't get in the toilet and all that. There's not going to be any chair knocking about. You know, so walking through, and anyway, I see this one empty chair sort of in front of me, right? I think, oh, why ain't anyone sat there? Right? I'll just rush to that, get to that, I'll get myself a seat, plonk myself down, right? And uh, sort of turn round, you know, see who I'm facing, you know, see who you're sort of having a chat with. Little fella there, <laughs> right? Little, uh, well, Down syndrome kid. Right? right. Sat there. And, uh, he goes, alright? And I thought, oh, right. Not, not bad, but do, do you know what I mean? They're always talking, aren't they? Because they ask a lot of questions. <laughs> right, so I was like, oh, here we go, two and a half hours. And I couldn't get up because the thing is, that's obvious. Sure. Right? <laughs> So that's that's like mean. I don't. I, I never want to be mean. Do you know what I mean? No. At the end of the day. So um. So anyway. So I think I know. I'll go to sleep. <laughs> Clever. 
Right, so I shut my eyes and he leaves me alone and all that. So, uh, so then my phone goes and I think, right, what do I do? Do I ignore it or do I open my eyes and see what it is? Anyway, I open my eyes, it's Ricky calling about something. About nothing, probably, actually, thinking about it. It wasn't even worth answering, right? <laughs> so anyway, I'm awake now, aren't I? So he's like, hello. And I'm like, all right, mate. And he says, uh, he says, you're muscly. <laughs> oh God! And, uh, right, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he goes, uh, you know, why? <laughs> so I said, no, just, just stand. It's again stressing me out because I'm thinking, why am I? Why am I muscly? I don't go to the gym. <laughs> and you know, I've, I mean, I'm not muscly. I'm in good shape and that. Well, so, uh, so then uh, he wants an arm wrestle. <laughs> I'm a cram train from Manchester, so I've got another hour and a half of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, if you talk back, he'd soon have got up and left. If you just started asking him questions, he'd have got up and left with a dribble you come out with. So anyway, uh, do you know when you're under pressure, you're thinking, well, he's said that I'm muscly, right? right so, do I do it or not? What, and there's people watching, you know, not joining in, not sort of having a laugh and that with me, just, just like, watching but pretending they're not. Oh, And I'm God. at one of those table seats, so, it, and he kept saying, come on, I want to arm wrestle. So, and he was getting loud and I thought, oh, I best just have an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I best just have an arm wrestle. Well, what do you mean? Done, get it over and done with. I had to, uh, he's, if he's gonna keep asking, I had oh. another hour and a half on the train. Oh, God. So anyway. Oh, uh, my God. I'm, I'm thinking he won. Well, I'm, yeah. Well, I thought, were people putting bets on? It was working. <laughs> it was stopped and just as well, really. Was it really stopped? No, he, he, was it no, 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 no. He, he sort of, he was, he was winning. I was struggling a bit, right? Yeah. And he was really like, you know, taking my arm down. And then he sort of let go and started laughing. And I thought, thank God he let go because I would have made. You know what I mean? If I lost that, <laughs> everyone's in the train looking. And all the rest of it. <laughs> it's suddenly serious yeah. to him. He's got to win this. Pilkington, Pilkington. But then he just uh, then we were chatting about favourite food and that. He liked sausages. <laughs> and I said, you know, he said, do you like sausages? I said, yeah, they're all right. I like a bit of Chinese and that as well. And he was saying, oh, I can't have Chinese. Not allowed Chinese. Why? Uh, don't know. He just said uh, it's not allowed to have it. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, I'd, I had a good long chat about about stuff and that. But so you enjoyed it in the end. In the end, it was it was all right. Yeah, it's uh, just what is it? Mm, okay. No, but it's that thing, isn't it? It's uh, it's always when it, whenever you're faced with something different, yeah. it's always awkward, isn't it? And that's the thing. You're talking about him now, are you? And and I I think I, I did all right because everyone else was ignoring him, but yeah. I probably made his day pretty good. Yeah. We were I, nice bloke. I like the idea that that newlywed couple <laughs> are probably thinking that's going to be a similar journey down to Cornwall. <laughs> the magic numbers, forever lost. Uh, I was taken unawares because I was, I opened that, um, that thing, what is it? The confectionery. Well, we were sort of doing it ironically, like people getting shameless plugs by giving us stuff, but then I opened it and it's brilliant. It is brilliant. It's all retro stuff. It's got a curly whirly, a fountain, cherubic fountain. I've just been eating a drumstick that I didn't quite finish in time. It's got yeah. some of those little cola bottles. Uh, that's Hope and Greenwood and their confectionery, which are there mm. on their perfect summer gift. Perhaps you've got to go to a wedding or a um, barbecue party. And we've got some rubbish to give away now, haven't we? We have indeed, yeah. If only we hadn't opened that, we could have thrown that in the mix. I but, know, um, no, it's too good to give away. It's time for Rockbusters, uh, the quiz that no one looks forward to. And, um, <laughs> we've got, as usual, the bunch of, uh, CDs, uh, DVDs, I should say, which, um... Just tell me we have got another copy of Ladder 49. Ladder 49's right here. That's Brilliant. in the mix, yeah. How many did they send you? Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta, Ladder 49, the movie that no one's seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never met anyone who's seen it. But it's owned by every single XFM <laughs> listener. <laughs> exactly. Um, also in the mix, uh, as I said before, there we've got Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, um, mm. which, um, if you haven't seen that on telly, I'd be very surprised. Uh, French and Saunders at the movie, the, uh, the best of all the French and Saunders movie spoofs, which is, I think, on TV every single night. Yeah. Um, it's a very gay giveaway so far, it's isn't it? Giveaway. Well, this got one, this 49, the people in uniform, you've got Queen of the Desert and French and Saunders, well, the gays love them. You know how much a fan of, of uh, Chevy Chase, you know I love Chevy Chase. Yeah. Well, uh, we've also got here National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2, which doesn't feature Chevy Chase. <laughs> it was so bad, even Chevy wouldn't agree to be in it, so instead Randy Quaid, who plays Cousin Eddie, it's him. Right. And on the back I notice it says, Special Appearance by Eric Idle. Brilliant. I mean, let's be honest, if a film's got a special appearance by Eric Idle. I know. It's probably not a classic, is what I'm saying. Do you reckon they do, um, Always Walk on the 
on, on the bright <laughs> side of life. That's Anyways, just, that's just some of the DVDs which you can win. And look, obviously, the, the real reason you should enter is because you go forward to this big prize draw, um, which is in our last show, where you can win some actual quality. Um, yeah, a, a signed, uh, Matt Groening drawing. And if you can see him drawing that on wickedgervais.com, it's uh, totally genuine. It's just there, him actually drawing it in front of your very eyes. Also, um, us, uh, made us, uh, flanimals, um, and a signed, um, uh, poster uh, by Nigel Tufnell. Christopher Guest. Sure. So proper good prizes. Yep. So the, this is, uh, I think it should be the last one to get into it. Maybe next week, the four that we've got get down to two, maybe. And then we get them on the line in the last, uh, what do you think? Well, I'll be honest, I wish we'd thought it through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wish we'd thought this Chris through. Mr. Campling, if you've got any ideas <laughs> yeah. to how this show could have run, see, well, we, we should have, we should have scripted this. What yeah. we said, we just said the go in a drawer, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, we, we, we hadn't thought it through, though. Yeah, but we can't keep swapping and changing. Well, well we, we haven't done it yet. We can do what we want. We can do what we want, yeah. We, we, you know how many BAFTAs we've won? We can do exactly what we want. High right? five. Well, listen. <laughs> Six. Right, well, let's, let's get down to business then. Let's <laughs> right, so Rob, let's just, uh, make, let's explain briefly what this quiz is for those that have only just started listening to the show. Um, basically- It's basically, uh, um, blockbusters. Well, you say that, Rick, but it's not, is it? I mean, that- blockbusters made sense. Yeah, well, at least think, uh, Carl thinks this is a cryptic clue and going, right, a fella is walking along and it, oh, look, there's the fish. What does that mean? D trout no, spinners. Some, some, of them, I mean, some of them are hard because they've, they've dug them all some out. Some of them are hard because they don't make sense. No, but they've dug them all out because they're going to put them all on the website for people to play along with and they came to me for the answers and some of them are, are pretty tricky. I couldn't answer them. <laughs> So oh, I love that. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> the only man that can outwit himself. Right so then. So the first one then. Here we go. Uh. Why don't you borrow some land off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher? All right. Why don't you borrow a little bit of land? Oh, it's changed already. Already changed. Oh, already oh, changed. Mr. Boardman. Well, no, they do it again. They do it exactly the same each time. Do it again. Uh, why, uh, don't, why, right. don't, why don't you borrow uh, some land off, off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher if you, if you need a bit of that? <laughs> what's changing? Okay, and what's right. the, what are the initials? Right, LS. LS. LS, that's a band or an artist. Who am I talking about? Hmm? Uh, second one. I'm gonna, um, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, geez. I'm that's gonna, uh, uh, that's what, he's got a sweet in his mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those, uh, those seabirds over there. Right? Right? <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds <laughs> over there. Well, just, just those seabirds, it doesn't matter where they are. I'm gonna annoy them seabirds. I don't know what he's talking about anymore, Steve! <laughs> Honestly! B. B. B is the initial. I love the fact that he was fascinated by the strangest village in Britain, but the stories he's told us about where he comes from, there's him going around with two fellows with big heads, webbed feet, a little pigeon-chested bloke, uh, him on his grifter with Maggie pecking at him, his yeah. dad in the telephone box nicking groceries and a horse in the house next door. <laughs> I mean, how strange was his upbringing? Yeah. And him hanging from his satchel. To, uh, uh, unbelievable. There's Q3. another woman who I remembered. Actually, I'll tell you later. Go on, right. what? what no, I'll tell you, tell you later about another woman who I remembered. What is this? Give us a, give oh, a, give a, give a teaser. It's just a woman who rode around on a three-wheeled bike with her husband in a basket. <laughs> right, I'll tell you later. <laughs> right, and, and the final, the you final clip. You don't get teasers like that no, on the other radio That's station. the head of a funeral service. <laughs> oh. right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, the final clue. Uh, what the Scouse fella said to the robber who he found in his house next to his vineyard. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what? Again? Right, so what the Scouse fella said. Right, this is gonna be a pronunciation thing. To the robber he found in his house. Oh, God. Which I've, was I've next lost to his the will to live. I have I, I, I wanna get in that woman's basket on the street, we'll just be driven round the, the rest of my life. The initials are AW. AW. Who is it? All All right. right. Well, Email in and that. Mm. Should we have also on the text 83XFM? You can win um, Christmas, vac get oh, Christmas, Christmas Vacation 2 and <laughs> Ladder 49. David <laughs> 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 Bowie? Yeah, watch that man. David Bowie, watch that man on XFM 104.9. Now, coming up, Steve. And listeners, I'm, you know, then, you know, I'm talking to them mainly. I'm not really, I'm talking to you and Carl, really. Yeah. But coming up, an old feature. Knob News. Ah, oh, Knob News. The welcome return of Knob News. Yeah, and, uh, Monkey News is still there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just briefly, um, you don't think you really gave that, uh, competition justice, did you, not handing out the no, email? No, just quickly whiz through the questions again. Yeah. John's texted in, by the way, he says, I never get any of the Rockbusters clues. Is this a good or a bad thing? Definitely a good thing. Definitely a good Definitely thing. Definitely a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. All other people do. Well, First yeah. one, why don't you borrow a bit of land off, uh, Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel? Or even Mr. Fletcher. 
right? L S. Second one. I'm gonna annoy those seabirds, right? B. And the last one. What the scouse fella said to the robber he found in his house next to his vineyard. A W. If you know what they are, yeah. email in or or uh, text. Tell us about the woman. What's the text? Quick. Well, eight three oh. nine three six on the text. Okay. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co uk on the email and that. Right, and that. Mike Lowe and Dan just making note of that. And that. Right, tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the, you know, our, our living We are broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't us sort of like... Yeah, sort but you, you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do... What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and, uh, web dams and that. They went to my school. <laughs> and, uh, I, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm going to, I'm going to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So I said, oh, have, have we got any school, sort of school photographs with the, uh, big-headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, no, nobody bought, bought those sort of school photos, because, because they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well... <laughs> no! No, he said, he said sales would, you know, because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that. And he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so- I would uh, love them! Yeah. I swear I'd buy them. Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If it's on the mantelpiece. Well, yeah, well, uh, well. Mm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know- When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and web feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a, was there a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but no, well, there, loads was of weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And. Uh, she had a three-wheeled, sort of big, what do you call it? <laughs> three-wheeled son. He was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. Well, he got uh, like a big tricycle, tricycle but for, a la for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though, it was a- No, 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 it was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to, uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his, like, legs dangling over and they'd be going to, like, the, like, the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sort of bald-headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And oh. Bring out your ill. <laughs> and then just people just throw Grandad just in the back and go yeah. right, we're getting four quid for Grandad. But but, but she's got a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're she, very low, but they're extremely bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> she used to uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but. She'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, now, I've heard, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you picking on your husband a lot. Yeah. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Do it again, and, uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that. She That's was alright. And how was the husband? He, did he, did he, was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the No, he just, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's good. Just you can't, you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Uh, I think impersonating a police officer Well, you probably did, there, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop, but I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was, uh, you know, but, but let's, let's face it, it's, you know, he's, he's not gonna be caught cause, well, we don't even know, but it's not like his son's gonna say it on a, on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, is this something he did generally? Kind of a little bit of light vigilante work? <laughs> just whatever, him and his mate, just, you know, if they saw something going on, they'd go, what can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do or whatever? <laughs> That's fantastic! That's that is brilliant! Right, okay, uh, coming up, Knob News. And Monkey News. And Monkey News. And the answers to Rockbusters. What a show. Signs on XFM by Snoop Doggy Dog and Justin Timberlake and a bunch of other people. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant Carpet. I'm just sorry, I was just enjoying You're that um, Hope and Greenwood confectionery. Lovely. I wish I had something to uh, wash that down with, Rick. Well, won't you have a, a glass of um, lovely um, 
at Ban Rock Station Red Wine. Oh, lovely. It's barbecue friendly. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, good, so just keep sending stuff in. Free, free stuff, it's free stuff. Good stuff. Um, Carl, oh. what are we talking? Oh. What are we doing? I've got something to tell you, actually. Um, you know we tease Steve about, um, not ever spending any money. Careful, I'm careful with money, I'm not- Yeah. Guess what? He's, he's treating it like, um, he's nurturing this, right? I, he keeps running off, right? In the edit, he's having a suit made, and he wants to be just right, because I reckon he's forking out quite a lot. He's having a suit made. Think of that, what? him. Let me tell you this, though, I don't want you thinking that I'm getting all flash with my cash. Um, it's very hard to buy off the peg when you're six foot seven. So, you know, it was a necessity. Carl, I don't want you thinking that this is the beginning of some new phase. Well, is everything you buy sort of made to measure? Or? No, I'm afraid I w if only. If only I could afford it, mate. But, uh, no, I'm off the peg generally, but. You know what? Like properly done and that. Just. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the full, it's the full, yeah, it's the full thing. The full works. Got to keep going back for fittings. They've got that little bit of chalk, you know, the pins. That's where I had mine made. You know how good I look all the time. <laughs> Did you have to have that, uh, thing done where they say, um, what side do you, uh, do you wear your member? What side you dress? They don't say what side you wear your member. That would hardly be a euphemism, would it? So they say what side you dress, sir. It means what side your little poke, your little, your little John Thomas leans, doesn't it, on a, on rest, usually to the left, isn't it? Your, your little but left you know, testicles. If I said to you now, what side do you wear? Hang on. Do you uh, know? It would be left. It would be the left. That's what I mean. If, if uh, standing there, right? Um, with no nothing restricting it or holding it in or holding it up, right? It sort of leans, do your one ball is sort of like slightly back and lower, isn't it? And your, your little John Thomas rests there, so it's left. And the reason they ask it is so they don't put the tape measure up on the left and s squash your willy or touch your willy. So it's nothing to do with like, well, you'll need a bit more room, of sort of more material on that side or? Uh, well, no, I don't think they, they compensate. It's just uh, when they put the, w when they stick that up into your groin, they don't want to come in contact with, um, with your The thing is, I, I don't know what side I wear stuff on. I just sort of pull my pants up and w wherever it wants to go that day. But maybe it's not big enough to sort of make any, you know, real decision. But, like now, I'm sat here, right, with my jeans on. I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> if you talk. No, but what, but what I mean is, if a fella said to me, "What side do you, uh, what, you know, what side do you member on?" Member. What's this? What is this? <laughs> the use of the word member suddenly? I'd, I'd go. I'd, I'd, well, it's not. It's usually not appropriate. And also, I imagine in the old days they had big baggy pants and used to sort of like hang down. And now, you know, like with those stretchy boxers and briefs, it's sort of held up in a nice little neat little parcel, isn't it? So it's probably not appropriate. He doesn't come in contact with your little snake. So, <laughs> you know. Did you ever, well, have you ever heard that? Have, have you, have, are you telling me a tailor has asked you that and you went, what do you mean, mate? No, no, I've never, uh, I've not really had one made to measure. I had one made when I was a kid. But since then, I've sort of bought a suit off the hook. But I've, when, you know, when you were saying about buying a suit, I know that question sort of crops up and I don't know what the answer is. It's just annoys me the way every, I don't know, there's no surprises anymore. Do you know what I mean? People know. What, what do you mean? He's gonna, he's gonna go, right, I'm gonna measure you now. Which side shall I measure? Go, well, pop that, go on, have a look. <laughs> right, there you go, oh, you got it. What you chuck me now. Do you mean there's no surprises anymore? What are you talking about? Everything mean, you say is a surprise. Everything no, no, but, you say, but what, every opinion you have no, but what, is a surprise to me. What I mean is, why aren't people just happy just to go, well, pff, depends, isn't it? Just, I'll just pull the pants up wherever it wants to go, I'm happy. <laughs> what do you mean? Why is this such a big issue? <laughs> But Carl, when they ask you this question, they're not making a note of it somewhere. It's not statistical research <laughs> to find out what the kind of common leaning is. It's just, it's a question so he doesn't touch it when he's using his tape measure. Well, just be careful. But it, but he's being careful by asking the question. But what, what's wrong with him touching it anyway if he's, I mean, it's only oh, like hello. a slight- <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But if he just sort of, you know, knocks it a little bit, you can just go, go. <laughs> Do that again? To me, it's the same as the prostate thing. It's just uh, happening all over again. It's but the that, same. the doctor doesn't go, oh, what, what, what side's your ass on, sir? Trying to avoid the ass. He kn he wants to go, he, he knows where your ass is and he's aiming for it and he wants to get it up there. He's aiming for it for a good cause. This little fella's going, well, I've got to measure his leg. I don't want to touch the knob. I'll just ask him, sir, do you mind uh, telling me where your cock is so I can avoid it? It's a big difference. But, but like I'm saying to you, I'd have to have a look first. To let him know. <laughs> I don't know where it is now. I don't know. It could be the left, could be the right. <laughs> Are you telling me you can't, you don't know where your knob is Without now? Without looking. 
Well, well, that, well you're like, oh, what do you mean now we're looking? How could- Well, you're saying it as if like- Should we have a guess? Well, have I'm, a look, have a look and tell us where it is. And uh, what are you wearing? What sort of pants are you wearing? I've got my jeans on. But you've got pants on underneath them? Yeah. What are they? Is. Briefs? Or uh, box shorts? Boxer shorts. Boxer shorts. Well, it's probably free, but the jeans are probably stricken it. I probably- it's, I think it's probably uh, either in the middle, resting- dressed in- or just slightly to the left. Have a look, we'll come- we'll tell the- we'll tell the listeners after the break, where- where's Carl's knob? <laughs> it's a good competition. Oh, brilliant. We've got to send this to the Sony Awards, people. <laughs> <laughs> Run. Snow Patrol on XFM. Well, big question. Where was, uh, Carl's knob? <laughs> That's what people have been hanging on for. <laughs> yeah. Where was it? Well, I can't believe people have been texting in. Hey, <laughs> well, guessing where it is. People saying, uh, is it in the middle? Is it in the left? Uh, it cost them 10p. It cost them 10p to find out. Just wait, I'm gonna get out the answer. You don't win anything, alright? <laughs> Let's strike it lucky. Alright, um. <laughs> Top, bottom or middle? Right. It's, uh, it was to the left. Oh! Yeah. I went with the right. That's annoying. See, I, I thought it would be uh, to the left. If not, maybe if it was all scrunched up, sitting only that right, it might just pop up to the middle. Just <laughs> pop out. Like, you know. Sort well, of next week we'll, uh, we'll be finding out where, uh, where's, where yours is. Where's, right? where's, uh, Ricky's <laughs> Right then, which, uh, leads us nicely into... Knob news. Oh, it's the welcome return of knob news. Right, look, okay, this is, it's very much like the news at 10, this, isn't it? Mm. I do a, uh, I do a bomb. Or in this case, a schlong, and uh, he gives me the headlines, the big, the big, the, the knob news of the day. The big, uh, where have you collected all this knob news? Was, was, there, was there a lot of knob news this week? It was, it was mental this week. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff. The way it works, uh, you, you give us the, the, uh, the bong. Yeah. I'll give you the headline. Okay. Steve decides which story we're going to talk about. And now on XFM, knob news. Schlong. Man grows knob on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> schlong. Man gets doctors to make him a second knob. Schlong. <laughs> Turkish prisoners made hole in cell wall to produce third inmate. Schlong. <laughs> doctors accidentally remove man's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, well, can I straight away, can I straight away go for the accidental uh, removal of the testicles? <laughs> Well, it's happened before, I think. We've talked about that before. Well, how did oh, what, what did he go in? For, for a tonsil- uh, I, uh, what are they called? Tonsillectomy? And he was- he went in the wrong way. What are you talking about? How can I accidentally um, remove his testicles? It says, uh, and, uh, um, it didn't look at his folder, um, and the doctor said to the fella, oh, we've, uh, we've removed your testicles and we wanted to take out your prostate gland. So, that's- that's what happened there. <laughs> there's- there's a story. This is what I mean, that's why I don't like going to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Because the, all these sort of, uh, it's when they say things like, oh, it's just- we do loads of these operations. That's when they're not concentrating. Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? When they say it's procedure. That's like uh, be, having a boring job that you do every day when you're not going to be concentrating. <laughs> I prefer them to go, this is a tricky one, this. <laughs> I know what you mean! I sort of do know what you mean! People, you watch TV programs about like, you know, removing someone's second head or whatever, mm. and it's like the best surgeons from all over the world. It's televised, they can't it's make a mistake. It. They can't go and took his legs off by mistake. Whereas the fella who's having a prostate, it's like, oh, do you want to do it? I'm sick of doing that. Yeah. And they're probably doing a crossword whilst writing it. Of course they are. I've seen that actually in, in uh, operating theatres. They're doing a crossword. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. I was just examining some of the other knob news, Rick, a little bit more closely. Mm. Um, man gets doctors to make him a second penis. I'm sure yeah. we're all interested in what happened there. Yeah. A German who persuaded doctors to give him a second penis has lost his wife after he showed her the result. Uh, biker Michael Gruber lost his original penis in a motorbike accident and doctors built him a second one using a mixture of skin, bone and other tissues. Bone? Apparently, the, pe the penis worked so well that he was even able to father a child with his wife Bianca. But Gruber was still not happy and asked doctors to repeat the operation and build him a better organ, to which they agreed. From his hospital bed, he said, I've got two penises, but no wife. I'm hoping when I get rid of one of the penises, I'll get her back. What do you mean? They, well, they, well, sorry, he had a, so he had two put on. What side does he wear? <laughs> so he's had both. So he's had three, then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the thing that happened with Hitler, when he had one ball, but he had three at one point, didn't he? So he just got one in the other ball, gave his mum one, and got <laughs> the other one. Man grows penis on his arm. I mean, why are people constantly losing, losing their penises around the world? I've no idea. But why I on the arm? What do you mean why on the arm? Thing. It's just a graft, isn't it? 
Yeah, but put it on like your, your buttock or your, your side. Not, you can't wear a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> Why did it, they've done that before. I don't understand it. Why not just graph it onto <laughs> the side of your leg or something where it's high up, close to where it should be? I don't know. To get it used to the environment. Like when you were like released a, like a, a duck into the wild. I've never, I've never understood that. If there's a doctor, again, you know, we had a doctor last time, this is someone who can let us know why they put it on the arm. So they can keep an eye on it, presumably. He's not, he's not going to work with this knob on his arm. He's probably in a hospital bed and under, under examination. Right. So it's, what do you, what do you think? They pop the art knob on the arm, say come back in three weeks. What do you do, by the way? I'm a mechanic. Keep the knob, keep the long sleeve shirt, cause the blokes will go, why have you got a knob on your arm, mate? What are you talking about? He doesn't go back to normal as a teacher. Sir, what, what, what is it, uh, what is it, Simpkins? You got a knob on your arm. No, don't worry about that. Do your maths. What do you think this bloke's walking around with a big knob coming out of his arm? Why on the arm? So they can keep an eye on it. So it's not- But if he's in bed, just get him to not put any undies on or whatever and just have a little sly look at how, how it's going. Even in hospital, if you're in a shared, like, <laughs> little hospital room, people going, oh, I've had heart, you know, heart problems, what's, what's your problem? He's there with his arm out. <laughs> Got his knob out. Yeah, but I don't think it counts as indecent exposure when they're grafting a knob on your arm, sticking that. What <laughs> <out laughs> <of> the bet? <laughs> Imagine if he's driving; he's just got it out the window. <laughs> People driving by. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the, is, is that bloke giving me the finger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end of the man grows penis on his arm story, uh, it says, uh, a Moscow surgeon said the man will, will be able to have sex in a few months. He said, w women will never suspect. <laughs> what, you, what kind of a doctor talks like that? Yeah. I don't really, it's his cock now, seriously. We, the birds will never know. He'll be able to go berserk. Yeah. They'll never realise we grew on his arm. That is unbelievable. Will he have a little scar on his arm, do you think? Yeah. I just don't, I don't get it. Like I say, 83936 if, if there's a doctor out there. Or indeed if you've ever grown or a tailor. <laughs> making you a shirt. What side do you wear your cock on to? To my left arm. What's that? Bit of stones. Yeah, beautiful. Lay it on me. Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. Well, uh, I think, uh, the listening public would have enjoyed knob news there. Oh. So, I, I mean, it's, you, you, there was, there was a lot of knob news this week. I was surprised. You know, I would have thought it would be hard sometimes to get knob news together, but- I would have uh, thought it had been part of a bigger news program, but, I mean, I don't think we'd dedicate a whole, sort of, uh, you know, f like John Craven's news round. Yeah. A whole five minutes <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. knob-related news. Yeah. It was, there was other news, was there, in the week at all? Uh, Carl, it wasn't just yeah. all knob-related, you didn't just research. No, they're the ones that sort of stand out. <laughs> uh, there was Christ on a crisp. Right, uh, what's that? That's, that's obviously a, a crisp that someone vaguely thinks looks a bit like Robert Powell. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what a load of twaddle, yeah. Uh, there's a bloke who can, uh, blow up balloons using his ears. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, look at him. Just, yeah, uh, well it's, 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 yeah, well it's all connected, isn't it? That's, you know, you're just, you're just redirecting it, aren't you? Pointless I mean, though, isn't it? It is pointless. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sort of downplaying it like it's no big deal, but it is pretty impressive. It's but, not. When was the last time you blew up a balloon? Oh, I don't know. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's not needed. It's not, it's not impressive. That's what I mean. That's why- But you can say that about any form of sort of like bizarre entertainment. I, d I don't think you have to hang yourself from hooks, but a lot of people go and see Jim Rowe's Circus. I mean, I wouldn't. I, 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 I don't see the- But would you go and see that? What, a man blowing up balloons? No. If, if it was a mate of mine, I'd go, do that thing you can do. I'd, you know, to, to, to a group of new friends, I'd go, right? Then I'd get on with it. You know, it's, it's, it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's below, um, a, uh, an average card trick, doing something like that. Apparently, though, he does make balloon animals with his penis, so, uh, <laughs> which is right. pretty good, isn't it? Blowing up with his ears, so <laughs> it's always a snake. <laughs> yeah. So like a snake. I go, yeah, well done. Back to Put the news. Right, right, now listen then. Uh, what about another feature we'd like doing? What? Song with a story. Okay, he's been working on this, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, hasn't he? He's yeah. like a producer, isn't he? Yeah. But with a uh, round head. Just, just, you know, I was saying that, you were saying I don't like music, but I'm saying I do if I can hear what they're singing about, and there's a reason to sort of listen so to it. So have you turned into 50's dad? <laughs> what is this? Uh, is <laughs> no, but you know, it's like, it's nice to have a song where you go, you know, I can't turn it off because I need to know how it ends. 
<laughs> you know I mean? it's, like, it's like a mini. Right. It's like, like a, a mini film. A he can't film. sit through a film unless it's got a grotesque in it. He can watch the Elephant Man because he's getting a glimpse of this. He's waiting to see the bloke's face. That's all he's waiting for. Right. And so uh, three minutes is about as much as you can maintain his. Uh, well, uh, well, last week we did uh, Babushka. Yeah. Uh, you know that woman dressing up. Mm. Sort of tricking her husband, then it sort of backfires and that. Mm. Um, don't know how it ended properly. I don't know if they split up or whatever. But this week, <laughs> this week, there's no follow up. Kate Bush isn't now penning the the, the sequel. Mm. Right, go on into what's this week? Pinball Wizard. Right. Okay. What's the story there? Um, it's about this sort of deaf, dumb, blind kid. Right. Who's good at pinball? What's that? So I don't believe he would be good at pinball. But even if he is, it's a lot to give up, isn't it? Just for that. Well, he didn't give it up. No, but it's not like, it's not like, well, you can't even say to him, oh, you know, a lot of bad news and that, but you've got that pinball. It's just a bit, bit rubbish. I mean, does he even know he's playing pinball? <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's not hard, it's just moving the thing, you know, just hitting the buttons hard. Yeah. It's not like, you know, if he was good at Pac-Man or something, you'd go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Wouldn't scan, would it? <laughs> well, I mean, what what were they thinking of? What were the Who thinking of when they wrote this? Well, let's have a listen to it. But yeah. she know, he's a deaf man wizard. It kind of works. Yeah. He um, he's deaf, dumb, and blind though. Yeah. That's pretty grim, isn't it? It's rubbish, isn't it? Well, don't say that. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I can't hear. You. No, but it is. It is like it's it's just the worst, isn't it? I can't imagine what that would be like. It's pointless. I'm being a tapeworm or something, it? it's just- <laughs> No, no, but uh, what I'm saying is what sort of a life is that? It's- it's horrible. It is a bit like being one of those creatures deep in the ocean. Well, look, look can I just- can I just answer your questions? It must be terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Job done. But would you want a song about it and, you know, is this- is good at pinball? But it's not a real person, which- I mean, well, we, we were getting on to the realms of well, let's, people- let's bit, But he is not a bloke that existed they sang a song about. Well, listen to it. Anyway, that's- It's not a true story. I don't need to listen well, let's to have it. have a listen. Oh. Okay. Pinball Wizard by The Who. A little song with a story there, about a little deaf, dumb and blind kid. Thoughts, Carl? I just, uh, it's depressing, like I say. Uh, I don't know why- Is he enjoying- is he enjoying playing the, the game? I don't know, let's get Pete Townsend on the phone. Carl, what are you talking about? I'm just trying to- Listen to the lyrics, right? Deaf, dumb, like it. He can't hear, uh, no bows and bells, he can't see any flashing lights, he plays by sense of smell. Now, I'm pretty sure that isn't a scientific document Pete Townsend is reading out there when he wrote this song. He's making it up. But I d but the thing is, with all songs or stories, there's gotta be a little bit of realism to it. What- do you know what I mean? Why- yeah. why, why bother putting money in it? Just let him hit, hit the buttons if he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a fair point. That is a fair point. That is a fair point. Yep. That is great. Yeah, oh, well, uh, I think you've made Daltrey and Entwistle and the whole crew, crew look fool, like fools. Yeah, they won't get fooled again. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. We're supposed to do it. I mean, I've all the thing, I mean, it is horrible. We're not, like, having a go. This is what I always worry about when we play, but at the end of the day, that's what we're singing about, so we're not having a go. No. But and he's not a real person, doesn't really exist. Uh, I say again, it's a fictional person playing pinball and always getting a replay. Okay? This what? fella's saying that he's good at pinball, he's played from Sherry to Bowie, but there's this little deaf and blind kid. He can't believe it. He cannot believe it. If you had to lose something, Steve, right? Uh. It wouldn't be money. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> your sight or your, uh, or your ears? What? That's too much, I can't decide. That's, uh, that's too painful. Sight or your ears? What about, what about you? <laughs> Intuitively it would be the hearing, because I, I couldn't- uh, no, no, I think it's got to be sight for me. Yeah. Well, you're always together, so that's alright. <laughs> 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 anyway, listen, is it almost time? Well, I've got to ask Carl. I'm sorry, I've got to ask oh, Carl. Oh, sorry, go on. Ga Carl, what would you rather be, deaf or blind? It, it when did this question ever really come up? Today. When is it- when the doctor goes, well listen, um, you've got our son, uh, well we can operate, we can either lose your eyes or your ears, yeah. it's up for you. This- this is never a decision that has to be made by anyone ever in life. It, but go on then, would it, you rather it, it, be- would you rather uh, be blind or deaf? It depends where you live. So. I'm not even sure these are PC terms, blind and deaf anymore. Would you rather use your sense of sight or sight of hearing? Depends what- depends where you live. What do you mean it depends where you live? 
Well, if, if, say if, uh, say if you lived in, like, a barren sort of, you know, Africa or whatever, right? right. Now to sea, right? Sure. So, you could lose your, lose your sight. Sure. But, but if you lived in a woman's locker room. Well, if you lived in <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite noisy. Yeah, it's quite noisy. It's like, <laughs> you stop banging that door. Yeah, I'll have my sight. Lose yeah. your hearing. But, yeah. if it, but if you live in, like, New York, low to sea, but a little bit noisy. Sure. So. Perfect. That <laughs> is a brilliant answer. <laughs> Unbelievable, <laughs> once again. Can we have monkey news? Oh, I don't know. This, this show's like one long monkey news, isn't oh. it? When you're tuning in to hear <laughs> Carl Pilkington. I don't know. I'll tell you what, why don't we play a little short track? Right, what was nice your little short track? What? Uh. What is it, Steve? It's it's green, day, green Day. Try if you like. A bit of Green Day. We'll cram in the monkey news. We'll play the ads. Justin's here. That'll be that. Go right. on. That's what we'll do. Green Day on XFM 104.9 with your HC Merchant Carl Pilkington. We need the answers quickly, Carl. Rockbusters. Rock 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 we're running out of time. We've got right. Rockbusters and monkey news to come in this fun packed show. Give us the clues. Give us the answers. Right. The first one was why don't you borrow a little bit of land off, uh, Mr. Boardman yeah. or Mr. Laurel or yeah. Mr. Fletcher? Go on then. Yeah, right. Sure. What am I getting out there? The initials were yeah. LS. Yeah. Right. Lease. Lease a Stan's field, right? Because you're borrowing it. That's leasing it. It's Stan, Stan Boardman, Stan Laurel, and uh, it's a field and that, isn't it? Second one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. That was B. What are you doing when you're annoying a bird? You're bugging it. What's seabird? A, a, a gull. Buggle. Buggles. Right? Bug gulls. Uh, I don't. I don't know where to start, mate. Right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't. Don't third, know where to start. Uh, if one. we if we had more time, <laughs> don't worry. I'd throw him out of yeah. a window. <laughs> right. What what the scouse fella said to the robber <sighs> he found in his house next to his vineyard. Go on. That then. was A W. Yeah. That was A me wine house. Right. A what? A A me wine house. What? A A me wine house. What do you mean wine house? <laughs> it's a vineyard. It was a cottage in a vineyard. So that's what I was saying. What was the clue again? A me wine house. Well, yeah, but what do you mean? A me. What? Why is he saying? Why is it? Why is it a robber? Because the robber's getting in, and he's he's sort of saying, "Hey." But what's the robber got to do with it? Why is it just a normal bloke? I don't say what. Why is he saying, "Hey, me wine house"? Why is because he saying he's, that? He's saying to him, "Hey." Get out, can well, no, you? Say, no, 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 no. I've already heard her name anyway, is A. Get out, uh, me Winehouse. Her Gavin. name is uh, no. Her name is A. Get out, me Winehouse. Oh, Gavin Thompson got them all right. He's in Edinburgh, so he's winning ladder forty nine and that. That's safe. That's on the. And he's going into the prize draw to win those. Right. Right, just do. I mean, this better be a good monkey news, Carl. That's all I can say because that was drivel. Amy Winehouse. Play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news. Right. There's this monkey, right? Yeah. And it had been, uh, do you know you hear about monkeys being badly treated and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So, uh, anyway, it goes into this, this home. It's fourteen, this monkey. It's called, uh, Matty, right? Goes into this home where it's looked after. What uh, do you mean home? Just like, uh, just a little monkey home, right? Okay, so, so do. Yeah, kind of, yeah, but they haven't mm. got any other monkeys there, right? What have they so got there? They've got just other animals and that, but, but not that many monkeys. But anyway, because, mm. because he's there on his own, Again, you know. When well, you say monkey, do you mean a chimpanzee? By the way, because you usually do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can't believe that um, journalist thought this was scripted. Amazing. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. So it gets it gets sort of pally with the people working there and that, and uh, <laughs> it's smoking fags, it's having a drink at night, and all this. Right. What do you mean it's having a drink at night? How? Huh? <laughs> it's all here. It's all here, Steve. I mean, we haven't really got time, but. Well, you know, they say it's all here, like it's proof. You've got another stupid story that no. someone has put onto the internet. Someone sitting at home in their bedroom mm. has put onto the internet. So he's having a yeah. fag. He's drinking a lovely glass of Bang Rock Station. <laughs> yeah. The wine reason. that's perfect for a barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's loving life. It's forgetting about its past and everything, right? When this this other monkey comes along. Oh, oh no! That was brilliant. Go on, right? That comes in. Something said. <laughs> <laughs> right, forget it. Then. Forget, it. Forget, it. forget it. Forget it. We're ever lost. The magic numbers and the magic number is one hundred four point nine. XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, two more shows. Two are off air for I don't know how long. Is that two more including this one? Yeah. No, 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 no. Two more. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. No, it's right. This, this, this is one, and then there's another one. Right, two and more shows. And that's the last one. There's okay, two right. more shows. Yeah, including start, this. One. So we'll start in now. Sorry, no, if I just said this at the end, it might have been ambiguous. But I've said it at the beginning. There's two hours. That's a whole show. Right. So there's two more shows. Two more shows, including this one. Yes, okay. obviously. So one more show. After it's this only one. five past one. After this show, one more. Yeah. One more. Next week, one more show. That makes two altogether. Oh no! Now it's only one more show. Good night. Okay. Um. Now, it better be a good one, Carl. Have we got, uh, Rockbusters? Yeah. 
to win those prizes. Check. Have we got monkey news? Check. Is it a real monkey news or is it Always something is. that's slightly made Always up is. that you- What? Always is. Let's just check. Okay. Uh, knob news? Uh, yeah, we've got a bit of knob news, yeah. I'm worried that knob news, because it's only about penises, is a little bit mm. sexist. Um, have we got any fanny facts? <laughs> <laughs> can we- maybe can we sort that out for next week? I don't want to alienate <laughs> our female audience. <laughs> Welcome to Minge London. <laughs> um, good, I'm glad that's that. Well, um, brilliant. Uh, we've got a song with a story? Yeah, doing that. What is it? Uh, I don't want to sort of tell you what it is yet. Because right. the song isn't that great, do you oh, know what good. I mean? It's not a song oh, that, like, that, that's like an XFM song, but every time I hear it on, say, like, Magic or whatever, yeah. I have an argument- 105.4. Yeah, I have an argument with Suzanne that, you know, what I think it's about, and mm. she says, don't be stupid, it's not about that, and I'll say, no, it is. And so we're gonna decide who's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what song you're talking about, and I don't know what the argument is, but Suzanne's right. Definitely. No well, doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll listen, but I'm hoping that once people sort of listen to it again with my thoughts, every well, time Well, this song it, sums up what people should think of you. It's don't believe a word. All right? That's the sort of links I'm capable of. If that was a bag of Sony, then nothing <laughs> wrong. Thin Lizzy. Don't believe a word on XFM 104.9. I'm gonna miss this show. It's been good. You want to be the only one? No, well, you know, so we, we, we'll come back again. We've got, we've got a lot to do over the next few months, but maybe, maybe, maybe for Christmas or just after. But I still call Carl every day anyway. Oh, sure. I, um, I called him, um, a couple of days ago. Of course you did. And I went, uh, it was the weekend, I went, what are you doing? He went, oh, just in Regent's Park and that. I went, what are you doing? He said, just going for, went, oh! Jesus. I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. God, it's there, it's wriggling around. I went, sure a bird didn't just drop it. He looked up and went, oh yeah. <laughs> <It was a laughs> of bird. course he did. Yeah. For a moment he thought caterpillars were raining from the sky. I thought I was, t I was, I was in chicken licking. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. What, why did you think a caterpillar had fallen out of the sky? Oh, it just startled me a bit. <laughs> I like the idea of him straight on the phone to Trevor McDonald. Look, Trevor, there's, there's caterpillars, there's insects falling out of the sky. They're falling out of the sky now. Put it on the news, quick. Are you sure there wasn't a bird? Oh, there was a bird. Yeah, sorry, Trev. Bye. <laughs> but it was weird. after, like, I hung up, well, I hung up the phone and that from you. I mm. sort of, uh, sat there for a bit watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine him cross-legged, just in front of it. But do you know what? Because, because of his shape, the shape of his head and his sort of IQ, I bet the caterpillar was thinking, Mama. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It is <laughs> unbelievable. Go and, on. Uh, it was, it was sort of running about all over the place, right, Steve? So the caterpillars have loads of feet and that, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, they have six legs. They're actually larvae and insects. They have six legs, but they have little sucker things to hold on to the back of cabbages and that. No, they've got more than that. They've it's got. Like, I tell you, they have got six true legs. Trust me. Trust me. I'm a scientist. And you were thinking what, Carl? Well, it was- But they've got little- it. they've got little pods, they've got little, um, pseudo pod legs mm. and little suckers, yeah. But it was running about, like, everywhere, right, mental, but sort of running off to the left, and then it sort of went back to where it was, <laughs> then back, you know, went r right and what have you, and I'm just thinking, whoever gave them the legs, right, what's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you can get about- Imagine that sentence. Did you hear that, just, did you hear that sentence? Can we play that <laughs> sentence back? No, I don't think we can. Imagine who gave him that legs. Whoever, whoever, whoever gave him them legs, what's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? And that. Always and that. And that, but, but maybe you just, to be fair to the caterpillar, with all its legs, okay, and you know where it's going, it had just been plucked from its house by a bird shot up into the sky and then dropped from 80 feet, hitting the ground. Onto the head of a weird, bold-shaved monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably concussed. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's one of things again, though. But I it mean... still knew more about the world than you. How does that make you feel? I just, I just think it's a waste of time having all them feet. It's the same thing as the, uh... Feet! Now it's got feet, feet yeah. now! All, all it has the, a nightmare uh, buying shoes, doesn't it, Carl? All <laughs> the, uh... What was it, what was it you were saying about leeches and that? Because we were talking about insects. Well, they're not insects. All these, they're not insects. What are they? Well, I think they're probably, uh, class, they're probably platyhelminth. Probably a, yeah. sort of like a flatworm. 
type thing. That's they what you were thinking, was it, Carl? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't know what the phylum is, but there's, no. They'd, uh, they'd be, you know. What was uh, the leech, what was an interesting well, leech? Well, there's an experiment, uh, um, where you get a maze for a leech and there's a b bit of blood thing and it learns, it eventually finds its way to the blood. Okay, and then it knows. Okay. And if you, if you put it back to where it starts, it knows where it straight. It goes straight towards it because it's learnt it. If you liquidise that leech right. and feed it to some leeches who have never done the maze, because of a thing called chemical memory, they find their way straight to the blood. That is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, it's it's in, it's incredible. We should try that at Hampton Court one weekend. <laughs> 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 but maybe with some tourists. <laughs> Just blend up some tourists. <laughs> All the people on them, um, I tell you, who would do it. Those people who go on um, Celebrity Love Island. Any of them? They would do anything it. to get. Yeah. Out of, they will be liquidised. People <laughs> have enemas. They will do. En they wank off pigs. They will do anything to get yeah. on telly. What about that? Be liquidised and fed to a n get get one D celebrity slapper, uh, liquidise her and feed her to another slut. So we blend and see up if she can tippers. find her way. <laughs> and see if she can find her way to Channel Five. Yeah. What <laughs> a brilliant show. Hosted by Jimmy Carr. Of course. That'd be amazing. The Kinks, Better Things on XFM 104.9, Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. But do you know this, um, when we're talking about the leech thing. Sure. Right. You're saying put them in a blender. I'm not saying that. <laughs> well, someone did. Yeah. Why were they doing that in the first place? Do you know what I mean? How did they find out that if you if you put leeches in a blender, I don't know. They probably feed them to another. So I don't. I don't. I no, don't no, know. no. But what what made them? Were they just having a laugh? What what made them go? Uh, uh, was it a party? It was a couple of party. No, it was a party. It was a couple of research scientists. They'd be given a million pounds, and the boss was coming around to say, "What are you doing?" And they were just making a smoothie, and they went quick. So Mr. Yakamoto's come round, throwing some leeches. What are you doing? Just leeching. Just feeding these leeches to some other leeches. <laughs> All right. Well, that looks like science. I'm off. <laughs> Well, that's what they get. Another million pounds yeah, next yeah, year. Yeah, Bye. Yeah. That's how they work, though, isn't it? I like these I'm just it. saying they're getting away with murder. Go on. Well, just just the way they do sort of spend. Uh, and you can't say anything in front of him because everything's got everything's everything's got a point with him. Mm. You can't have a conversation with Carl because he always he always puts in a curveball. You, you tell him something. And it, 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 the question comes back that you never could have expected. When I told him about that story about the monkey who had run away because he had an argument with his father, he said, what was it about? <laughs> yeah. No, no one in the world thinks that. <laughs> no one in the world the, the, would ask that question. The leech thing. Do yeah. you know how you said, uh, show, show the leech the way to its better food, whatever it's eating or whatever? Yeah. In the maze, right? Yeah. It makes its way, yeah. right? It eats the cheese or whatever. Right? Blood. Blood, right? And then, <laughs> and you give it, you give Everything's it. Everything's a cartoon yeah. with Carl as well, isn't it? Everything is a cartoon. It's a leech with a little hat and a little baby <laughs> bell at one end. But what happens if you got another one and yeah. move the, uh, bit of blood? Yeah. Right? So, feed those two leeches to one, then what, so is it gonna get confused or... Do you know what I mean? Which, which way will it go if you've, if it's eaten two, two leeches? Yeah. That have done two different ways. Yeah. Is it sort of stressed out? <laughs> No! I don't know. It probably knows both routes. It probably goes, well, there's one over here. Oh, there's one over here as well. I'm happy. I've had two for the price of one. Right, and, okay. I'm, and I'm full of leeches. <laughs> <Then> <laughs> what's the best that can happen for like... I don't- what are you talking about? What do you want because out of Because I'm just saying if they could- if they- if by that, if by doing that they can go, right, we can do this, we're humans. I'd go, oh, what do you mean? What do you- what do you mean in the name of Christ? They can't do it what with do you mean? All I'm saying is, what's the point in doing it? Think what- what do you mean? If you could do it with humans, I'd say- But well, what do- what- 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 right, Carl, think about what you're saying, man. Yeah, I'm saying- If you could do it with humans, do what with humans? Say if Einstein, right, didn't do all that maths that he did, right? Say if he got to E equals and then he died. Squash right. his brain, eat, give it to someone else, say, right, eat that, and they go, right, it's E equals MC squared, isn't it? What I'm saying is- But they wouldn't. They'd go, E equals, oh. Wouldn't they? If it was chemical memory, they'd go, oh, E equals, oh, yeah, same as Einstein said. Yeah, I just ate his brain. What am I saying? What are you- <laughs> what have you made? Carl, think what you're saying. It's unbelievable. Uh, it, it, the, the thing is, right, you uh, actually, you, you are what a scientist does. You just keep saying why and what and why and what, but nothing's ever enough for you, which is good 
It's, it's not, nice I, to have I, a discussion. I get annoyed with all the, the amount of time and effort that's put into stuff that's useless. What's the next stage to squashing that leech? <laughs> if, if it's not going anywhere, forget it, work on something else. <laughs> it's the same way in some science magazine I was reading about, <laughs> is there anything smaller than a quantum electron or something? Yeah. It's like, if it's not getting in the way, don't worry about it. <laughs> Why are they worrying about things we can't see? <laughs> if, you just say, if, you, if you blended up Carl's brain and fed it to someone, would it make any difference? No, no, they wouldn't even notice, would they? Would it it would no. You put it to a leech and it's go, oh, I don't know what That's was doing. I was, I don't know what, where was I going? I'm even I was, more confused. I don't know. Talking of leeches, did you see the dregs that they put into Big Brother last I've night? I've not been watching it. It's, I mean, it's bad enough anyway. It's a house full of people you wouldn't cross the road. Yeah. To, to, uh, to save, yeah, right? Yeah. But there's three, they've put in three more to spice up a little bit. They've, they've put in a low esteem model. Sure. Right? They've put in Mr. Bean, who is the whitest man I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a new race. Yeah. He's an see through. And this thing that looks like Matt Lucas in a bikini. Wow. Unbelievable. The f the fat things on her back, I thought she was coming towards me. Really? It was unbelievable. And the first thing she said, she went in, she looked in the mirror, adjusted herself and went, Oh, me minge! <laughs> oh. Oh. It's, that, that's the level, uh, it's un- Do these people have relatives? Do they have- is there anyone in the world who knows them, claims yeah. to be a friend of theirs? Family. Families. Do they have family there or are the well, family yeah. just- no, have they just probably, moved away? No, no. They're probably- their family- like, their family are probably quite proud of them. Because they're on the telly. Oh. It's probably like, uh, saw your daughter last night saying, uh, all we minge on the telly. <laughs> yes, she was on the telly, wasn't she? <laughs> yes, she was on the telly. <laughs> the, the, what about the bit about all we minge? She got one out immediately, went- of course. Got it out, lo lobbed it out. Uh, uh, it's- it, I mean, it's unbelievable. It looks like an experiment. I can't watch it anymore. It's just too much now. These because I I can't relate to those people in the like in the first series. I always remember it was like it seemed like a genuine social experiment. Yeah, exactly. There was intrigue. There was drama. Yeah. It was, it was genuinely great hypnotic television. Now it's like putting ants in a jar and shaking. I don't. It. Yeah. I don't know what's. But even now, I I couldn't watch that once a night every week. Oh, I know. It's just. It's, it is it's unbelievable that, that what they're, what people are willing to do now on the title because they've just put in people. Uh, I mean, it's it, I mean, it's unbelievable. It really is. Unbelievable. You don't you don't care about anyone. But I suppose what what what's good is that you want. You, I think you watch it now because you want one of them to fall over and hurt themselves. Yeah, or just choke on a chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> and no one else in the house knows the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, feed him more chicken. <laughs> Send him more roast chicken. Say we got a wonderful celebration for you. <laughs> Pushing the senses by Feeder on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right. All right. How are you doing, Carl? I'm all right. Yeah. Another yeah. holiday. Well, well, it wasn't holiday. It wasn't holiday. Well, it was. You had, you had five days off work. Why well, isn't it holiday? You had five days not working for a living. You know how many days holiday gets a year now? Twenty nine. Oh. That's it, more than teachers, isn't it? It makes me sick. It makes me sick. Well, I know the kind of hours you work, Rick. <laughs> it's mad. I mean, if you're not in work by midday, you're furious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm always- Tw Twenty-nine's normal. For the normal working person. Yeah, but, you know- And anyway, it wasn't a proper holiday. I went to see my mum and dad. It's nice to see them and everything, but it's not holiday, is it? Why? Right. It's not going away. It's not getting on a plane, is it? Going away. Oh, is that definitely a holiday? What happened before 1950? Hmm. I don't know. People used to go- people, Yeah, exactly. People used to go to Blackpool, Brighton. That was holiday. Yeah, but I didn't Where did you go? Went to Wales. There you go. Lovely holiday. Lovely holiday. Have a holiday in Wales. That's what they say, innit? Have a, have a, come to the Wales and have a holiday. That's <laughs> what they say, innit? But so, come to Wales and meet your parents. Come to Wales and have a lovely holiday. Mm. Well, anyway, it was, uh, it was good and that. It's always good to see them. Yeah. But, um- Week off work. Do you know, do you know, like, my mum likes gnomes and stuff? Yeah. Right, uh, of course she, she does. Said, oh, uh, She's lived with one for thirty years. <laughs> she said, uh, <laughs> you know, get your dad to take us to this uh, to this park where they've got uh, like you know six foot gnomes and stuff. Right, <laughs> have a walk about. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Sounds like a living nightmare. Keep an eye on Carl. <laughs> 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 so anyway. he stood still for two minutes. Someone bought him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you can't buy them and that. It's like a, it's like a little exhibition thing. Yeah. Right? And it's part of a hall. Right, this big hall that you have to pay to get in, but we didn't want to see the hall, I just wanted to see the gnomes. Of course right? you did, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, my dad says, yeah, well, we can, uh, we can get in there for free. Of course he did. Clever. Right? 
So we parked up on this little country lane, right? <laughs> no one about. We How much down. is it going? Like two quid? About three quid each. Yeah. But he said, well, yeah, but if you don't have to pay, do you know I mean? You enjoy it even more, don't you, when you're walking about and you're thinking, I've got this three quid in my pocket, no one's having it. Yeah. Right? Uh, no, looking over shoulder for a bloke with a peak hat saying, can I see your ticket, please? <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it more, no. Go on. Yeah, but you don't worry about it, do you? have got a bit of money now then, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you've changed. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. so we had to walk across about four fields. <laughs> <laughs> for three quid! Right. And, uh, what happened was, uh, uh, we're walking <laughs> through all these fields and what have you, big grass and muddy bits and all that, cause it'd been <laughs> raining, and uh, climbing over fences and stuff. And we're in this field, right, and I look to me right and there's about 30 cows all staring at us, right? And uh, Suzanne started to panic a bit. She said, this isn't, we shouldn't be here. And Dad says, of course we can, we're allowed to go wherever we want, you know, all this land, it's, you know, it's rambler's rights and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, take a cow if, cow if you want, so, unattended. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh... So you might for leaving him in the field unattended, I'm having one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so keep us for a week. Across. Yeah. Anyway, these cows start surrounding us. <laughs> surrounding us? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, brilliant! Oh, no. Face and, off! And Suzanne's panicking, going, this isn't right, he's gonna, we're, we're not gonna make it to the fence in time. They, 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 they're moving faster than us and he started sort of running a bit. Wow. And, uh, it's like something was like, a bovine West Side story. Don't- <laughs> A gang of cows <laughs> coming at you. Don't worry about it and stuff. But, uh, my dad had to sort of stand there and, like, w wave a stick at him. Of course. And, and, uh, and we got away, but Suzanne was, like, having a bit of a sweat <laughs> and you on. got away. And saying, uh, you know, we could have got killed. Sure. And my dad's saying, nah, it never happens. And <laughs> I just wondered if, if it does, if, if there's a risk of- Yeah, it's, it is rare, but, um, there's been a couple of cases of- being trampled by cows. They're not aggressive, they sort of run through you. Well, they, they're aggressive if they've got a calf. They uh, have a, ca a, a, a what? They had kids with them. Kids, yeah. That's a, that's a goat you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were trying to sneak into the no <laughs> thing, and they were worried that, like, if too many people did it, like, they've got some cows, we can just sneak in. Yeah. No one's expecting cows. And the cows are going, walk upright like you're a Cuban. <laughs> Don't walk up hard. <laughs> they thought you'd blow their cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, people have been killed by cows before. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that was like the highlight and then, uh... So when you arrived there, you were presumably covered in mud, looking like something that had just come from Glastonbury, staggering around this, this uh, it exhibition. Wasn't that, it wasn't that bad, it was just like a, a woods and it had like a, a funny sort of funeral pla- uh, like a graveyard thing. Right. Yeah. With bodies sort of hanging out the ground and that and, uh... Really? What? These six foot gnomes. Right. Uh, and then we, we just set off again, walked back. But we sure this wasn't a dream? Field. No, it was good, it was good. But then, then I got back, right, Steve, and, uh, called up Ricky, I said, right, uh, you know, are you about? Have a chat and that. So he said, oh, I'll just come round, it's a, it's a nice day. Have a drink and what have you. So I got round there at about half past six, right? Uh, go up to his door, knock on his door, right? He stood there with his tackle out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what, what did you make of that? What was wrong with that? What do you mean, what's wrong with Why that? Why were you looking at it? it? Why were you looking at it? I tried not to look at it. <laughs> but again, you're always sort of attracted to it, aren't you? Kind of like... <laughs> I've never been attracted to another man's tackle. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you can't help but have a, have a little sly look. Well, especially when it's there. When you, when you ring the bell, and I mean the, the one on the door, right? <laughs> and that's, that's hanging out. <laughs> And does he dress to the left or the right? It was to the left, right? Yeah, it was left, yeah. Just popped, just popped it out of my shorts. <laughs> or him, just popped him out of the shorts. Should've seen the state of him. <laughs> shorts on, no top, a uh, cigar. <laughs> Not like someone out of the Sopranos. <laughs> it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we, we sat on the balcony drinking wine, didn't we? Did you pop it back in or was it straight Yeah, I, put, I popped it straight back in. I've got the laugh. Sure. I've got the laugh that yeah. I wanted. Yeah. He walked in and he went, mm, it's not that hot. Straight away, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hot. Oh, brilliant. Then, uh, was that knob news or was there more? No, it's got more knob news. That's just a taster. There. Just a taster. Listen, let's play some average, let's play some great music and maybe we should have some early knob news. Early knob news coming up. Landed by Ben Folds on XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've had a couple of emails, Rick, um, saying that 
there have been reports of people actually being killed by cats. Yeah. So it is actually quite a lucky escape for Carl and his uh, family. The worrying thing about that is it's tragic and you know, anyone dying uh, unexpectedly, uh, it, it, it's terrible. But the, the, what makes it worse is when it's something like being killed by cows, because mm. there's a slight, I mean, a slight humour aspect. Yeah. Being, uh, only killed, killed by a cow. Yeah. Um, you know, like for example, if you were killed by a falling safe. Yeah. The, f the vicar might laugh. Yes. That's my worry. Yeah. Well, I read a story in the paper of a man who, um, fell out of a window and died. He fell out of like, he was like a third story of window and he fell out. But it was slightly amusing because at the time he was mooning. I know. For a laugh, he was mooning someone and he fell out. I know. So when he, when he fell, like, even though it was tragic, he obviously had his trousers around his ankles and his arse out. I know, the thing, there was a kid who died, got hit by a truck mooning. But the, yeah. you know, the worst thing like that is, it's not funny enough to be killed for. No. Mooning no. isn't funny enough. No, it's just not a good enough gag. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a, it's a witless sort of thing to do, and yeah. then to be killed for it. If you just done a two-hour impromptu Eddie Izzard-style, you know, yeah. routine, and then you got tra I know. tragically killed, that would sort of make sense. But, but doing something that's a Mooning, little bit... it's almost karmic, because it's such a bad joke. Yeah, it's like exactly. It's some weird universal karmic way. It's like, if you hadn't been mooning, you maybe you wouldn't have got killed. I know. If you hadn't done such a lame joke, Maybe you'd be okay. Yeah, but that's it. D d d but know. there's lots, yeah, you don't want to be walking along, you know, you don't want to be walking through the garden and, hit, and stand on a rake and it flips up. And it hits you so of, hard. And it's like a boing noise, is it? Yeah, and you. it hits you so hard that it kills that it you. It kills you, yeah. Uh, that, uh, or you fall out of a window and a, and a cactus goes up your bum. You I don't know, want you're that. killed by it's a cactus up the arm. I know. <laughs> or <laughs> you're at a concert and a fat woman stouts dives. Yeah. And she just Land squashes you. Yeah. Squ how did he die? He was squashed by a big hefty. Mama Cass just jumped on him. Just big <laughs> fat woman squashed him to death. Yeah. So you are. Tell you what though, what? right? Uh, talking about fat women. Go on. Um, well, I'm not having a go. What? <laughs> did you see Michelle McManus on? Uh, oh, man yeah. Alive. yeah. You are what you eat. What yeah. are you eating? <laughs> Girls allowed. <laughs> Look it out. <laughs> It was unbelievable. <laughs> no, but to be fair, you know, she did. Did you see her in her bikini one? Yeah, well, yes, but she was always a little bit. Yeah, but I can't do it a little bit. Well, no, she eats too much, right? But what I did like about it was that she had a go, you know, she did lose it. hard and that, yeah. Huh? I quite liked her at the end of it, really. Yeah, she's, she's not an unpleasant it. woman. She's a lovely woman. But, yeah. I mean, mm. like I said before, there was that interview in the Heat magazine where she, you know, I tend to eat 11 packets of Doritos a night. Yeah. 11 pa- I mean. Yeah. Come on, Michelle. Yeah. That's too much, isn't it? Unless you're trying to win some kind of competition, <laughs> like trying to find some kind of, you know, a golden ticket in one of the packets. There's no yeah. excuse. What could you, what could you possibly be trying to win to but, eat those oh. every day? But she, it's not, it, it wasn't her who annoys me, it's that doctor in it, that woman, she does me head in. Yeah. I can't be doing with her the way, uh, well, she, you know, she's not actually officially a doctor. Is no, she? and her bedside manner's not very good either. No, it's like the, the fear tactic. That I, I think you want a little bit. And, of... and what does she look like? I mean, she doesn't look like the sort of peak of health. She's no, got that weird sort of witch-like crone well, face. Can't I be know. good for you hanging about all that poo all the time. She's always delving into <laughs> that every day. <laughs> I used yeah. to be told, you know, n don't mess about with dog poo because it can make you go blind. Yeah, it's constantly at it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, You're inching through it, and it annoys me the way it's like. You know, well, let's have a look at your poo. Let's see if you're eating the wrong types of food. The person's about 33 stone. Yeah. It's obvious. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't need to look at that. It just yeah. wind. And, and I'll tell you the thing that, I mean, I'd never have it done anyway, right? But the, uh, the colonic thing. Well, did Michelle have that? I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. Done. And they shown it. She sat there sort of lying down. She's like, oh. But I don't understand. Why people have that done anyway? Unless you unless you are sort of bunged up. Yeah, or you've got a cactus up there. Or, <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is like the way um, like it's a, a clear tube. Why why do you need to? You know what I mean, why do you need to see what's missing past? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like it's some sort of generation game. <laughs> you've got to yeah. you've gotta remember, you what's got to remember past. everything. Then you win a prize. Yeah. Why can't they just look at it in the bucket after and go right? Yeah. Well, why look at it at all? Why do you need to look at it? Well, it's out well, of interest, isn't it? See what's see what's come out. I don't know. So yeah, that's where that went. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why I've been looking for that remote control. Uh, how does it work? I don't want to go into graphic detail, but they they just send water up there. Don't no they? caffeine. Caffeine. Yeah, so it's like a big, it's like a gallon of coffee. Wow. It goes up there, and it wants to come out immediately, obviously, and then it it percolates. But when did that happen? How did someone sort of go? Tell you what you want to do. I think it was on first invented on distraction. To win a car, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do I? I suppose they just want, they thought there's stuff up there that's not coming out. It's for 
Yeah, they, they find, find things, things up there. Though, they, they, they did that thing that they find things up there that they swallowed when they were five and that, don't they? Lego yeah. bricks and stuff. Exactly, yeah, marbles. But I mean, meats and things is, can stay in there for, you know, it gets, it gets caught in a little, you know, a little recess in your, in your thirty foot of tubing. And, um, it, uh, yeah. it doesn't come out. Talking of meats, I saw an advert on the way in today. Question to both of you, who eats pepperoni? I don't know. Have you ever eaten a pepperoni? It's di uh, uh, disgusting. I do. I've, I've never seen anyone eating a pepperoni, buying one. I've uh, never heard anyone say delicious pepperoni earlier. Yeah? I just, I, I don't associate it but I know, but with I've anyone. Heard, I've but never seen anyone eating one. When you one. think what is it, just sort of like, um, uh, curdled, uh, salt, salty, it's sort of like, um, oh, do you want to try a big long blood bogey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I won't, no. It lasts forever. Oh, that's scary then. Yeah. You just keep, keep it. Well, it's like keep it, keep, it, keep it under your couch, it, 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 it just as nice in a year's time. <laughs> it does look like something you'd find down the back of the oven when you were cleaning out. One of those Gordon Ramsay documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, oh. cause it's like, I always associate, it's pepperonis and it's the, uh, those nutrition drinks, which are like a, it's like a, it looks like a, a dog food tin. I think it's just called something like nu nutrition or nutri drink or something. Oh, yeah. And you always see some empty ones on a brick wall near a council estate. Oh, right. Uh, which I found, I think the only people who eat them are homeless people. Um, oh, I really? Like, I, I, like I, I, I thought you were saying it's bodybuilders. No, 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 it's because you buy these, you can see them in, um, in, in regular news agents. It's not a body. I don't believe, stuff. I don't believe a homeless who's just got a quid because she runs in and, and buys uh, an isotonic and you no, it's, not, it's not isotonic, no, it's, it's, it, I think it's basically, it, if you don't want to eat a meal because you're too high on smack, it'll give you as much as you can possibly need oh just right. to keep you alive until your next hit. And tell me, Steve, does the special brew do that? Or am I barking up the wrong tree <laughs> I don't that? know, I don't know. Because they seem to be getting a lot of nutrition from special me, the, brew. The people who make special brew now, they've just, they've just resigned to the fact that it's only homeless people who are drinking it. It's like, well, <laughs> We may as well just market it chiefly at them. What's, what's the advertising? Takes the edge off when you can't <laughs> yeah, find smack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, <laughs> you, are you trying to sleep on Tottenham Court Road? <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> New Order, World, XFM 104.9 with Javay Steve Richard Carl Pilkington. Uh, and it's Nob News time. We're all very excited. Now, last week's Nob News was what, Carl? Do you remember it was a man? Who grew a knob on his arm? Sure. No, he didn't grow it there, did he? He put it there. Well, I know that, but, yeah. Just popped it on his arm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Just a recap, that's just a recap of the week's news. <laughs> yeah. Right now it's the headlines. Well, we've right talked, we've talked about it before. Do you know the, uh, the little mouse that had an ear on its back? Yeah, sure. Right. Well, um, you thought he had a bad time, right? Listen to this one. Mouse walking about. With us, uh, sort of wearing a, uh, a monkey's testicle. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having a laugh. <clears throat> this is what I mean about a lot of scientists. <laughs> what are they doing? When's that gonna come in handy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean! Well, they were seeing if, um, you know, say if a fella loses one, right? Yeah. Hitler, Hitler or whatever. <laughs> and they go, well, don't worry about it, we can sort you out. Uh, I don't know what the monkey's gonna do. Not unless they keep passing them on or whatever. But the, the actual monkey testicle yeah. was put on the mouse, um, and it worked. It worked for the mouse. But, but isn't it, I mean, isn't a, a monkey's testicle quite large in, in relation to a mouse? Would it not look like the mouse was on a space hopper or something? Oh yeah, it didn't look good. Well, right. they, didn't put, they didn't put it where its testicles would be. No, they did. But they put it, well, how could it walk then? The ear was on his back, so he could just get about. Well, I don't know. But well, you don't know, do you? You just guessed. No, did no. they grow the, t did they grow the monkey's testicles where the mouse well, testicles would- Well, it looked stupid anywhere else though, wouldn't it? Oh, whereas a mouse with monkey testicles, that's fine. Oh, I'd, you'd be showing off. You'd be alright, I'd prefer that than the ear. When that mouse gets put <laughs> back in with the other mice, do the other mice go, George, you look different, have you had anything done? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but the weird thing is, as well, apparently it still works as a monkey. What? So, like, what are you the, talking about? Like the, you know, the, uh, the sperm and that. Was uh, it was still sort of monkey? monkey well, of course, thing. it was. What do you? T what are you talking about? Well, that's weird. But but what? Are you Carl, what? But what? Do you, it, it's only a, it's only a, a thing to give it nutrients. That's all the thing they're testing. It's like grafting at that level. It, 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 right. What's your question? Because I'm, I'm right. What do you think? It would change eventually. It would have changed into a mouse testicle because it had been hanging round a mouse for so long. No, I thought the actual sperm of it, though, would be a mouse's. Why? 
Because it's hang- it's, it's hanging off a mouse. No, but the- but it's- but your sperm is actually created in the testicles. So- so- That's why they, that's why it has to be outside your body, otherwise we put them in a nice little cage but and I'm, ge- I'm guessing then that they've done this operation so that they can do it to humans. Yeah? Why would I want a monkey testicle if my kids are gonna be monkeys? What use is it? No, think! That's- that's- no, no. The- the- That's what happened anyway, Carl. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but think. Think of what we're saying. They've grown a monkey testicle on a mouse to see if it would still function as a monkey's testicle, okay? So they can do that to humans. So think, Carl. What they'd do is, they'd grow a human testicle on a mouse and it could still be used as a human testicle. So what? To give you a testicle that you've lost. From a- from a mouse? No, from another person who-, who it was kept alive on a mouse. Because it's kept the nutrients alive, as opposed to keeping it in a deep freeze. Maybe bollocks go off after a week. I don't know. Maybe they get accidents. Can you, he had a little a, a card. Do you donate your testicles yet? Yeah, I'll tell you what. No one needs testicles yet. Let's keep them on a mouse. You you have yours ripped off in a, in some sort of bizarre skiing accident. You go well. Uh, you go into you go to Battersea Dog Town. <laughs> you pick the ones you want. They can grow them on anything. They can grow them on a dachshund. Bulldogs are growing them usually. Are usually that's where you see a bulldog. Usually that's waiting for an upright. What don't you understand, Carl? Hang on a minute. Is what I thought this was knob news, not well, testicle time. I don't well, understand what. Yeah, this testicle time's not for another ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. all it's all sort of it linked and that though, isn't it? Well, um, sometimes, sometimes it's linked to a mouse. But do you? I mean, what what do you think about like I don't know testing stuff out like that? Is it worth? Is it worth it? Could, could you not just go straight from? But listen, Carl, I'm getting this information from you. No, it's, it's if this it's was right. on Question Time and someone said there were, you know, Dimbleby and Paxman or whoever said it, I'd think about it as a moral dilemma. You've just said you saw a mouse with a monkey testicle. What do you think of that? I don't think <laughs> any of it. I don't think anything of it is the answer, Carl, because I can't trust the info. I cannot trust anything that comes out of your mouth. Well, it's, it's true, but it's just all this. It's the same thing, and it? it's the leeches in a blender. It's the fella looking at an electron. Yeah. It's it's the mouse with an ear on its back. Yeah. I don't know what the point is. But you don't read on, because I've <laughs> seen you read somewhere, and you go and look at that. Man survives on eating knee. And I uh, go, what else? You go, I didn't read on. I didn't read on. You look at the mouse with the ear on the back, and you just think that must be murder at a concert. You don't think? <laughs> you don't yeah. think? No, yeah. I, just, I just think, don't think is, it, is it worth sort of wasting? You all think? The... You think he swallowed someone's ear? He gnawed it away and <laughs> swallowed it, and it's just in his system. <laughs> yeah. No, I just get a bit sad about the the mice. And I that. agree. I mean, that that is sad. Yeah. I mean, of course, anything that is is awful. Well, saying that, I remember ages ago they, they have a load of people on uh, on Oxford Street. Don't know if you've seen them where they, they get you to sign stuff. Yeah. And the the woman got annoyed with me, right? Because she was saying about, uh, you know, drugs with animals, testing them out and stuff yeah. like that, which is bad. Yeah. But and I was saying, yeah, it's really bad. And I was looking at the pictures and that. But I said, what would happen, you know, if if, if like the drugs, aspirin, and the monkey's got headache? <laughs> is it such a bad thing? <laughs> she got annoyed. Didn't want to <laughs> listen anymore. <laughs> It's a good point, though, isn't it? <laughs> At what point is it cruel to test stuff out and things? Yeah. Give it some neurofen. <laughs> it's happy. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I bet that here, I bet that mouse had, um, headache. Because everything so. must have been loud. The other, just the other mice squeaking must have done its head in. Yeah. Oh, that would give Turn him a neurofen. Turn that radio down. <laughs> give him a neurofen, please. But listen, are we gonna get, uh, Rockbusters out of the way quickly? Go on then, quickly. Then. Give us a clue. It's, it's not gonna take long, is it? Go right on. then. Yeah. So, uh, three clues and that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, initials of a band and artist. Yeah. You can win some stuff. Steve yeah. can go through the- t- Ladder 49 better be in there. Oh, look at this quickly, uh, right It's Ladder 49. You get on with those clues and I'll tell you what's happening. And this is the last time, the winner of this- No, we'll do it again next week. Oh, is it? And then yeah, there'll yeah, be yeah, six people and we just draw someone out of a hat to win the- the signed Homer, the, yeah. uh, Nigel Tufnell. And the us as for animals. Right, you're ready. But they've got great prizes. They've got Alias. They've got. They have. They've got Alias. They've got the Aviator, uh, a Batman cartoon series, M Night Shyamalan's The Village, uh, atrocious film, and Ladder Forty Nine. There it is. It's brilliant, yeah. in there. Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta. Their greatest challenge lies in rescuing one of their own. Brilliant. Go right. on, Carl. Right, the first one then. Uh, when I'm ill, I throw up horse food. 
when I'm ill, I throw up horse food. How can that work? What's going on there? The init initials there, I H, right? It's a band or an artist, a singer, something like that. I H, they're, they're the initials, the clue. I've got it. When I'm ill, I throw up horse food, right? I've got it. Right then, well, don't say anything. Works, doesn't it? No. Mm. <laughs> Second one, uh, that garden tool, it's not yours, what are you doing with it? Right? Yeah. That garden tool you're messing about with, eh? It's not yours. Yeah. Give it back. Right? What's that? N D. N D. Right? Artist or a band. What's going on there? Right? <laughs> Third one. <laughs> that male sheep sounds fed up. Why is he fed up? Right? <laughs> T R. T R is the initials. That male sheep sounds fed up. What's going on? If you know the answers to them three, uh, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk or you can text in 83xfm. Right? Great prizes. You can win yourself a copy of Ladder 49. <laughs> <laughs> Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM 104.9. All right, Carl, you calm down now about science. Oh, I'm just, it, it just does me head in a lot of this stuff. I yeah. think I would have been better off sort of growing up in the 1940s or something. Why? Yeah, well, there isn't as much science going on. People just live, <laughs> don't they, for the moment. So you'd, I mean? you'd, well, what if you'd had to go to war? What? what right, if you'd, maybe you'd... 1945 then I'd be happier. Just after the war. <laughs> just that bit after the war and before they started what messing age? about. What, what, what year would you want to be born? When was the war over? 45. Right. 46 then. But there's be, there'd be rationing. There's rationing for another ten years. 56 then. Just, but there's a lot of science going on. Oh, in forget it. <laughs> 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 I just, I just, it, it just annoys me all the messing about. They're always messing about with stuff and I sometimes think, is it doing any good? Is what I mean. Um, mouse with ears, mouse with monkey's testicles. They're messing about with a mammoth now. Go on. Well, they're just saying, well, they, they, they're managing to knock one together. <laughs> <laughs> and you just think, some, some scientists somewhere are <laughs> just messing Andy, up. Andy. No, but it's just, uh, do we need, do you know, I mean, we've done it before about the do we need them thing. The amount of creatures and insects and that, that are knocking about. You've got that <laughs> caterpillar that I mentioned walking about, it doesn't know where it's going. Get rid of them. The mammoth. The world's busy enough, it's crowded, it's overcrowded now. How, how much room are they gonna take up? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why are they enjoying it, Carl? Do you know? You've got, you just, all you know is that they're, they're trying because, to muck around with Because they can, mammoth. because that's all it is, isn't it? Because they can. They're messing about. Someone's yeah. being paid to do stuff. What else are we here for? If not to try stuff out. What else are we here for? What do you mean? Well, what are we here for? Just to enjoy life, isn't it? Well, well that's like some scientists enjoy knocking a mammoth together. No, but don't, don't worry about the mammoth. It died out, maybe it died out for a reason. Why didn't Noah say that if it was, if it was important? Because Noah, that's, that's not, that's, that, uh, what did you mean? Noah's not true, is it? Well, I don't know, there might have been some truth in it. What, what truth in it? That he put two of every animal that existed into an ark. How big was this then? Why didn't they eat each other? Yeah, I know, I'm not saying- Imagine the noise, Carl. Yeah. No, but there's, 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 there. there's points to that where I go, that didn't happen, because where could he have been where there was a hamster and an elephant and a- <laughs> you know, a, a crocodile. Where was he? Do you know what I mean? That's true. What bit do you believe? What do you mean? It got a bit wet. What? What? What are we talking about? The mammoth or the? No, no. What? What is up with you? No, it's just that we uh, had no, a lot. No, seriously, have you got brain damage? No, you, it's just that we had a lot of topics going on there. I just don't know which. You no, know, we were like. talking about Noah. And then you suddenly go, oh, I, I, I know where it was. Where did we? Da, 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 da. What? The mammoth or Noah? What? What is it? None of it's true. What? Uh, think of it. Who to, uh, oh, God. Think of the first thing. Build an ark. Build. All right. <laughs> Can I just, just clarify? What's an ark? It's a, it's a big boat thing. Right. Yes. I just, I've never had any experience of carpentry. Just build a big boat thing. But I don't, I'm not really, I don't make... Just have a go. Don't worry. You'll be all right. I'll make right. sure it's all right. But what, once I've built that, I mean, yeah. how big should I build it? What am I Very going to big. It needs every animal. Two Ooh, of every animal. Go there. on. Every animal. I'm in the boat building, fair enough. I make it, I told you to make it big. Right. Don't worry about the fish, they can swim. Okay, but so All the, the birds. Like, get the flightless ones though, they're drown. Get, get the flightless ones, they would, not the penguins, they're flightless but they can swim. But all other animals- I should be writing this down. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh. Why, why, I mean, wouldn't you have took that opportunity to go right, you know, forget the, uh, you know, whatever. Man, you the jellyfish didn't need to get in it, did it? But, but there's other animals <laughs> where you can We go, don't need to be here. No. Because Carl is actually having a little argument with his own head. <laughs> yeah. there's, it's like, you remember that comic strip, The Numbskulls? <laughs> yeah. Where there's loads of people in there doing different stuff, that he can hear them. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes his own mind puts him off. <laughs> yeah. Like just then, he has an argument with himself and it puts him off. <laughs> right, what's your question? I'm just saying, don't mess about with a mammoth. Whoa! Good. Okay. Well, what a platform, it's good. You know, we've got a radio show, we've got our own radio show. <laughs> people are spending money to advertise it, people are actually bothering to listen, and you- oh. the, what, the, wor the words of wisdom coming out of your mouth is don't mess around with a mammoth. Brilliant. Great. No, but- just- just going back to- You sound like, just like Bob Galgoff. Oh. Uh, I can't be bothered with this. He's trying to say- What? What can't you be bothered with? Just because I think I've got a good point. What? Don't mess around with a mama. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's not a point. Don't put your daughter on the stage, missing work. Well, what are you talking about? It's just that I think there's too many animals knocking about. I mean, I know you love your cat and what have you. Waste of time now. What do they do? <laughs> well, they frighten you. Well, yours is mental, though, isn't it? He's sitting there, and the cat right behind him, and he nearly shut himself. Well, your cat is crazy. It does go through. It it loves. Cause it's got claws, big old claws. Of course it? they have. It's a cat. Yeah, but though most cats don't come leaping at your ghoulish every time you sit down <laughs> with a lovely warm hot cup of tea. Aren't they pointless, though, Steve? <laughs> Well, I've, I've always had a problem with pets, generally. The yeah, but pets. cats the most. I, I was saying to Ricky about, I don't know why, out of all the animals that Dick Whittington could have took with him on his journey. Again! Yeah. Forget the cat. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, well, okay, okay, you've got to walk to London because the, the streets are paved with gold. You can take any animal. What do you take? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a cat because it would keep wandering off. You do double the distance. <laughs> Try to get it back. Come here. They don't listen to you. It's point, I, I can't be dealing with them. I agree that you don't get enough affection back from a cat. Oh. A dog, it loves you, it can't get enough of you. But cats, they're very, they're very snooty. Well, they're cool, aren't they, cats? They're cool, independent. I like dogs as well, I like all animals. What would you take with you? What, if I was Dick Whittington? Yeah. And where's he walking from? Like, <laughs> I don't know, wasn't it Bristol to London or something? I don't know. Uh, Again, it's a bit hazy. <laughs> this isn't well documented. But did, couldn't he, I mean, why is he taking a pet and not a mate who... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested. I try and learn, and you don't help. As a track from the new Amy Mann album, The Forgotten Arm, it's called She Really Wants You. XFM 104.9, Wicked Face, Steam Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Talking about, uh, technology, sometimes being a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, th when you came round the other night, before you came round, I'm sitting there, just at the computer, it's a hot day, wasn't it? I was, as you know, I was in my shorts. I was tucked in. I was. I didn't get them out till you came round. Just my own business. Jane got some wax strips, and she went, "Oh, let me just do your back." I went, "No, no, no." Right. I'm not. I haven't got a hairy back. I've got a couple of wispy hairs on my shoulders. Probably about twenty either side. No, don't worry about. It's not like I look one of those people that's like a, a gorilla on the beach. I right? assume your back looks a little bit like Carl's head. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and she went, "Let me just do this." I went, "No." She put it on my back, and she ripped it off. I went, "Forget it." She went, "I've got to do the other side now." I said, "Forget it." I, and I, uh, oh god, I let it to the other side, it's ridiculous, it's so painful, and I've hardly got any airs on the back, right? So, uh, it made me think of something that I'd heard about. There's a thing that you can do, and I don't know why, for people who are really hairy backs, and people who are hairy all over, mm. okay, called back, crack, and sack. They do your back, and there's, you know there's some people that do look like little monkeys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. They do your back, they do your ass crack, and they do your balls. Oh. In that order. Oh, <laughs> that order. <laughs> again! Always a question that doesn't matter. No, it, it does, because what I'm saying is, is it done from the top all the way down? It's not done in one! What do you think? This is huge 30 foot band aid type thing that you're wrapped in and then pulled. It's done a little bit at a time, isn't it? Right, well, again, it still matters. Which what? order? Because right. if it hurts your back, it's definitely <laughs> going to hurt the sack. That's what I'm saying. I, I think. What, what is it called? Back, crack, crack and sack. sack, or sack, crack and back? No, it's called back, crack. I, oh, I don't know. It's probably a marketing person said we've got it in order. You could probably choose which order you want them in. Carl. It's back, crack and sack. Uh, it should be sack, sack, crack, back. Definitely, it should be sold like that. Why? Because, like I say, if you're if you're lying there, look, you've had half of your back done. If yeah. you went, oh, forget it, 
Yeah. Right? There is no way you're gonna have the sack done. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No. I'm sorry, I wouldn't have the crack and well, sack done anyway. I don't know why people I'm are not gonna have it. a back done. It doesn't need doing. Where are people going where they've got to worry about the, the condition of the sack? <laughs> At what event do you go to and you go, oh, I've got to look sharp. I've got I've got to look the part today. I don't know. The sack done. Nudists? No, because they're about being natural and that, isn't it? Normally they are airy, like that woman on holiday. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> women are, the men aren't. No, I don't know. Yeah, they all they all are sort of pretty airy. They believe in just leaving the body as it is. I think I think little gay fellas like love it, don't they? they don't, why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you a little gay fella and you've had it done? Yeah, or text just, it. just text in. What's the text thing? Uh, Eighty three XFM. Just text in. You know, tell us uh, tell us what. I don't know. Do we need? Is there any information that we're missing? Is it painful? I assume so. Of course it is. Uh, why? Yeah. Why? Why did Why did you get it done? That's that's the question. Why did you get it done? Yeah, why yeah. is it important to have a hairless arse? <laughs> Touring breaks on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, Carl Pilkington. Carl, are we doing your uh, story with the song? Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Well, excited about it. Right, last what was it the other week? We did uh, Babushka. Did Babushka? Yeah. Um, pinball Wizard. You said if he's deaf, dumb, and blind, he doesn't even know he's playing pinball, which is. <laughs> I just said, don't, don't <laughs> go <laughs> putting money in it. That's all I'm saying. Let him play pinball, but don't waste twenty p or whatever. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, <laughs> This week, right? Do you know how I was saying? It is a good point, actually. It is a good point. Again, though, it wasn't a documentary. It was what? just. It's, it's not. Didn't really happen. Yeah. Well, do you know how I was saying? Sometimes I listen to song. I, I like a song to be obvious what it's saying. Pinball Wizard was a good song. You need a song to be obvious. Uh, in the ghetto, you know, it's a kid growing up and in all that ghetto, rough yeah. area gets killed for nicking cars and messing with guns and that. Uh, mm. Living in the city, growing up in New York, rough area, how you cope with it and that, right? Mm. But they've got to be as simple as that. Otherwise, okay. I'm not that I've happy. I've got a brand new combine harvester. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, about like the machine. It's brand new. Yeah. It's brand new. But, it's even though it's new, he's willing to lend it out to other people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I mean is, if you start trying to be clever, yeah. the, the story's lost on you, innit? Not, 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 not necessarily me or Rick, but yeah, sure. Go on, on, on. We, we know what you mean. Go on. On primates, yeah. Well, this, <laughs> this song here, right, it's not an XFM song, you'll probably hate the song, to be honest. Go on, what is it? What's the song? Yeah. It's Wonderful Tonight. Right? Eric Clapton. Okay, it's alright. Right. It's, it's a, a, it's a, it's sort, a of sort of bluesy it. sort of ballad from the late 70s. Yeah, it's alright. But I'm always arguing with Suzanne, because every time I hear it, I'm getting different pictures in my head. Yeah. Of, like, what's going on, right? Okay. And I'm convinced it's about, like, this little cripple fella in a wheelchair, right? And he's knocking about with his wife. Mm. And we don't say cripple anymore, do we, Steve? Do we say cripple? I, I don't think we've said that since, um... Seven years? I think this is seven years when we stopped. All mm. right. Mm. Little, just a little fella in a wheelchair then. Okay. Um, and the story, it's all sort of, uh, mm. you know, how he's, how he's being pushed about by his by Again, his wife. No, that's not literally. By his wife, she's wheeling him about. What do you mean? He's wheeling him about. They go to a party. Everyone sort of looks round and looks at him. What makes you think? What makes you think that he's in a wheelchair? What's the clues? What's the words? There's, there's loads of little things. It's like, uh, that, well, like I say, uh, something about his wife walking around with me and all that. Well, of course she is. She's pushing him about. But whoa, 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 whoa. walking around. If someone said, "Oh, she was walking around with me," I'd think they were both walking around. There's a few. Th there's a few. But that's not. Well, well, there must be another. There must be a reason why you suddenly thought that fella's in a wheelchair. Right. Is my wife's walking around with me? Put on your makeup. Da 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 you know, just just everything that's being said. Okay. Understand why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. No, never. Is that it? Yeah, there's no but, clue. But, but the thing is, that's that's what I'm picturing. But that doesn't mean it happened. You picture people that are half man, half moth. It doesn't mean it's possible. Do you know what I mean, Carl? What you what you think is usually not true. Suzanne is totally right. There is no reason. I have never ever thought that Eric Clapton was singing about a little fella in a wheelchair. 
And the one clue in that, that's true, isn't it? Are you alright? Well, let me say that, Lord Cripple. <laughs> right, and, uh, uh, I'll give her the car keys. Oh, well, why's oh, she God. driving? You've got any legs. Pushing them around and that. No, 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 pushing them around. Well, uh, so we'll do one more next week then. Okay. Jack Johnson on XFM, uh, Carl. Right. Yeah, you were gonna, you were, we were talking briefly earlier about something that you'd been reading. Well, it's just that you're always having a go at me saying, you know, you're never happy. Uh, True. you know, what, what cheers you up, what, what, what's the best thing that can happen for you and stuff like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I have never said to you what's the best thing that can happen for you. No, no, but- I'm like trying Steve's, to encourage you. Steve's oh yeah, and, and you have a bit. I've started reading more and, and I'm doing more science stuff, even though some of it does me head in, like I say, knowledge is almost annoying. <laughs> right, knowing about that mammoth is annoying. Think about being a quote. Yeah. Think that if I have seen further, it's because I stood on the shoulder of giants, we will fight them on the beaches, E equals MC squared, knowledge is annoying. Yeah. That's an amazing one. Carl Pilkington, 2005. No, but it can get you down, can't it? Knowing, knowing stuff that's going on. Yeah, knowing stuff. But sometimes anyway. I don't want stuff in my head. When I read a horrible story or someone tells me, I, I wish I didn't know it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, that's all I'm saying. But, at the same time, there was something in the paper about, uh, things to do before you die. And it was just stuff that I sort of looked at, I thought, don't want to do that, cross that off, not bothering with that. Uh, at number one, you always know what's at number one, it's the same thing every time. Swim with dolphins. Yeah. Don't know why. <laughs> R do you want to do that? What's going on down there that it's so good? What do I we not know. know about? I mean, yeah, it'd be, it'd be fun. I'd, I'd love to, uh, sort of encounter most animals, to be honest. I mean, there's be a few animals on the top of the list. I'd rather hang out with a bunch of chimps. I wonder oh, if I it's- I wonder if it's- you're down there with dolphins and you're swimming with them and then they- they sort of- they- they click away, click, click, click. And they tell you a they, secret. They, you go into like a- they lead you into a cave, right? But down there, it's like- it's like being at like Rolling Stones house in the 1970s. It's they're like- smoking. There's, there's drink, there's women, yeah, they there's don't bars, tell bars. Them. There's like, um- They're eating tuna, they're loving tuna. They're loving it, but they can speak, they go, oh, this clicking stuff, it's nonsense. We're yeah. in a wild time then, go berserk, go crazy, it's 24 hours of non-stop debauchery. I think it's spiritual, But isn't never it, mention it to anyone else. It's incredible, cause you know they're so intelligent and, uh, you know. Do you know, do, do you know about dolphins though, that, how, how intelligent they are? Well, people keep saying that, but what, what have they done? You know what I mean? Why, what, what has someone done that they've gone, this you know, the, uh, I've read a book. By a dolphin or whatever. What what have they done? That makes them so bright. It's the same way they go. You know, they, they look after you, they save you, and that. There's got to be one badden in that bunch. Of course they. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't suggesting they're all flipper. I was just there constantly going round the the oceans trying to save people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're intelligent. You know. In what way? What do you mean in what way? Well, what do what you, you mean? mean why do- th th because why they pass tests- Why saying they're bright? Because of the things they can achieve and learn like and- Like what? And, well, they can- they can tell shapes, objects, colours. Mm. This is- sorry, Carl, I mean they're no match for you. So, no, they're not as clever as you, they're way down this that. But it's all relative, isn't it? From a- for a non-human, they're doing okay. They're up there with chimps, you know. So what do you want to do before you die? Uh, Anything, any achievements you want to have? Well, if I'm ill, I'd prefer to go to the doctors than to go with the dolphins. Yeah. Why are you suddenly ill? It's not, they don't, when they say things to do before you die, they don't literally mean the sort of, the day before. They mean you croak, <laughs> that you want to experience life. You can do it over the next 20 years. Is that years. what you thought you meant? Like, literally Is the that 24 what you hours meant? before Like you a die. priest there going, Ah, 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 give me the lift. <sighs> what is it, Grandad? Dolphins! You know, no fit state, Grandad. Get me in the water! Get me down to Brighton! What do you think that list means? Well, yeah, that, you know, before you die. You're incredible, Carl. Amazing. You're inc all this time. <laughs> things to do before you die. That's why he doesn't want to do any of them. Didn't you think it was a bit extraordinary that so you had to swim with dolphins and visit Disneyland well, and climb Mount Kilimanjaro all in the same afternoon? You, that's, that's why I said to you, I would be in no mood for a dip. <laughs> <laughs> What, That's incredible! Always a new twist on things. Always a new twist on things. But you say about travelling and that, you, you like travelling and stuff, but what, 
Why? Because I've seen and experienced extraordinary things. You know, I went to Kenya once. I met a man who was a, a, a vigilante. He was cleaning up his neighbourhood because the police were too corrupt to do it. Carried a sword, and you know, he was extraordinary. He just he, he'd been attacked, but he didn't care. He fought them off. He was he was trying in, the, in this little slum area to try and b instill some law and order. He had to arrest his uh, brother-in-law once. It was a fascinating story, and he was an it's extraordinary man. I, I went to Manchester and I saw two lads with big heads and webbed feet looking at a house. There was a horse in the living room. I mean, that's I living. Leave it, leave it, man. Listen, I didn't realise it's like seven minutes too, right? Well, come on then. Well, let's do rockbusters. Yeah, right? do rockbusters. And you got monkey news. Well, we'll see if we got time. No, we got to do monkey news. Right, listen, listen though, Justin, if if he's out in the office. Oh, look, just quick, do the right, rockbusters right. answers then. Have you got a winner? No, I don't even know the no, answers. We'll, we'll do I? One. All right, then uh, the first one. <laughs> oh, right, nice I just chaos. got the plastic cut. Great, right, right, the first one was when I'm ill. Yeah. I throw up all food. Right. Yeah. That's the clue. The initials were I H. I got right. this one. And that I must was, say, that, that was I sick haze because when you're ill, you're sick. What do horses eat? They eat hay. I sick haze. I yeah. sick haze is the answer. You got that. Second one, that garden tool. Uh, that garden tool you've got. It's not yours. What are you doing with it? Mm. Right. N D. That was different. That was a what? That, uh, what's a garden tool? A rake. Right. If it's not yours, what have you done? You've, you've nicked it. You've nicked Nick Nick Drake. You've nicked. You've nicked that rake, Nick Drake, Nick Rake, right? So that's N D. You got that. I don't know that's, fine. Fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. The third one, that male sheep sounds well fed up. Go on. What's up with it? That was T R. Yeah. That was uh, that was that ram, ram. It's a ram. That's a male sheep. It's it's fed up. It's moaning. Ram moans. Ram owns the Ramones. So they got that as well. well. Let's give it to Jenny McKean from Isle of Wight because she's got all three of those answers. And uh, right, straight into monkey news. It better be done. No, let's play record. Let's no, play record we've got, and we've got to do monkey news. It's only five minutes to go. We've what? got time for a record and then some monkey yeah. news, surely. Oh, expert of XTC. Oh. Mm. Mm. Making plans for Nigel XTC. Okay, uh, let's play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right, this uh, this happened in uh, Pittsburgh. Right, uh, there was a rock band, and uh, they sort of they've got this studio in in Pittsburgh and what have you, mm. and they're laying down tracks and stuff like that. And in the in the studio that they use, right, there's this uh, this monkey works there. Right, <laughs> <called> <laughs> I love the way he throws that in. Like, cool, like, cool. like he throws that in. This monkey works there. No, it's just got a little gig there. He sort of uh, it, mm. it carries the equipment in guitars. <laughs> He does. Uh, no, he doesn't. He just sort of cleans up after the band. No, he doesn't. Emptying the ashtrays. Doesn't that happen. Sort of stuff. Doesn't does. happen. That's, that's the gig it's got. Anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gets women out of the crowd that they want to, uh, <laughs> go with it with. With one arm. <laughs> so anyway, right, so the, the band's in the studio, yeah. right, and, uh, one of the band members brings some A&R fella to the studio to have a listen to the latest track, right? Yeah. So they hit play. And uh, you know, they're all there going, yeah, brilliant, this is good. Oh, no. Anyway, so the fella says, yeah, I like the track. I uh, especially like the, the bass on it. <laughs> right, right this is bullshit. So this uh, is rubbish. So so and they hadn't laid down a bass. So so, so so this is, have you heard it? <laughs> so the weird, the, Carl, the weird please thing don't is, do this right, to so me. So the A and R fella goes, and yeah. it's like uh, it, the band members are stood about, and they're going, that's good that he liked it. And I'm saying, yeah, but well, what's he on about with the bass? So no, this is rubbish. This is absolute rubbish. Where did you get this from? Please, because we never Where get to the end. This is it. absolute so, nonsense. So they played it back. Yeah, right? and it's the chimp playing bass. So, Definitely not. So they were like, that's weird, we haven't got a bassist. Anyway, so they go, well, whatever, right? So we haven't leave. got a bassist. <laughs> so, they so, go, whatever, let's go Oh, home. forget it. <laughs> landed, Mr. Ben Folds. We've landed. On X Factor 9. Thank you Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington and his magical little manky round baldy head. He was described as a um, wacky mank in uh, one of the papers this week. Really? Brilliant. Well, remember we were talking about it last week about he came round to my house and uh, I popped out my uh, um, Mr. Johnson. Sure. Which I'd take a little look at. And he's two That made the papers. That right. made the papers. Wow. What what paper? It wasn't it wasn't front page of the Times. It must have been like the Daily Star <laughs> or something. <laughs> Just squeeze live eight. Yeah, in the second, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the second page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, wacky mank. Wacky mank. That's wacky great. Wacky mank. Wacky mank. We had an email from someone who reckons they remember you from uh, body popping uh, round Salford Way. Yeah, Eccles Precinct apparently. You like, know that thing. I wasn't doing it round there though. What was it? I was round Stratford. Stratford Arndale. 
And what were you doing? What sort of body popping was it? Just a bit of everything. Caterpillar. <laughs> uh, bit of me walking. Do you have a little piece of liner you used to carry around? Well, mates had that. Right, you didn't bother that. Spoiled theirs. Spoiled Were you really good? Uh, but you weren't break dancing, were you? You weren't spinning on your head and stuff, you were more body popping. Well, I hope you weren't spinning on his head, cos you know that can sort of do- you can give you sort of brain damage and things. Well, it can give you brain damage. Also, it can wear your, um, head down, and also makes your head perfectly round. Yes. Because gravity is pulling but on But if all. you keep on doing it, obviously it's gonna wear your hair- Hair out, yeah. So you- so you become a, um, sort of like a- Stupid. Uh, stupid, bald, and roundy yeah. headed. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, very I very cool. much doubt that you did do any of that, yeah. did you, Carl? Didn't do any of that. Uh, well. So you're shooting off in a minute, aren't you? Well, yes, cos we were trying to make poverty history, Carl. Yeah. People are making poverty history all over the place. They're putting on a wristband. It's and nice. it seems to be working. Because I haven't been poor for ages. <laughs> I haven't been poor. And, the, and Alex had a, um, a stop bullying. Alex was wearing a stop bullying uh, wristband and as he himself said, he, he, he seems to have sorted that out. You haven't been bullied I for ages. I haven't been bullied for years. So wristbands, wristbands work. I so saw one um, in a shop window the other day which said, um, stop child abuse. And I bought one, obviously, because, um, a lot of people say, you know, does it make a difference, but it was only a quid and I'd only spent it on kiddie porn. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I think I've made a little difference there, <laughs> in a small way. On a serious note, though, I like the idea that, that, that uh, <laughs> child abuse, you, you, you're a paedophile and you're w walking along the street in your Mac, right, you got a puppy in one hand, a bag of sweets in the other, and you see this wristband and you go, oh, stop it. Oh, okay then. Yeah, I've right. thought before, that's what right, I then. think. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. well, I won't be doing that again. Yeah, he was hanging around in Top Shop <laughs> for unsavoury <laughs> reasons. <laughs> you saw them in there for only a quid. Carl, we haven't got long, have we? We've got an hour and a half because we've got to shoot off. I've got to shoot off down to Live 8 and, um, uh, introduce Rem. Um, so, uh, we've got a lot to pack in. We've got the Rockbusters and then we give away- I just saw those, um, I'll finish the sentence in a minute. I look forward to it. I'm getting excited, yeah. I'm getting excited, so we've got so much to pack in. Yeah. I haven't got time to finish all mine. So listen, <laughs> right, do you know the things we're giving away? The signed little Homer, um, the Nigel Tufnell thing and the Flanimals, right? Looks brilliant. They've done a brilliant job, the people here at XFM. So take back all you were saying about them. Carl. <laughs> and nice. also we should say as well, you've still got a chance to win that because if you get today's Rockbusters, you go straight into the hat for yeah. the big draw, so you've still got a chance to win all those top prizes. Uh, Play a record. Bit of monkeys. Uh, yeah. Monkeys. Pleasant Valley Sunday. Alright, do you like that, Carl? It's alright, yeah. What's it about? <laughs> well, if you heard, it was a sort of, uh, description of, you know, typical suburbia, isn't it? Here in status symbol land. You know, it's a sly dig. The mon when the monkeys get a bee in their bonnet about something, oh. you better not- You, you do not you want to be on the receiving <laughs> end of that. <laughs> yeah. We've well, uh, we got, we got a uh, good song with a story later. Go on, what have we got? Uh, don't want to tell you yet. Alright. Now is it as um, pitiful as last week's where you somehow misheard um, that Eric Clapton song. What was the Eric Clapton song? Well, it, wonderful tonight, and yeah. he was convinced it was, it was about a bloke in a wheelchair for no reason. No mm. evidence at all. Other mm -hmm. than she's walking around with me. Yeah. Well, yeah, walking around with me. No, no. I, I walk mean... into a room and everyone's head turns. Yeah. To look at her, which she didn't seem to hear. Helps him to bed. Because he's drunk. Mm. He's had a few. Oh, never mind. Yeah, well, you're totally wrong. Big day Again. Carl, though, isn't it? Look, there's, cause he, you know, there's lots going on, and I know Carl's very, it's very, very important for him that he, he champions Live Aid. I don't know what's going on. I, d I don't know what. I, I am sick of it, to be honest. <laughs> Sick of what? Just sick of reading about it. Sick of this live eight thing. Sick of it all. Brilliant. Fed up with it. What, what annoys you particularly? It. It's not only that today though, is it? Um, on the way in today, right? Saw a gay fella <laughs> on a bike. Weird? On a bike, rushing. What time did the gay march start? What, what time did it have to be? Why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was, he was rushing, left it late, so he'd had a late night again. So my point's <laughs> right about him. Well, right. so what was your point about, just to the people who just, uh, tuned in? Well, the fact that they, they go out late, so, you know, they, they sort of have a nice night out from about half past eleven. <laughs> <laughs> They're riding in the jeans at like <laughs> half past ten. in their jeans! <laughs> they le they're leather trousers. But anyway, right? So they're cutting the back, aren't they? Leather trousers <laughs> about <laughs> half ten at night. I'm on the way in, right? And I see one stressed out, rushing, right? On a yeah. racer, yeah. wearing high heels. <laughs> Oh, I love you. He's fifty his dad, isn't he? <laughs> he's got- he's angry. He's just angry. If you're a gay fella and you're, um, you're proud to be gay, but you also want to make poverty history, you don't know what to do today, do you? You're all racing all over the place. Uh, must be murder. It seems a bit unfortunate that they've put them on the same day. Yeah. Well, you can get- you can get little, um, 
little leather studded uh, wristbands that say <laughs> mate of it history. Yeah. So uh, you know you can you can you can join in you on can, both parts. You part. can kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. But why is Vibex stressing you out? It's probably a good cause. You must have, um, you know, we, I know we've discussed this in the past and you don't really know what you're talking about, but... I mean, may maybe that's the problem. I'm just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could have told them ages ago that there was no way that they were gonna pay it back. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. I love that. But they didn't consult you, did they? When they were handing out this money willy-nilly to people who were dying, you could have had a quiet word mm. with them. You all, all I'm saying is... You could I have said to Howard Wilson, Howard, don't, you're not gonna get this back, mate. Obvious. You're not gonna get this Obvious. back, mate. When I wanted a mortgage, I had to supply three wage slips. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I was double checked out loads of times. <laughs> well, I'd then. like to see, um, have you ever seen that guy Alvin Hall who gives financial advice to perhaps teenagers who don't know how to spend their money wisely? Mm. All right. Perhaps like send him over there. He's a guy with the, the bow tie. Oh yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Like, send him over there and just sort of have a chat with him and say, yeah. you know, make a, make a list of what you're so, spending it on. So he's basically, are you, are you, will you be annoyed if they drop all debt and double aid and everything? No, no, because I mean, you know, people sometimes need help and that, don't they? You've got to help people out, but yeah. it's, it's, it's how many times is the thing. You know what I mean? Let them off. But, but do I, uh, you know, I, I've got this, uh, monthly payment at the moment, haven't I? Yeah. I'm paying for tools for people out there who need right. a drill to build a house or whatever. Yeah. Am I now in my right to say, well, you can't have it all. Do you want the drill or do you want the debt cancelled? <laughs> This is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm all happy to help people out. Do you think, do you think they're taking us for a mug? Is that what you think you might well, be taking? We'll, we'll see, won't we? Time will tell, won't we? <laughs> I mean, if, if next year at the same time, Geldof's putting on another gig, I'll go, what's going on now? <laughs> <laughs> Geldof putting on another gig! And the Bean Fiddler! What's going on now? I but, think you're missing out on the true meaning of today, Carl, which is an opportunity to see Keen for free. I think that's the problem. No, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go. I don't no. like crowds and that, do I? Right. Can't be dealing with that. Don't like big crowds. People, because I was talking to people at work about it and they were saying, oh, you know, it's a big occasion, it's one of them events, like, you've got to be down there because in years to come, when they say, you know, we are there, I don't see what's good about having a memory being stuck in a crowd of 150,000 people. I prefer to uh, do something nice, say, if I, if I have, like, a nice cake and a cup of tea, right? <laughs> In years to come, when when they go, do you remember that day when we were all cramped and what have you? I go, no, I was on a nice cake and a cup of tea. <laughs> so I've got a nice, nicer memory than them. <laughs> so I believe in doing something nice on a big occasion, do you know what I mean, on a special day. Do yeah. something nice, remember that. The thing is, you have got a nicer memory than them because when you look back and I say, what are you doing 20 years ago, your memory will tell you you were actually having a, um, cup of tea and a cake but with a chimpanzee who could talk English. That's what your memory will tell you. <laughs> you know, you go, oh, I was out, I was out with my mate, I was out with my mate, Marty, he's a chimp. And it just, you're, you'll be in cuckoo land by the time you're 50. You'll be just going, oh, that was great that day, I remember, Suzanne. Suzanne, I don't know what I'm talking to Suzanne, she's left you. She's left, she's had enough of you waking well, up. Well, she's going. down in High Park watching Bed Shaped live. <laughs> <laughs> she's not worried about cake and a cup of tea. Have you ever done a march or anything, though? Have you ever sort of. What are you saying? Have you ever. Have you. You know, you're on the go at me for not getting behind it all, right? Which I am because I've got more standing orders going out of my account for charities than anything, yeah. right? But are you. Have you ever got behind a, a, a. You know, a problem? No. I don't think I have, to be fair. No. No. No, I am quite slack in that respect. It does take a lot of effort though, doesn't it? Well, it depends. What sort? Well, yeah, you know, if you're gonna do one of those walks from John O'Groats to Land's End or something, that's a lot of time commitment. There's one, I tell you what, there is one that's, that looks alright. On, um, Portland Place, just off Oxford Street, there's always, uh, just a little Chinese fella sat on the pavement, right? Oh, I've seen him, yeah. What's that all about? Yeah. He's just sat there with a poster, but you don't know what it's for because it's in Chinese. Yeah. So he's just, he's just always sat there. But that's a nice, that's, for me, that's the sort of march I want where you just, and he's only there when it's sunny, if it's raining they don't bother. I tell a lie, I did pop down when all those women walked through London in their bras. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace and gravity on XFM 104.9.
We've, uh, had a couple of texts. People obviously can text in 83XFM. That's the, um, text number for the, uh, big quiz. It's coming up shortly. Rockbuster, still your opportunity to win some of those cracking prizes. Enter your name in the draw if you can, um, unravel the, I don't know what you call them, conundrums that, uh, yeah, Carl sets. Sort of. We've had a couple of texts. Um, obviously we're leaving early today. This is a, sh a shortened show and our last show of this run. But we've got to leave early. We've got to go down and try and make poverty history. Um, but Rob's texted and he says, only an hour and a half today. Well, poverty does have some benefits then. <laughs> uh, He's a fan. He understands the show. Who was that little fella that used to, uh, write in who hated the I show? Know, I forget his name, eh? And I haven't heard from him from a while, for a while, actually. I don't know what happened. No. Maybe he realised that if he hated the show so much, the obvious thing to do was to switch off. Maybe that finally That's did. That's annoying. What's his name? Someone like, remind us of his I like name. people who hate us to carry on listening. Yeah. It just gives it an edge, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, It's the fact that, you know, some, that you're annoying someone. I mean, I love annoying people. I know you do. I know so you're, you're like a kind of walking Chinese water torch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, have we got Ladder 49 today? Rick, there's a number of cracking DVDs as ever on Rockbusters. Um, we've got The Life Aquatic mm. with Bill Murray. We've got Howard and uh, Kumar Get the Munchies. <laughs> hilarious stoner comedy. <laughs> and uh, Batman the Animated Series. And Ladder 49, there oh, it is. Oh, Phoenix, yes. Travolta. If you, incidentally, if you've ever seen Ladder 49, then you can give us a quick text review on, uh, 83 x I'd be interested to know if it, if it's Why actually worth Why are you giving watching. away one a week for the last <laughs> six weeks? Yes. Yeah. Well, we better start then. Let's do Rockbusters for the last time. You can win those amazing prizes. Alright. Um, as always, just a little cryptic clue. Some initials of a band or an artist. Work it out, email in or text in. That's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right, the first one. Uh, Richard kid, uh, Richard's kid, yeah. cuts hair for a living. Right? Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Uh, right? Initials E D. Right? D D. Richard uh, R Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Second one. I have a problem saying the French word for well. Right? Uh -huh. I think I think that's that's the right word anyway. Well. I have a problem saying the French word for well. So what's that? Like? Initial there is K. Right, band or artist. And then uh, the third one, you take eight kebabs, two kebabs, fifty-seven kebabs, times it by twenty-seven kebabs. Right, the fella is struggling to work it out. What's 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 that? What's going on there? Right. It's <laughs> a good question. D S, D S is the answer there. Eight kebabs, two kebabs. I've got it. Fifty-seven kebabs times it. By uh, 27 or what have you. Fellas struggling working it out. What yeah, is I've it? I've got that one. DS. So, uh, just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk or on the text 83936. Yeah. Yeah, and you can win, uh, Ladder 49 and those other DVDs. Plus, you go into the draw, which we'll do before we leave, and you can win the, uh, signed by Matt Groening, personally drawn, uh, Homer Simpson. We've got the Spinal Tap poster signed by, uh, Christopher Guest. And, uh, there's, and also the, the original, um, artwork of us, uh, as Flanimals. But they've all been framed. They've done a brilliant job. It really is, it really is a nice prize. O I mean, almost too go good to give away. A little bit annoying. Is it too late to original. take that back? Well, I was thinking we could sneak in a, a copy. Yeah. It's a very bad photocopy, so it goes grey and, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they're all originals, so, uh, keep, get texting. Right. Right. R.E.M., Night Swimming, beautiful song, brilliant band. I've got to introduce them and I'm actually nervous. Yeah. I never get nervous. You never get nervous, do I you? I never get nervous and I get a little adrenaline rush. It just takes, what is it, 80% of the world's population to be watching <laughs> you. <laughs> and then you get a little bit jittery. And I don't know what to wear. No. No, this is interesting, actually. <laughs> I don't know, um, no, 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 no. I, uh... I, for a moment though, I was thinking maybe Ricky's got to pop home first before he goes down <laughs> to bring on the band. But if you are watching it or if you're there, obviously not there, if you were there you wouldn't be listening to this, but if you're watching it on TV, do check Ricky out because how do you describe that particular look? Ricky's wearing, uh, sweatpants. I assume they're sweatpants. They're not pyjama bottoms, are they? They're, yeah, they're so sweatpants. They're sort of, And yeah. you've got just a white t-shirt, cheap and plain white t-shirt. Yeah. And it, basically Ricky is wearing, it's like, He's made so little effort. The only the, he could have made, the only reason he, the only way he could have made less effort was if he wasn't wearing any clothes. <laughs> and he was just wearing his underpants that he slept in. <laughs> but he's actually bothered to put on a t-shirt and a pair of sweatpants and some trainers. Yeah, well. I mean, what, Ro Jonathan Ross is going to probably be wearing a suit, one of his you know expensive suits, yeah. whatever. And, yeah, but he won't be as comfortable as me. Well, true. <laughs> Did it not occur to you for a moment to maybe make slightly more of an effort? Perhaps put on a jacket. <laughs> a jacket it looks silly with tracksuit bombs. Well, again, you could have changed the tracks to your bottoms. I mean, oh, yeah. they're a mainstay of the outfit, are they? It's like they're not changing for anything. <laughs> yeah. 
yet. <laughs> I've got very little things that I, I haven't got a drawstring or an elasticated waistband. No, sure. I don't really don't want to be bothering with buttons and zips and hooks. There's gonna come a point, isn't there, where you're just gonna wear, I don't know, smocks. <laughs> baby grow. Baby grow. Yeah. Baby grow with a flap. That'd yeah. be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Those little mittens. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and then an the oven glove, so I'm just gonna stuff out the oven, eat it, let it drop everywhere. Yeah. Right, and then just get out of the baby grow, put a new one on, a clean one on. All those kind of, those kind of red <laughs> flannel things with the, 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 the which cowboys wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kind of buttoned up. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're like gra old cowboys. Yeah. Grandpa, he comes out with a shotgun. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the long johns. Well, um, yeah. how's it going with Rockbusters? Has anyone got the answers? Don't know, I'm Actually, one guy is, uh, he te texted in, he, uh, James and Deptford, he's, uh, offered some answers, and he says here, the guy that hated us, famously, of course, we should have remembered, Dickie Anderson. Dickie Anderson? Richard Anderson, of course. Um, oh. I, don't know, I, I don't know if Dickie's still listening. If he is, obviously email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk <laughs> and, uh, tell us what you've been doing, what, how, how you've been keeping busy and stuff. Yeah. Nice to hear from him. Chris Campling hasn't called, has he, either? Yeah, Campling. The one that thinks that not only is this whole show scripted, imagine <laughs> that, <laughs> right? But that Carl is a character created by us. Yeah. He's actually an actor. Oh, if only Look at that. Credit for a that. shaved monkey we got. I'll tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go on. There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. If, if you, you know, perhaps yeah. I'm gonna do, uh, um, uh, cause I mean, I'm, I mean, obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, mm. but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club Well, you told me you were DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing at a, a party, and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know very well that when I was put, I put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that, whatever you put on. That's nonsense. No, they, said they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they weren't having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right, but they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. No, when no, I put on no. the proclaimers, they could not believe their no, luck. No. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dancing? They were dancing, were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going you know more and all that at the end. What's about? Oh, Take wow. on me came on, they, they, the big, the big cheer went up. Oh, I don't I've, know to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well. Oh, know. it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up and his are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had uh, he's making, making music, music his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment, and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> But you're safe, aren't you? You're behind the little thing with the flashing yeah, lights. Yeah, oh, still a lot of people and that. Forced fun. Don't like that. Forced it's fun. It's not forced fun. They haven't got to dance if they don't want to dance. Yeah. Don't like it. What do you mean your fortunes are on the app anyway, DJ? Where were you? Well, I'll tell you, I was uh, hired, well, I say hired, I did it as a favour to a friend, uh, his wedding the other week. And I got there, I was thinking, yeah. Cause I, you know, everyone was, everyone had, had their little role to play, and then people were doing a good job. I love you taking it seriously. And I did, I spent wedding. ages putting together some CDs, <laughs> special selection CDs. I love that! Cause what I did was I, I burned them on iTunes. Did you turn up with your own headphones round your neck? O own headphones, wearing a suit, but headphones. The metal case. Didn't need it, just had them all in one small box. Brilliant. Boom. Um, I thought this is good stuff. I got some classics here. Give me an example. Give me an example of that, like the, the, the first hour, the warm up hour. Rick, um, I've, I'm coming straight in with, uh, Frankie Valley, Oh What a Night. Brilliant track. I mean, when those beats start at the beginning, who's not getting on the dance floor? Wait a minute, what's this falling up? Go on. It's the Jacksons. Well, I want you back. I want you back. Brilliant. It sounds good at the moment, Carl. Yeah. So, Go um, on. I'm thinking, like, at least I'm gonna, I'm gonna roar this, because, you know, they laid on a good spread, the ceremony was nice, food was nice, I'm thinking this is gonna be the, the piece de resistance. Yeah. Alarm bell started ringing. Why? When I realised there was a marquee outside, of course it's a balmy summer evening, I'm stuck inside, oh. on the dance floor inside, I'm thinking I'm gonna be struggling here to get them in. <laughs> even with, even with flavours like this, I thought I'd struggle, Rick. <laughs> so I'm sat there in my suit. <laughs> I'm sat behind this little DJ console. <laughs> I've got through all the big numbers. There's one or two people making some token effort, but frankly, most people are outside. Everyone, oh, no. so I was livid. Of course, they couldn't hear it out there. So I was playing to an empty room, really, and I was furious. I was absolutely furious because oh, no. I mean, what is you know, you're wasting my time. <laughs> you're wasting now. I could have just stepped the CD on. They're wasting Frankie Valley's. Wasting Frankie Valley's. They're wasting the Jackson Five. They're wasting you know, D Light's time. Yeah, yeah. 
And, uh, so I'm sat there, and there's, like, there's a couple of people making a cursory effort, mainly when they come to get a drink from the bar, they might have a no. little quick, you know, couple of two. You we don't want your, not or, 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 all of your, no all of your, no one at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then there's, there's a microphone set up because people have been doing speeches. This little girl gets on the mic, right? It's being funneled through the speaker system. So every time I put my headphones on, oh, I Miss Dynamite, was it? <laughs> it wasn't sadly Miss Dynamite. Although <laughs> she decided to, uh, have a little go at MCing. She was screeching a little head How off. old was she? Oh, I don't know, eight or nine. <laughs> at their most annoying. <laughs> when, when children are at their most annoying, because they've got a bit of confidence there. They're a bit cocky. They're not shy anymore. They're a bit arrogant. Yeah. She's screeching her head off. So I'm playing, you know. Oh, and she doesn't know. Look at your face. I'm playing into the groove. No one's getting <laughs> the group, and she's, <laughs> and she's going mental, she's just going, Ryan, what's this, what's this, I don't know what this is, play something I know. Oh. I mean, I haven't got any bloody DJ Otsu or <laughs> Crazy Frog, I'm not gonna play what, what you, so she's just screeching along, ruining it for everyone. <laughs> and I say everyone, there was no one left, so me, she was ruining it for me. <laughs> I bet you were really I'm angry. Furious. But of course as well, every time she screeched, it went through my headphones. <laughs> so I, uh, so, of course, I'm here, and then this, her dad comes along, right? And I'm oh. thinking, all right, he's gonna, he's oh, seen what's happening. I just imagine you in your suit, sweating, getting annoyed that someone Living. ruining your set that yeah. no one's listening that no to. That no one's listening to. <laughs> I think, her, oh, her dad's coming over, he's gonna put, put pay to this, he's realised that, you know, she's causing a disturbance. He comes over there, joins in. No. Sits her, sits her on the la- on his lap, he's just saying, hey, she's having a whirl of a time, I'm thinking I'm furious. I'm thinking it's his responsibility to shut her up, he's yeah, not gonna do anything. I what agree. can I do? I can't step in. No. And I know very well that if I interfere, he's gonna say, oh, well, she's enjoying herself and no one's dancing anyway, and we've just gone into a fracas. Yeah. I didn't want to start a fight. No. Cause so, um, sp- I don't know, but he'd have knocked you out, wouldn't he? Someone would have got knocked out. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not saying who it would have been, but, you know, but there was, to bear in mind, Rick, there would have been two of them. <laughs> And, um, so I didn't want to get into a fight with him. And, uh, anyway, so I'm playing. Anyway, so my friend came along. He, he, he realised what was happening. And I didn't have the guts to, uh, to unplug the microphone. Cos they'd have, he'd have known, you see. Yeah. So I got my friend to do it when she had her back to him. <laughs> so he pulled the plug out. She, the microphone went dead. She went, what's going on? I went, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, I don't know. She said, where'd the microphone was? I said, you must have broken it. Oh, I don't, I don't God. know what's going on. Someone will probably make you pay for that. Oh, and, uh, anyway, at least we shut her up. <laughs> that is great! But, uh, <laughs> but it just went, it really went from bad from worse. <laughs> and, you know there's that thing when you panic, you start panicking, so you start, you're putting on a lot of flavours that you would have saved to the, to the last hour. What are we talking, boom, boom, shake, shake, Exactly, you're throwing him in early. Love Shack's yeah. coming on way too soon. Really? Oh, Love Shack before 11. <laughs> I, it's heresy, but I have to do it. <laughs> But anyway, in the end, the, uh, the, I made the bride go and get some people in. I thought, I said, look, it's your special night, <laughs> alright, and they're gonna enjoy this. I'll be honest, love, this is a washout, and it's up to you <laughs> exactly. to turn this wedding yeah. around, or I'm walking. I'm walking, and I say, they're gonna have a sour memory of this evening, yeah, unless you bring so some people in. Yeah, so everyone in dancing. So, I, so she got them in at the end, and, Brilliant. and I'll tell you this, Carl, I mean, I don't know what you say, but they were loving it. They were absolutely loving it. A bloke came over and said, have you got Amarillo? I said, no, but I put on something even better, Delilah. I have never, I mean, wedding crowds always go for Delilah. There's f- a song, of course, about old man killing his wife. It always goes down very well, strangely, at weddings. <laughs> yeah. They get into a sort of hokey-cokey thing, they went yeah. berserk for it. And I was following it up with, I had the monkeys, I had all sorts going on. Brilliant. Of course, you know what happens. What? I'm going go- great guns, people are absolutely loving it, they're rocking it. I throw in, um, uh, Oh, I, I had something cracking on at the end of, come on Eileen, of course, was on. People sure. were going berserk for it. Which is unfortunate, because the bride's name was Eileen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, then the bride pipes up, I'm throwing the, uh, bouquet. So they all traipse off outside again. Oh. I was furious! Oh, no. I grabbed, I plugged the microphone back in, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> We got, you know, but they went out there and of course you can't get them back once they've done that, because all the women are running around, I got the, I got the, you know, thing, no. and then they got to wave everyone off, throw the confetti. They ruined, they ruined your day. I was having a great time and they ruined it. She ruined your special day. She ruined my special night. Oh no. You know, what it's would on you, her head. What would you put on about now, Carl? What I thought was DJing. Yeah. Probably about a world party. Go on. Oh, interesting. Put the message in the box, put the message in the car, drive the car around the world, and I, uh, I'm imagining really, that that message is make poverty history. Um, <laughs> that's world party, put the yeah. message in the box. Yeah. Um, can I just say quickly while I think of it, um, we get a lot of emails from people, a lot of texts saying, can you say, you know, can you send a big shout out? Mm. Stuff like that. You know, I've just looked at one now, Scott and Julie in Australia are listening, they want a big shout out, big shout yeah. to them. But there's so many people that do it, and I'm um, obviously just want to say, sorry we never get to your emails, we're very, very lazy, we never really get to look through them, um, but we obviously do appreciate you emailing in, texting in, stuff like that. Um, and also, can I send a big shout out to my grandparents, who I believe might be listening, on their new digital radio? They're pretty high tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice country. Yeah. Are they, are they, are they the merchants of, uh, uh Bristol? Merchants, yeah. 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 Props Good. to them. Props to them, yeah. Um, yeah, oh. no, uh, 
it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got I don't like it. Like I don't like change, and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't, do you? You're like Rain Man. Yeah. He really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change? He, 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 he's got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, uh, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you. Where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it. Where you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg, and chips, no matter where I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what they're like. Right. That's yeah. what they're, that's what they'll remember. Actually, when I'm saying about stuff about live eight and all that, you know, people will remember. If people said to a dad. You know, you remember Live 8? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday when I had sausage and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. But the thing is today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like, Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's, that's normally done about- that's really throwing you, I think, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I just uh -oh. don't- uh -oh. I don't like all this change and that, it's messing about, innit? Rain man. <laughs> so what, what do you want now? Well, what about song uh, with the story? Let's see, with the- Uh, right, well, last week- Look at him, he's in a genuinely foul mood. Uh, no, he's actually rocking. Yeah. He's actually rocking like Rain Man as well. Last week we did, like you say, Eric Clapton. This is the section where we play a song with a story. I think every song, if it's a good song, it's got a story, you've got to listen from, to it, to, sort of, you know, from the start, mm. you get in the middle, you're going, oh, how's it gonna end and all that. Yeah. You wait another minute, you know the ending, you're happy. But, listening. but, the thing is, as Steve said, um, you know, sometimes you're disappointed with it, so it's just not a good story. And as Steve said, I'm not sure you're finding what you need in a song for a story. Why don't you read a, bu uh, a book, a novel? If you want a really good story that engrosses you and kind of, why don't you read a book? You're not gonna get it from a, a pop song. No time for a book. Song's three and a half minutes. And that's it, is it? And that, that satisfied your... Well, yeah, it gets you thinking for a few minutes, then you move on. This then one, you stop thinking. Two <laughs> minutes fifty, this one, right? And it's brilliant. Go on, then. It's about, uh, last week we talked about the, the little crippled fella, right? Mm, this one... Was, uh, as I say, I don't think we say crippled anymore, but go on. Alright, this one, someone emailed in saying, if you want a song about that, this is a song you ought to listen to, right? Right. It's about this fella who, uh, basically something happened, I think he's in a wheelchair, right, mm. for some reason. Uh... You thought that last time. His wife, um, you know, likes going out. She doesn't take him, take him with her when, when she goes out. Right. Is um, it Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town? Yeah. Good, brilliant song. Well, just play it then? Yeah, great song. Alright. What do you mean? Oh, it's just, uh, it's a good story. It starts off well and that, you're feeling yeah. sorry for him, but then he says, where's my gun? Yeah. Cause well, she's a slut. Why? Because she's going off. Yeah, but what, what does, what does he expect her to do? What? Just cause it, it, he paralyzed his legs fighting for his country, presumably in Vietnam War, says that crazy Asian war. So he's gone, he's fought for his country, he's taken a bullet, he's come home, he can't walk, he should be a hero, and then he, his wife's going out putting it about downtown. Why do I never meet women like Ruby? <laughs> Forever lost the magic numbers on XFM 104.9. Well, the concert's kicked off, Steve. Yeah, I'm a bit annoyed that we're still here, really. Let's try and wrap this up quite quickly and then show No one's listening anyway. Nah. We could talk about anything. Well, we do. Yeah, true. It makes no difference. We could do a lot more swearing than we normally do. <laughs> we could do even more. I was oh. talking to Carl the other night, um, because I've been watching, rewatching for some reason, that film Witness with Harrison Ford, oh, where he's a uh, policeman that um, has to protect a little boy who's part of an Amish community. Amish. 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 Yeah. And I tried to explain to Carl. You, are, you look plain, John Book. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I've obviously tried to explain the Amish to Carl. Uh, he'd never heard of them. Completely stony faced. Amazing. Um, now for those- Okay, you've explained it to him, have yeah. you? Okay then. <laughs> now I don't know what you said, but I'm assuming you got it right, right? Carl, now tell me, tell me back now, what are the Amish? Um, they're just, just people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times. So to them they're sort of in about 1842 or something, so they're getting old papers and that. Um, they no, don't cut up no, to, no, 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 no. They don't cut, they, they, don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny, don't. they don't deny that the 20th century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They, they, they look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see in the window of Dixon's a telly. They just, they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're, they're still living 
They're still going. They are still living like it's yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, but they don't. They they know they know about everything else. They just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing. They think it, you know that society became more and more depraved, and they wanted to go away from it, and they wanted to go back to old values, and they think they don't need TV and. And, and jets and that way of life, they can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better. Missing out on live eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but they haven't had band aid yet. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I think the, this is the problem that Carl had. He, he in his mind, they were just a bit delayed. So yeah. they, in his head, they were slowly moving towards the. They wouldn't be able to watch most of these bands. All their electric guitar. They could. They, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah. Doing an acoustic set. Yeah. Between yeah. the bands. Yeah. yeah. That'd be all right. They'd but no, in a... Carl's mind, it's like if he. Although they wouldn't like fast car, they wouldn't <laughs> like seeing about that. They go, "What are you talking about? Pony and trap? You got a pony and trap? <laughs> That'd be all right." But but are they still? Do they still get sort of rubbish posts and that saying we need your money for this or you no, know get behind this They live in a isolated community. They live, they're farmers, aren't they? They're farmers. It's so. an agricultural community and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, I mean, in actual fact it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't he you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, couldn't you? It's probably out- I mean, have they got anything to do with the- the Hare Krishna people? No. No. Nothing at all. Cause out of all- all the religions, that's- you know, I'm not a religious person. I, I don't. I don't understand. You're only saying Hare Krishna because you've got the head. That's the only reason you think it. I'm be... halfway there. Yeah. But, but the thing <laughs> is, out of out of all, it, you just what was what was that? <laughs> Man, he just fell out of my pocket where I'm. I'm nearly laying down. <laughs> That's the danger of wearing sweatpants <laughs> everywhere you go. I, I've only ever lying down in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm. I'm. You know, I've never been a religious type. You know, if people oh. want to do it, I let them do it. And what have you? Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the- I, I want one that's not gonna take over your life. I don't want one where you've gotta get up three times a day and you gotta go and pray and that, you gotta get up early. Forget that. It's yep. getting in the way. But if it's something like, <laughs> um, I was walking to work the other day, right, across Oxford Street, mm. um, there's a little Harry Krishna fella there and, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> they hand out food for some reason. But, um, I sort of asked a few questions. <laughs> that was the imagery. Yeah. It's two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange top. Holding a plum in the middle. He hands him a, pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you can imagine some kind of religious painting. Yeah, it's all exactly, like yeah, yeah. But, but uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing, because he didn't really tell me that much, he was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He so, wasn't speaking English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what, what's that? Are they, you're saying they're nothing like- Well, I believe Harry Krishna is a, is a kind of, um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is, and, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously the, obviously their most, their, their kind of trademark, as it were, is that they have to say, I believe they have to say Harry Krishna, Harry, Harry Krishna in a certain rhythm, in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them walking down the street saying Harry Krishna, Harry, Harry Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So you see, even if you go into the Harry Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, Forced to say Harry Krishna, Harry, Harry Krishna. Perhaps out, why, out loud, uh, out not loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and you just. You could put that on an iPod, no, it doesn't count. No, I think you have to actually say it. So I guess that kind of eats into your into your social life a little bit. And then the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating, I imagine if you're in a in a cinema or a library, a little bit awkward there, you know, midway through. Um, or Star you Wars live something. next door to a bloke called Harry Krishna, <laughs> yeah. who constantly thinks you're calling him. Yeah, that, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's in this. I mean, I don't think we've quite done the, the uh, Harry Krishna faith. It's full service there. But uh, so interesting to you. I mean, you you got handed a plum. You've been treated well by them. Yeah, well, but he couldn't tell. I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up. Uh, what are the benefits? Mm. Um, you know, what can you? Do what can well, I think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out. They've probably got that sort of that that zen, that that that, that chiness about them where they they try and interact and quite meditative. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their 
Yeah. Car what are you stuff. looking for then in a faith car? You say you, it, it's, what are the benefits? I mean obviously Catholicism you get the communion wine and um, bread so. Yeah but I can afford that. Right. Um probably uh just, just, I like the Crusaders, I was forced into joining that as a kid because a mate sort of joined it and uh he sort of said are you joining it? I sort of swore at him, I said I'm not doing that. Right. Yeah. He said right if you don't come with me. I'll, uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore. <laughs> so I was like, oh. So, so I went, <laughs> so I went along and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff and then I went on one Sunday and it was, it was totally different. There was no Sabutio. There was no sort of, you know, uh. Table tennis. Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Skittles. Uh, Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> he said, right, sit down in this room. They gave me a Bible. I thought, this looks too heavy, this. This is too big. I'm not interested in this, but... And, uh, I never went again. I used to hide on a Sunday when they came round. And, um, <laughs> that, that's, that's been the only Sunday. <laughs> I said that! I said he, why did said he turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't leave. Who uh, was it? Were they adults? It was a, yeah, sort of a... Well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about 27. Well, like that, that is an adult. Yeah, but, do you know what I mean, he seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, Mum, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something. And, uh, he used to hang around to see if, I, if I'd eventually come out to play and that. And if I did, I think they would've grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want, that for you religion has to pr bring with it some kind of gift. It's like, you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but like something but like but I, think religion, but I think religion does bring a gift. Usually, it's- Well, the, the gift of the Lord. Well, well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't it? And that's the problem with it, you know. A lot of people believe in it because they think- But the, with for Carl, right. his, his feeling is like, that should be a given. That's safe. I'm definitely going home with eternal life. But yeah. what else can I have? Is so there an iPod? Do you have to have a religion? Because I, obviously I don't have a religion. I don't miss it and I wouldn't want one. I'm an atheist. And that, that's out of, that's out of belief. That's out of logic. And we don't get into the, the politics or the, yeah. the morality of it. Why do you, why do you feel you need a religion? Why don't you just get a hobby? Well, I, I didn't want one. I don't want one. I just was saying that, you know, if I was to get one, which one would I go for? <laughs> is what I'm saying. Mm. I'd like to see you perhaps as a Jew. I think a, 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 Judaism would suit you well, I think. What are the hours like for that? Tough. It can be tricky. That's what I mean. I don't want anything <laughs> that's, you know... And they, they have a day where they don't eat and stuff. I couldn't be doing that. <laughs> so so they have days when they eat a lot too much. Yeah, but what happens if I'm not that hungry that day? <laughs> like I say, I don't like change. No. I mean, I like my Cheerios in the morning. <laughs> I don't, I don't. <laughs> I still have that other girl in my head by Elvis Costello and Britt Bacharach, uh, on this final XFM show, Richard J. Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, we nearly got to wrap it up. I think we got to do the, uh, Rockbusters winner and give someone those lovely prizes, monkey news, then we're out of here. We'll yeah. maybe come back, maybe do some Christmas specials. I don't want to make any promises. <laughs> <laughs> Right then, first one. First one was, uh, Richard's kid, uh, he cuts hair for a living. Yeah, what's right. that? That was, uh, well, try and work it out. No. You know. It's no point. <laughs> Dick's son, yeah, he was a barber. Bar yeah. bar Barbara Dixon, right? Dixon. Work. Dixon, well, again. Barbara, it was Barbara Dixon. Right. <laughs> it wasn't Barbara Dixon, was it? <laughs> so, that's did, that one. did Ronnie Corbett ever say, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Barbara Dixon? <laughs> second no, one, second never did, did uh, he? He never did. I have a problem saying the French word for well. What's what's the French word for well? Bon, isn't it? That's good. What? No, that's that's good, then. Well, well, no, what? And it, uh, and it, bien. Yeah. Yeah, all um, right. I have a problem saying it, so I, ca I can't say it. I can't say BN. I can't say, can't say BN. can't say Kasabian. Ca right? So, <laughs> they managed to get that one out. Can't, can't That's say, one of your worst, that. Can't, can't say BN. Can't what, say BN. Can't say BN, it's not, it's not, it's not, yeah. it's And the last one. Work. That's terrible. Eight kebabs, two kebabs, plus fifty-seven kebabs, times twenty-seven kebabs. This fella is struggling working it out. What's, what's the answer there? DS. Right? I don't know some, uh, right? So he's, he's struggling working it out. He's, uh, so don't know some, don't know some, um, right? <laughs> so he got that right as well, so. What, what, what was the answer? Donna Summer. Donna Summer. Yeah, Donna Summer. Donna Summer. Donna Summer. So, uh, just pick, just so pick one. So we're now on a high then. 
Steve, just pick one. We went no, out on a high. high. That was shocking. What about, uh, let's have a look, is, uh... Well, it's the first one to get all three. Steve, what's the first one with all three? Well, there's so many here. Yeah, I mean. but this is the first one that came through in time-wise. Um, Probably that one, no. No, I don't like Rob because he's been slagging us off. In fact, no, let's give it to Rob. He is, is he the show. first? If he's the first. No, to be honest with you, Rob's been slagging us off, but at least he knows, I mean, at least he's got some taste. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, what if he was the so, first, then Rob's the winner. It, well, yeah, well, give Rob, he gets a ladder 49 and a bunch of other DVDs, but that means he goes straight no, into the hat. Putting him for in the there, no, I'm just gonna write his name now, I'm gonna throw that straight in the, uh, in the hat. I can imagine that no one, even the people, who've entered are that excited. Not because the prizes aren't great, but I'm worried that they don't appreciate it, Rick. Do you know, I get the feeling that our listeners, they just don't appreciate the fact that we've gone to all this trouble, we've got the Homer Simpson drawing and things like that. I just feel like these people don't deserve it. <laughs> and do you know what it's weird? I just wish we had a better quality of listener. Yeah. Like, people who listen to Radio 2, they deserve it. You know, they're elderly and infirm, some of them. They, they could really, it would really cheer them up, but mm. our lot, you know, drug addicts. Yeah, let me pick you know, out. Tr truck drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, I've just put all the names in the hat, all the previous winners from the previous weeks and Who's Rob Who's Is Pilkey, um, gonna put it out? Do you want Pilkey or do you want Ricky? Uh, oh, well, let's, let's have the shave monkey do it. Alright. Plunge your hand in there. This is just, that's one, isn't that's it? That's it, just pull, yeah. Yeah, pull that one out, check who it is. Alright, it's, uh, Gavin Thompson in Edinburgh. Well done, Gav. Are we gonna get them up there? You got to post them. You got to pay. They're amazing prizes. Yeah, but the Spinal Tap one, it's about five foot, isn't it? Well, they can post it. It cost them a few quid. It's a radio station. I think you should have to come and collect it. <laughs> no, just because then it'll at least oh, it'll, it'll prove that he's from Edinburgh. Give it to Bob Galdoff. I'll give it to Bob Galdoff. <laughs> he's walking up there. Is it? He can jog it. Chewing brakes. Fishing for a dream. That's what we're fishing for, isn't it? We're fishing for a dream today. What's that mean? Poverty. I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about. I was. It doesn't matter what you're saying, Rick. No one's listening. No one's listening. Well, we've got to finish anyway. To, I mean, to think about the fact that we, I mean, think how small our percentage of listeners is anyway. Anyway. And then you two are on stage yeah. at the moment. This is like broadcasting during Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just the same. It's just On hospital radio. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Where everyone's got an iPod for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the ward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we've, we've just got, we're gonna go through, we're gonna go through now till half past and I've got a rush off, I'm afraid, um, to, to live eight. Um. Don't, don't apologise, mate. <laughs> when people see the glam that you're bringing to that event. <laughs> they don't even care about the people introducing it. Comedians going, there going, ladies and gentlemen, just get on with it. No, I agree. No, I've got a good joint here. Two blokes will get on with it. Bring on Madonna. Um, but we're gonna give it to them. Carl, we're gonna go through to the end. We've done everything we have to do. Monkey news. The final monkey news of the year, possibly. It's been a joy. I'd like to say, for, you know, I'm half of myself, Steve Merchant, and this little bald mank. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, go but, on. Uh, we should just point out as well, if you, if you miss, uh, Rockbusters while we're away. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, you can log on to xfm.co.uk forward slash rockbusters where you can actually see Carl himself, um, play, uh, introducing you to an interactive game of rockbusters. Looks very much like blockbusters. It does, surprisingly. But yeah, you can, you can join into that. Uh, and there's also, uh, talking of monkey news, there's, uh, there's a link on, um, on the website, I'm trying to think where you go. I think if you go on my little biography bit, someone's done some animation to some old monkey news. Oh, it's brilliant. It's great. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you if you if you have withdrawal symptoms of monkey news, then you can find some classic. And it's monkey anime. News, it's it? classic monkey news. Feel drained today. Do you? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the strangest radio show in the world. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because the, well, we can do that. We can talk about this and go, oh, feel drained today. Just like he's not. Like, no one's listening. Because that's the sort of thing you say socially and no one listens. Like, just when you're washing up, oh, I feel drained today. It's rhetorical. Yeah. You're not expecting anyone, not even your loved ones, to go, oh, really? They just go, oh, uh, that. But to do it live on air, yeah. oh, no one's listening. Go to what I mean, it's just give us a jingle. But the, but the, <laughs> the, 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 but the truth is, the contempt we have for our poor listeners but is But the truth is, the listeners aren't listening and yes. we don't want to be here. <laughs> so, this really is one of the most pointless things uh, ever. No, I would have been, been quite happy to do a full show. But you know what? The flow of it's just I nice. would love to listen to this back in ten years. <laughs> oh. This actual show, let's keep this forever. Let's keep this show forever. The, the show we went early, we were bored, it was a day we were trying to save Africa, but we are a little bit annoyed that no one's listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, oh. right. Once and for all, the final monkey news but of the not, year. Oh, go on. What? What were you going to say? 
No, I was just gonna say, if you're not into the Live 8 and you're gay, you're not listening. <laughs> because you're on a walk. <laughs> right, okay. Right. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! Right, there's this, uh, card game going on. Right. <laughs> In uh, in the uh, a, a, a big hotel in uh, in Vegas, right. right? The Lux Luxor Hotel in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, there's a major car game. All the all the big players and that sure. were uh, were involved. Mm. Right? They're all invited. Mm. Anyway, so they all uh, they all meet up in this dark room at the back of the. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Dark room. dark room. But hairy fella. So, so, so it was brilliant that poker. I'd yeah. say it's a it's a big game and that everyone's been waiting for it. So it's played in the back room, not not in the main entrance bit, right? <laughs> so anyway, like I say, it's dark in there and what have you, and, and the players went in. There was already someone sat in there, right? Right. But uh, they couldn't, short bloke. couldn't, couldn't <laughs> quite see. Was he a short hairy bloke with slightly <laughs> longer arms than legs? <laughs> couldn't see. Him, where, is, where, where his arms slightly longer than his legs? Couldn't see him it being dark. Was he ha holding his hand of cards with his feet? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, oh, so the cards were dealt, right? Cards yeah. were dealt. Games going on. <laughs> his cards with his feet. Game, game went on for hours, right? Look, there's no one's listening. We, no, the thing, terrible thing is that not even we're listening to I Carl know, now. I know. There's no one, literally no one is listening so to Carl. There's a lot of smoking going on. It's right? going on. A lot of eating, a lot of eating and nuts going on. <laughs> that was a bit weird because they don't normally get through as many, but for, for this night. <laughs> so, I'm. Um, <laughs> come on, let's just play, Bruce. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you maybe Christmas time. Goodbye. Yeah, right.